Oh, is anything on the way to down? <laughs> that jingle there signifying, of course, once again, another reading from the diary of Carl Pilkington. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital because previously you'd had I've been treatment. in and out, honestly. I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And, uh, yeah, he had so kidney stones, all right. No, no, but seriously. I had a bit of a lie in today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but yeah, you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, for f I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. It's, it's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60 year old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? How do you sleep in there? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there was an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> it was just of that age where he didn't care. Just like, that's what I do. I'm in a hospital, leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh, I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's had no visitors. Uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like he's my granddad or something. It's just like, oh, that's what he does. It's like, well, I'm ill as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> Honestly, unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like that. <laughs> with a cough? How would you cover it with a cough? Just non-stop. Got home and sat down. My pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen and that my insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur. Right? <laughs> uh... So that was on the other night. Uh, I and, thought it was uh, when you lodger. So, um... And she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went I... and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an <laughs> ashtray. Plates are for liver damage. <laughs> got in a taxi. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. That is cheeky. That, that really, I mean, he could On the way to pain. the hospital. So, uh... Because he's not an ambulance driver. So, anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge us, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's all right, yeah. So, this, this gay fella came through. And, How did uh, you know he was gay? Um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A he doctor, you mean? No, he was like a, he was a nurse. Right. And he, he came through and just sort of went, oh, how are you? And I was like, oh, I've had better days. So he, he got As me you mentioned in the diary, I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it, honestly. I was that sort of out of it. That. Of course you'd let him do it, he's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure, mm. and I walked in there and he went, oh, hello, and he said, yeah, let's pop that, I'd go, hang on a minute. <laughs> but, but what I mean is, that night, I, I would have just let him put three up, honestly. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> it's just weird, isn't it? How your body just goes, let them get on with it, and you let you trust anyone, don't you? When when you're in that much pain and you need, and a- they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience entitled "My Ward." All I've done here, I've been through a, you know, I don't know what the word is, a, a bad experience, trauma, a trauma. Yeah, I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. Me, a Chinese fella, and an old bloke who looked like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. Bye. When I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese. He was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella who I didn't talk to, the old fella who had wind problems. And that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like, like it. I imagine a lot of people make I like same it because you know why? It's like... He even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left He left that digression in, and I think that's that's great. To be honest, I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a programme about monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good. Of course it is. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that is some more shit! This is what he says. He, this is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth, This is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in, in, like, the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge and um, a lot of tourists go through the area no, it's to, a monkey who realised that, that if he sits there, it'll get stuff because it'll look like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because you give a monkey... You give it, oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana uh, uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give. Yeah, but it's all squirrels sorts learn of that. If you don't go, oh, you wouldn't say, oh, went to the park, there's squirrels waiting at the gate. You have to give them a toll to go in. They don't really give them a nuts. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be, in it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> talking about what is it like to be a slug no just because like the monkey even though it's been quite aggressive everyone was like oh give it some water and it was it was well like kitted out it had like you know chocolate bars bottled water some like you know fizzy stuff and all that an ipod it was listening to monkey news it could have had one if it wanted one it was getting away with murder on that bridge and that's just because it was furry yeah if that was like a blob like a slug there's no way people would be that friendly towards it and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order for like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's where its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not as it mollusk like that's down it's, on its fucking yeah, lap. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife it left it, the kids wa- went, it started hitting the bottle. It, and I kind of <sighs> thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... That's <laughs> me! People but it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It Not doesn't have... It must like a leaf or a... You know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it. It's a leaf. not an insect! Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> No, it's part it's of They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. No, Why do you think it's part of that Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's it's in It's not their boring area. stuff to them. They're not... I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> So it's whatever you eat, what's in that area. 
Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> when I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So, not, not really loud, but like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. Do you know, like Sorry, that? you... You just started miming, counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I just said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now, my kidney's aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. Get, you are one yourself, of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there free. for ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. it's the about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here, I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know, I was busy counting. Yeah. What happened to Chris Moles' show? Is he not on anymore? On the TV? Yeah. No. Turns out he was too fat and talentless. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want to tell us about Hastings? <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> eh? What? <laughs> yeah, Hastings. Yeah. It's, uh, it's alright, yeah. Um, <laughs> What's there? Not much. <laughs> it's just one of them Is there places. A beef? Yeah, yeah, it's got, I think that's what's good about it. Nobody knows, right? Because last weekend it was roasting and, and you saw pictures of Brighton mm. and it was heaving, yeah. right? Hastings, <laughs> hardly anyone there. And yeah, it's got a nice, nice little beach. Yeah. Um, sand? Sand? No, beach? pebbles. Well, right. that's all right, isn't it? You don't, well, no. you don't want the sand. Why do you want sand? sand? Yeah, it's a little bit, doesn't it? Gets it's murder bit. building a sand castle. No, no, you just, just sit there. Yeah, you can't walk on pebbles, can you? It's, you know, mean? Well, it's all kind of, it's sort of a bit, you know, ah, dodgy under It's all right. The only annoying thing is, right, <laughs> it's one of them places that it's great to visit for a day. Yeah. But I wonder how people who live there get by. Right. Why? Because all, all the shops like them things that you go in and it's like a little pebble with a, <laughs> a pebble stuck on the top and it says Hastings on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So every shop does that. If you want bread and milk, you... You're done it's, for. It's murder. Yeah. There, there must be a supermarket. I didn't see any. Seriously, it's all novelty things like that. Yeah. And then when yeah. I got back into London... Look <laughs> at their houses. Yeah, yeah. Just covered in pebbles and, like, seashells yeah. and stuff. Oh, not rock for tea again. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is, right, it's, it's the first time I sort of noticed somewhere like that when you go, what do you do if you, you know, you just want some Brillo pads or whatever. I wa I'm walking in London... Never concern me, that. <laughs> Never needed Brillo pads in my life. No, but you know what I mean, the sort of things that... Yeah. It's a bit tricky to find, but in London, you know, you've got the coverage. Yeah. Now, the weird thing is... I was walking home from, we went had a drink the other night, right? Yeah. Walking down the road, and there was a shop that just sold, in London, just sold chess pieces. Yeah. Is that the one on Great Portland Street? Round the corner from it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, I, I think that's well, mental. Well, I remember being in Brighton once and seeing a shop and all it sold was fo the foam you put inside cushions. Yeah, there's one of those up Pentonville Road. But I don't know who opens the shop. I like know, that. I know where these I'd things there's are. A, there's a hole in the market. Yeah. What was that shop we walked past yesterday? And it was like some really, really, oh, um, uh, chef uniform shop. <laughs> yeah. It's Dean Street. Yeah. And I, I tell you what, I opened the chef uniform, Ma mainly sort of check trousers and white hats. <laughs> but there must be a lot of chefs around. <laughs> I'm eating all the time. Someone's making the food. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, on the chef shop, right? They mustn't yeah. have been doing that well. And someone must have, you know, the businesses must have, the bosses must have been sat there going, not really working this, is it? Yeah, right? people only buy one chess set yeah. in their life. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, but the funny thing is, on the door it's just said, come in and browse. <laughs> Which I thought was odd. Did right? you? No, it was short. Right. <laughs> but, the, but the funny thing is, the funny thing is, right, so you can imagine them sat there going, oh, it's not doing that well. And it's changed, they've actually changed the name of the shop now. Yeah. And now it says, chess, chess and bridge. Right, they've had to expand. So they've opened it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But still. What do you buy for bridge, if not I don't know. cards? The I don't know. I don't know, I don't play bridge, but I don't know, I don't think you need a lot of stuff for bridge, except a pack of cards. I remember going- uh, A table. When I was on- Three friends. On holiday once in Devon, past a shop. I don't know, if you ever need it, 
if you ever need an antique marionette, <laughs> <laughs> let me know. Okay. I know where there's a shop. Okay, okay, yeah. Antique marionettes. I know. Again, you only need one. And this but I want to know who goes into this business. Well, son, what are you doing? Going to university to do law, father. Well. There's a factory there that makes the little plastic bits that goes on the end of chair legs. Do you want to take <laughs> yeah, it over from yeah. me? We're not ready, no. It's all set up. Yeah. It's all set up. Oh, God. All right, Dad, but just for a couple of years. Uh, Someone's got to make them. Someone's I know. Make the little plastic bits that go on the end of chairs. Well, if you uh, make them, call us on the <laughs> one two three four nine seven three four. <laughs> Weird though, isn't it? Weird. Weird though, isn't it? Right. Listen. Uh, songs of phrase answers next. We'll go. Uh, out well, I tell you what. Play it once more so that people have got a chance to actually enter. Hang on, keep you talking, can't keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Oh, I can't be Should talking. be ready, Carl. This All is right. terrible. Here we go. From... Right. That is the well-known phrase, Daddy's never gonna stop robbing telephone box. <laughs> the well-known <laughs> phrase. And uh, we're looking for, uh, the songs, I think. I don't care. Right, well, uh, Libertines on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Over there is Carl Cayman Pilkers. <laughs> right. I'd be great for heart. You really wouldn't would. I? You really Virgin, would. I'd probably, be, I'd probably. But it was Radio Two, be my first. Oh, all one. Late night station. one would be good. All good stations. All professional stations. Yeah. Four all weeks to go. Audience, Four weeks audience. to go before we may give up or we may come back. Who knows? It's all up to Carl. Cayman Pilkoids. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, just extend an apology? Uh, I was a little bit crass earlier, and I made some unsavoury remarks about Radio One DJ Chris Moyles. I'd like to apologise. Funny man, funny man, Chris Moyles. I'd like to apologise for that, but uh, it gave me an idea. You, the listeners, who do you hate? <laughs> um, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I just think that we've never really used uh, XFM as a kind of, well, as a research tool, really, and it seems to me that we got we can get great opportunities. And it's this, we, we don't sort of do this thing, we don't go on there and sort of like slag off other people and, and people in the public eye. Well, we, we sort of, we pick on targets that are, that, that, that are, can't you, fight back. helpless, the elderly, you know, people <laughs> suffering in some way that really, really, and particularly we don't want to pick on people like Chris Moles who's got a big platform, much exactly. bigger platform. We want people who can't answer back. Yeah, we want, we, yeah, so, um, who do you us, hate? That's us. Who do you hate? And we don't want, I don't want people you went to school with or your Do boss. you know what I hate, Steve? Who do you hate, Rick? Right, my top three, just in your top three, would be Hitler, yeah. Mussolini, and General Pinochet. Really? No, probably Moyles E. Harry Potter and Jamie Oliver. Nice. But what are your top three? No, don't make them comical, don't make them, these are the people that wind you up. When you see them on TV, if you hear them on the radio, if you see them in a magazine, they just, oh, they make your kind of blood boil. Might be us. It could be us. Well, I mean, uh, you know, we, that. we know that, we, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not stupid. We could take it as red that it's us. Yeah. And then if, if anyone like, yeah, Let's us. assume it's us, so we want other people. Yeah. yeah. But we just want, I want to draw up the, the top, the top five people. I don't want to hear things like Tony Blair and Jeffrey Archer and fascism. No. Just people who make your flesh crawl for no, for no fault of their own. Well, no, really. Well, sometimes their own, because yeah, they're, they're, you know, yeah. they're talentless or fat. But that'd be good, but but that'd be a good long, long-term poll when, over the next four weeks, and then, then in four weeks' time we go, we go, well, we're off, we're in the top ten. <laughs> exactly. But here are the other nine. So I, I think it's just genuinely going to be quite, uh, quite interesting. So ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Maybe who you hate and why, it's like g giving a reason in the diary room. Yeah, that you got You can't just nominate someone, you've got to say, and why. Sure. But if you, you can't know. be bothered to write, and why, just nominate. Yeah. Because that means just we've got a lot of reading to do if they start doing that, Rick. Yeah. Keep it down to one sentence. Yeah. You know, so, so, so the reason to be, you know, so and so because they can't walk. Something like that. Sure. Maybe. Now then, uh, we were playing earlier songs of phrase. Um, we have had, I mean, the, the, a the, the answers I could literally count on the fingers of one hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now the right answers, even less so. But, um, do you want to play it once more, Carl? Oh, God. <laughs> From there was uh, <clears throat> seven songs in there. Right. Read them out, go on. What are they? It was uh. Oh, have you ever got it written down? No, I can remember them. Daddy Cool. Right. Bernie M. Bernie M. Yeah. Uh, never gonna. Give you from up. Rick, Rick Astley. Astley. Yeah. Um, they, gonna... um. Write them down. Stop. Sam Brown. Right. Uh, Robin was, uh, Miss Robinson by Simon and Garfunkel. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. That's not Robin. Oh. From, From Russia with Love, Matt Monroe. Right. Telephone. Telephone hanging on the telephone, Blondie. Right. And then Box. Living in a box. By <laughs> Living in, in a, a box. box. 
Well, listen, no, Brilliant. I don't think anyone got them all right. No. If you did get them all right, I'm sorry, but I gave up checking the emails a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna give it- I'm gonna give it to Michelle Flower, cause she got a few of them right. <laughs> <laughs> so well, well done, she Michelle. got a lot right. Though. Absolutely yeah. well done. Good, well, well done. done. She got five out of seven. So well done, Michelle. And uh, you get all those great prizes. Incidentally, um, we mentioned that uh, Stargate SG One. I yeah. do look forward to that, Michelle. That yeah. features uh, Richard Dean Anderson. Had a lot of emails. People saying, "Is that the same Richard Dean Anderson or Dicky Anders that used to email in and said he loved the show?" What's happened to Dicky Anders? No, I've not heard from Dicky for ages. So, Dicky, if you're listening, Richard Anderson. If anyone knows Richard Anderson, what's happened to him? Well, I think we know he's top three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, D uh, Dicky. Anders, if you're in, if you're still out there, get in touch with Anders. Anders, it was also Anders. I just was going to say, you know, you're talking about people who annoy you, and that. Yeah. I, not many sort of celebrities annoy me because I think, well, some people like them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But things that affect me, like the builders, right? you're a builders, philosopher. Go on. The builders annoy me, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. And you could say that's a bit of stereotyping, but all the people who have met who have been builders have always annoyed me, right? So that's- I'd That's because they've been working on your house in your space. I mean, that's not- that's like all the builders that have been round your flat and making a noise when you're trying to get some sleep have annoyed you. Hmm. Well that- Brilliant. But also someone in the office in the week, right, who works there. Yeah. He's a good lad, named Lenny, right? He's yeah. called Lenny. Uh, he proposed to his missus yeah. using XFM. So well, like, he, he popped in, he popped in Zoe's show. Right, his girlfriend sat out there, she didn't know what was going on, she was asked to come in. Even right. she wasn't listening, she was out there. <laughs> she, she, she probably had a Walkman on or something. Yeah. <laughs> but just, just that, she was just to Jono. <laughs> <laughs> he had yeah. to fax Jono with the request. <laughs> <laughs> Dear John, yeah. I'm broadcasting yeah. Mexico at the moment. Can oh my you girlfriend's my... listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, London's hot one, a six by two. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just going to tease us, aren't you, with three uh, headlines? If you and know. I'll, I'll choose one, and then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's the way it works. And at the end of it, you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with 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 knowledge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at last, he confesses. <laughs> yeah. Go um, on. So the three headlines for you to pick from. We've got um, first one. Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, <laughs> third one, um, <laughs> I'll bake on in the morning if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. I'll bake on in the morning if you're sick of having me right, here. Right, I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. <laughs> Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um... <laughs> when? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, Olden times. I think it said medieval times. Yonks ago then. Yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. we, we're going back quite a bit on this. Well, one. you know, when you d find out these books, why well, it just pop down when it was? Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time. It just sort of says, you know, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, right. no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, all right, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time and they'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's alright. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't <laughs> enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made, you know, there weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now. So there wasn't as many houses, right? right. So what you what you ended up getting is like uh, you know the rich people having a nice place to live, oh. and the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like uh, people would go round to the mate's house and say, look, I haven't got anywhere to live. It's a bit cold. Can you let me stay? Right. Mm -hmm. So they'd go, uh, oh, all right, then you can stay a couple of days. But they ended up staying for like weeks. Yeah. Right. So. To sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner like, a uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat and, uh, nice veg. 
yeah. gravy and This happened know. every time, did it? <laughs> it <worked. laughs> no. This is where the saying came this from. This is what happened, Rick. This, this is what happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the book of vague sayings and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, so yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, but yeah. a person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some, like, sort of a cut-off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Oh. Uh, meaning. Right. <laughs> okay, that's- that's rubbish. Um, but okay. Uh, absolute- <laughs> Carl, no, why no, no. does that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why- do, why, why do they always- in every situation when you want to get rid of a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so he They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go- I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the streets. Hold on, are you giving me the cold shoulder? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leaving. No, I like- I like to do it cryptically. <laughs> that way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. <laughs> well, yeah, that- that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of meat, we'll leave that. Well, we'll- 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 <laughs> Bacon in the morning! I'll bake on in the morning if you've had enough of me! <laughs> so, so uh, come back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others. We'll come got, back to those. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Nice, looking forward to that. Look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. Mm. Now, you don't never see them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too obvious. Uh, <laughs> webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest, so. Oh yeah, and the, and the, the lady with the head, like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's yeah, not go yeah, through yeah, these again. It just raises that. too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> Yeah. Right then. So, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? That's yeah. different. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> bluffing. Um, and. Just bluffing. But it, it's Who was a, the king then? I don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets. Uh -huh. You get sure. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly. Mm. So, you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space, because it's like, I don't know, I don't know why they're running out of space. But, <laughs> okay. they haven't, they haven't got much, I don't know why, really. <laughs> I was gonna say, they should've just buried them, but, you know, there's probably more land back then than now. <laughs> he doesn't need anyone else in the room <laughs> to, have, He's to have a, have a conversation dialogue. with himself. <laughs> yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I've sorted it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. anyway, for some reason, um, they, they presumably, if, it, if it's gonna be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them, as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's, that, there you go, you've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because there was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is this to be the word bon, meaning good? No, 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 I'll oh. tell you in a minute. Go on. So you've got all these people who are like going around and like, oh, you know, so-and-so died the other day and, you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yeah. So you can imagine like, just constant, like, being depressed. Mm. So, and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh, God, what are we <laughs> gonna do? So they said, we're all too fed up at the moment. <laughs> said, let's, let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got <laughs> together. Yeah, yeah. So they said, uh, what we need to do is, uh, have a big party. Mm, so mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So, um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yeah. in a big pile. Mm -hmm. And they're all diseased and that, so yeah. they set, they set fire to the bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, and they said, let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by. And, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have a drink and that and have a chat. We'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So bone it was fire. it was it was all the bones. Bomb fire is is bone fire. Yeah, excellent. 
Yeah? Yeah. That's interesting. So, that's, that's how it came about. Yeah. In the 1700s? Yeah. That was? No, probably, okay. I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably I, earlier. I probably reckon earlier. it was the plague. Mm. Mm. I reckon mm. it came from. But, uh, interesting stuff. Interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah, so that, that's, yeah. uh... Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? No. Do you like the fireworks? So I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. Even no. as a kid, you know, you'd have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out and- But I also think the adults tears. think the kids love it yeah. and everyone, and, and, and if they just got together and said, should we go this year, they'd all go, no. Yeah, not absolutely. Let's not go yeah. this year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had <laughs> wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon is a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, <laughs> I'd pay to see. That's a fire display I'd like to see. As it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. That's that excellent. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. Bone, Bone marrow. <laughs> Genius. We've had, we've had a, a few emails, uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Ricky, educating Ricky, that's the final one, we've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, though. We can do that at the end, we can Go on, then. Well, but we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just oh, do educating Ricky. Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on, then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I t spoke to you in the week and he had much better things, like when I tell you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest, and for some reason it made him, uh, it, uh played havoc with his belly and- What? He, he followed through and he had to clean up- he shat using, himself? Yeah, using, um, using ice and stuff. Why are you tell- why are you telling me that Brian Blessed- what, what- in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he- he- he was climbing Everest, right? Right. You gotta give it to him, he's an actor and that, but he- he gave that a go. Yeah. Right, it played- What's the know, point of that, you'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's, he's, you know, he's Oh, good. so he's alright. Uh, me, me doing a boxing match for no reason is rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself- Yeah, he did is, that. Is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, but what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good yeah, point. What's it been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've uh, probably right. cleared it up by now. <laughs> I just think there's something in being lost. I never feel lost. I just think, oh, I've had a diversion. <laughs> no, because you find you find new things. I'm for everyone. Meanwhile, Suzanne's asking the French peasant where oh, the. Uh... I just think, you know, Columbus. All right, what's the most interesting thing you found when when lost? Um, like I say, they normally I, I found a shop that was like a fancy dress shop. Amazing. Do you need fancy dress stuff? Dressed you never up as Columbus. You never <laughs> went and bought a sat-nav, <laughs> went to Dorset for the weekend. <laughs> you never go out. Why do you need a fancy dress shop? That sounds like the one thing you would hate I is just, fancy dress. Yeah, but I like looking at the, uh, they have like a space helmet in there. Right, so you found a fancy <laughs> dress shop. Where were you supposed to be going that you got, you had time to get sidetracked and go in a... I think I was going to a meeting. <laughs> Amazing! That's the last time. Makes me want to get lost. Yeah, you, you don't want to get lost, no, do we? Because I always give myself loads of time because I get lost a lot. I always give myself. Get sat nav. No, I'm. I'm just saying. You, that's that's how you find little treats along the way. And you, <laughs> next time you pass it, or next time someone says, "Do you know where the fancy dress shop is?" You go, "Yeah, I do." You go, "I have no idea because I was lost. No, I didn't know where it was." No, 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 no. no normally oh, I. Well, I'm not going to tell you, lazy cunt. Have you got an A Z? Oh, that's harsh. Yeah, find it yourself, you lazy twat. <laughs> So, <laughs> what have you learned? You keep going on about all this learning. What yeah. have you learned? What have you learned? Okay, sum up, when? sum up mankind's foray into the future. I want this. This will be the introduction to a book about the future. It will then be read in a hundred years' time and go, Carl Pilkington was the most prophetic genius that's ever walked the earth. These are his words from 2010. Just some predictions. Just, predict no, just, just that sum it up. Just sum it up. Um, I believe. Start off with. I, Carl Pilkington, believe that mankind in the future will. Okay, start off and with that. And then what? Just have like a top five. Well, no, or just just well, maybe just predictions. Just predictions. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So and just... then a little, and then a little thing to remember. And remember ye this. So I, Carl Pilkington, predict that in the future mankind will. Uh... Start off with that. Start off with that sentence. I've given you that one. All right, I'm Carl. And, uh, the future. He's already gone off road. It's, it's a scary road. place. But, the future's gonna happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no getting away from that. Yep. Mm. Mm. Okay, your predictions are. Mm. 
Well, we're 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 all. Uh, mm. It's not a sound bite. Uh, no, keep going. Give them space. Give space. Give them 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 space. Give I think trousers are going to be stopped being made. Just because right. you see, you see kids now, they've got pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. So I think, I think they're, they're, that's evolution, just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. <laughs> that's the evolution of the trouser, because it's dropping incredibly down the arse. You see, now, you can see arts. kids' underpants, so they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one! <laughs> Okay, That's an amazing make, one! They'll stop making trousers in the future, good, okay. Good. Uh, we're gonna get weaker. We're, we're, that's already that's already happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. <laughs> right. So we've definitely, that's, that's evidence. You can't argue with that. <laughs> I'd probably put that first because the guy's right. What's number two? So swap that round. Okay, that's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Okay, they number three. They used to say, and after the day, keep the dogs away. They used to say. They used to say, pull your trousers up. Now they say, put them down, you can. <laughs> I'm going to have sex fucking dribble. <laughs> number three. <laughs> Right, number three. Oh, the scholars are now waiting with bated breath when they find yeah. this old scroll, and they go, "Ooh, mm. what can number three be?" Uh, <laughs> I reckon we'll blend all our food. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! No, because they. they he's not he was going to make a point about race. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, like they do for amazing. babies, you mean? Just oh. yeah, I just think oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now, cavemen <laughs> chewing on big lumps of meat. Yeah. yeah. We had wisdom teeth. Yeah. Mm. Now they say they'll take them out. You're not using them. Yeah. Why not using them? Because your food's soft. Yep. Mm. Sorbet. Yeah. Soups. <laughs> yeah. Uh. You know, everything's softer, just isn't it? When you get an avocado, yeah. they say, yeah. "Is it soft?" Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think I think chewing is a t sort of thing of the, the, the past. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You don't mm. have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating well, it. Well, he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon... Uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth. Mm. Done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> it's sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number ten. <clears throat> this is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. Oh, so the, you, what you mean is that you look through the glasses and instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. What you want to see. So if you're, if, if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto yeah. with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking around? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. Why not? No, what you mean what? is that the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses, so what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads ghetto. of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental, pointless, what? would never work. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely one of the maddest so things you've ever weird, said. Really weird, that one. Yeah, it yeah. could be done. It, I reckon it, it could be easily why done. Why would it be? Okay, okay, because that last one, that's number four. That's a load of bollocks. Um, so what's number five? There'll, number be, five. there'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? Because we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, no we're not running out no, of words No, we are. Now. We are definitely no, running out of words. Using the, it's using the letters we've no, already got yeah. and making new words. Yeah, we're yeah. making, yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. Have okay. you any idea... You could, you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out. 
Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's that's because their their alphabet mm. is short than ours. They've only got something like twenty four letters over there. Right. But they go mental with the L. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what we do is we've got twenty six letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling. struggling at we, all. We, we are. We're not. Let me just. Boswallocks <laughs> in shampoo. Now there's a word where they've gone. Well, we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Boswallocks? Boswallocks. Have you just made that up? No, no it's, that, it's not. They go, a new, new with Boswallocks and Ceramide R. Yeah, but that's a new word because they have to invent, they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a, it's a terrible word. Why? Boswallocks. <laughs> it's another word. Is that real? You've made yeah, that up, no, haven't you? Yeah, word. yeah. Now this is what I'm saying. So years ago when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh, go on. sodium. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds all right. He likes sodium, he does <laughs> like that. Because it sounds like an, an, something in it, like an ingredient. Well, yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswell? Are you winding me up? <laughs> no, the two it's of you? real. It's, it's, it's real. And that's because 26 letters, we've wasted them. Years ago, we went mental with the, you know, pneumonia sticking a P on it. And uh, there's loads of words where you go, what's that letter doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, they can't do that. They've gone, whoa, pull that back. Why is that letter there? Who and has? now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. Let's not waste letters. Let's just control it a little bit. Uh, things, no. cars are called things like, you know, GTI or something. Because they're going, well, I can't think of a word to call this. So they're giving them letters. Think of a word now. Think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? What? Well, tell me a word that up. hasn't been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be used. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. <laughs> It took Ricky two goes and you accepted his second one. Well, I think we've, uh, I think we've um, sorted out the future. Since, obviously, the days of Nostradamus, there's been many people who've tried to foresee the future. Uh, Carl, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's endless um, you know, predictions. Apparently there are other planets that may collide with ours. You know, there's some scientific basis on this. But if you knew with certainty that today was the end of the world, how, how do you spend that final day? So, for instance, I've always wanted to smash up a bar. Do you know what I mean? It's strange, strange, but I've always wanted the exhilaration of just smashing all those bottles, like you see in a film. But would you enjoy it as much, knowing that you're going to die in eight hours? I don't know, I suppose it's the sense of abandon, you know? I mean, maybe I'd murder a person. You know, wow. just see, you know, I don't know, but I think I'd probably go mental. Because that's Because I've always been a very reserved person, you know? I've always... I've never got into a fight, never caused a rumpus. Yeah, but that's a worrying thought, because... Um, we, we don't have to have the end of the world for it to be the end of your world, because a lot of people know that they're terminally ill, so mm. they don't go around smashing up bars and killing people. But I suppose I know there'll be no repercussions ultimately, because the next anyway. day everyone's gone, yeah, so there's so, not going to be mourning families. But, but, then, uh, but then how dare you deprive that person of his last eight hours or ten hours of life? Um, I don't care, because it's the last day on Earth. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a great show, everyone. Oh, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck um, you, right, yeah. that was Jane's Addiction, just because, on XFM 104.9. Right, everybody up, let's give them a great show, yeah? Two hours of, like, fun chat. Let's keep it, you know, let's keep it cutting edge. Let's not be too... Uh, I mean, that's what the listeners of XFM would... Oh, no, it isn't, is it? No, because... Hold on, wait a minute, because we came in yesterday and did this... Little skit, didn't we? Where we bleeped it out. We little scared. She was quite annoyed. It was and quite then controversial. Carl called me last night, and we're not allowed to play it out. Oh, but we've been censored. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. That's, Interesting. Yeah. So it's a cutting edge alternative station. Wants to push the boundaries. Wants to be thought of as yeah. rock and roll, a bit punk, a bit punk rock. Yeah. But I, we're not cause allowed I, to play Because I, I, um, uh, I said something about the radio authority. I bleeped it out. Sure. What I called them. Yeah. But uh, couldn't do it. Done it right, before. Censored. Couldn't do it. Censored. Carl mm -hmm. agrees, though. What's your thoughts, Carl? You agree with that? Yeah, or? I agree. Yeah. Why? Well, Why? What's the point? Well, it was funny, wasn't it? And it wasn't offensive, not, was it? Not really. It's not some of the best stuff that would have ever gone out on this show, but, you know. Right, what are you putting up against, exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky Freak of the Week? Well, that, that springs to mind. Yeah. Uh, Rockbusters? But, I mean, yeah. the thing is, you know, the things that you have put out there, I mean, we, we better be really careful. Who's worried about complaints? I mean, it's not just swearing, is it? It's taste and decency mm, and everything. Yeah. So, we can't, we can't laugh about the disabled anymore no. in the Cheeky Freak of the Week. Mm. 
Can't do stories about elderly relatives with genitals looking like a split tennis ball. Right. Um, can't do your bad dad putting a child with learning difficulties in a bin. So, what should we just play music? I think that's all it's gonna have to be, yeah. Play Accidents Will Happen by Elvis Costello on XFM 104.9. Carl's a little bit stressed, but it's not his fault. It was the boss that overruled him. He came along. What did he do? He heard you, he heard you listening to it. Yeah. What did he say? He said, it's what's that? I said, it's what Ricky wants to play out tomorrow. Yeah. And he said, well, can't go out like that. Too many... But they all bleeped. We bleep. We bleeped the swear words. Yeah, but he didn't want it to go out. I mean, you got to remember, right, we came, you came in yesterday to have a chat about what we're gonna do. Yeah. One of the topics that I said, let's talk about, which yeah. I came up with, yeah. was, let's talk about swearing. No, you said you never had a problem with swearing, which is normally- yeah, that's right. And then we did the thing about, isn't it funny that you can, the heart, you know, the, you know, the thing about, you can bleep uh, a swear word by taking out the vowel, so we're going, so it's the vowel that's offensive, and we did a little sketch around that, and then ended, you know, uh, and, uh, he wanted to completely obliterate the word in the end, didn't want to put the thing in that we said about the radio authority, which I don't, I don't think, I think it was valid, and wouldn't have got a complaint. Yeah, he but knows. at the end of the day, he's the boss, and what, what he says goes, doesn't it? Sure. So, Rock. Rock. yeah, I was just gonna say, Rock. Rock. Right. But, 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 but what you gotta remember Rock. is, what he also said is, if you wanna pay the seventy grand fine, Rock. then go well, ahead and do it, be, Steve. There wouldn't be a seventy grand fine, there would there? Well, you don't know what it'd be. But will you pay it? Will you pay for my mortgage? Will you pay for his mortgage? Will well, you feed his kids? He wouldn't be fired. What do you mean? Well, if, I tell you what, if it's not a fine, we'd lose the license, then we'd all be fired. Right. When you're sat Do you at home. seriously think you'd lose the license for that sketch? Well, Does he really seriously think well, you'd lose know, the license for it? It's, it is not the worst thing we've ever put out or done or ever will do. Yeah, but it's the fact that he said don't put it out and you're like, you know, throwing your toys out the pram. <laughs> no, oh, I want, I want to say it, I want to say it, how old are you? But you still want to put swearing out. It's, it's a discussion about the radio authority and the way people are interested. Yeah, believe it, let's Don't move get on. annoyed. Yeah, but I'm annoyed because you've been at it since about half past twelve. <laughs> no, well, I, I like to get in early to plan the show. Yeah, but there's been no planning. So, to be honest, I'd turn off today, anyone listening, because there's nothing. <laughs> Carl, there's never anything. There is, there's, there's sometimes some good things, but today, seriously, I'd leave it. What is there? What is I'd, there? I'd, what, I'd there was something half decent that's been on this show. Loads of little interesting topics on, I can't remember any. Right, gays in toilets. Yeah. Mm, not particularly interesting. Fascinating to you, perhaps. Right, well, I'd prefer to hear that than just a load of swear words. Well, we're, we're not hearing, we wouldn't have heard any swear words, we'd have heard some bleeping. Right then, so that's, that's entertaining, isn't it? Load of bleeps. <laughs> it's just because you don't want to... Stand up to your boss or say anything. Don't get annoyed stand, with I'd us. I'd stand up to all, uh, if, if I agree with what I'm arguing about, but I'm not falling out with him over some crappy thing you want to play out. Don't, don't say crappy. Don't well, don't it doesn't matter, because I'm not here next week, I tell you that, I've canned this in. Don't right? say so crappy. So if Andrew is listening, Don't someone say else can be crappy. Week. Play a record. We apologise for the word crap. That's out of order, we should be. Oh. Big Sam, The Thrills on XFM 104.9. Starting off another... Nice atmosphere again, in the studio. Don't blame me, it's not my fault. No, I know, I know. Well, it's your fault, mainly. <laughs> yeah. You are bad, you are quite bad. Well, don't, come on, don't. No, come on, you are. Don't yeah. try and win him round, just cause he scared you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's that against. Is it me <laughs> or you, I don't yeah. know, no. It's you. <laughs> right, uh, well, I'm not a coward. No. I'm not a coward. Okay, I'm just, I'm just thinking of the listeners, Rick, and I just want them to be entertained. Yeah. Luckily, that's not a big problem for us. <laughs> what? <laughs> what, you mean we're effortlessly entertaining or there's no listeners? Well, yeah, somewhere, somewhere in between. Yeah. Sure. Carl, what's happened to you this week, mate? Now it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> come on. What, nothing's just, happened? Come on, I came in, I came in and he had an hour lunch break. You know, he's certainly like he never gets a break. I came in one day, it was out for an hour, and I sat a little chat with Andrew Phillips about you know, where we were going with the show, and, you know- Where are we going with it? <laughs> you can't with anything? <laughs> ah, dear! <laughs> it's how oh. far we can run it into the grave. Uh, yeah, no, if we go off air, it certainly won't be through, uh, being cutting edge or controversial, <laughs> because did. people are just turned off because it's too boring to <laughs> listen to. Brack! Um, but, uh, he was out for an hour. Having a lunch break for an hour, and always he's too busy. I know, yeah. It's interesting. So, uh, I, I actually, on the uh, subject of that, I noticed Dan here has emailed in, he says, I was listening to last week's show and I think Carl is taking his job for granted. Uh, I'd love to swap with him for a week. My qualifications are that I can press play on a CD player <laughs> and stop. Carl, what do you think of that? And it can, it can come in next week, seriously. Yeah. It says here- Don't get ratty, Carl, we're just not, not being ratty. Dan, email me. You know me address, email, it'll be sorted out, you can be here next week. <laughs> Dan, Dan suggested we could call it Carl Idol, where people audition each week, or perhaps yeah. Bone Idol. <laughs> I like that. Bone Idol. Brilliant. So, yeah. <laughs> 
Have you, have you got a monkey news, Carl? Uh, don't ask and be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record. Play a record. <laughs> Pretenders. Um, <laughs> Kid. Oh, dear. On Hi XFM. Well, I know 4.9. That's professionalism, isn't it? Yeah, that is unbelievable. <laughs> Ricky, you were, I mean, I don't know if I can describe it really, the yeah. scene. You were going mental, you were yeah. shouting, you were really being quite an unpleasant character. But well, it's wait, just, the mic's come on, Rick, and yeah. you're absolute, Funny, you're a charmer. Funny, Funny. Well, Funny how people get annoyed. Carl, Carl said levels. that, uh, we don't have to be here next week if Andrew gets annoyed. I was going, I went, this is entertainment. He plays us to entertain. We haven't done anything against the law yet, have we? Or uh, offensive, or against the way of the way. Carl said crap, but I think we'll get away with that. Yeah. So what is there to worry about? Exactly. Well, let's just draw a line under the beginning. Yeah, let's of the show, start again. Yeah, come on. Can we come just on. hug and make up? Can we just have a big yeah. kiss? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. No, don't do that. Just Carl. What have we got? <laughs> What's on the list? We've done swearing. We've done swearing. That's that sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, your point was more that you- weren't you interested in- in why swearing people find it offensive? Yeah, a little bit Cause that, that seems obvious to me. Cause you- cause you were saying yesterday that you don't, never understood why people find it offensive, weren't that's you? That's right, that's right. Yeah. But you- I know. Well, yeah, come on. Yeah, but that's what I was saying to you, why you can't do it on the radio, cause people find it offensive for some reason. I don't yeah. agree with it, but some people do. Yeah. I'm saying everyone swears. Bleep it out, I would. Well, hi- see, this Bleep is it out. Thing. Bleep it out, that's my- that's my theory. But you say that, that everyone swears, not everyone does swear. I don't know why you've got this in your head that everyone swears. I'm convinced. Everyone. What? Everyone. Like, you know, religious people, the religious Pope, leaders. Jesus. The Pope. I bet Jesus swore. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your evidence for that? No, I'm just thinking, I mean, things are better now than they were back then. Right? Right. He's wandering about in his sandals getting pebbles stuck in there and stuff, <laughs> and that's annoying. <laughs> Nails in his hand, that must have hurt. <laughs> what right. I'm saying is that's that I, offensive. No, that, it's not. That, that's blasphemous. No, but what I'm don't saying, laugh at don't laugh at the crucifixion. Play a record. I'm not. I'm not laughing at that. Though. That is terrible. I'm Are just saying. Sure no, you can email in um, if you want to complain, Carl. Yeah. Not pilgrims at xfm dot co dot. Wasn't offensive though. I'm just saying it's a fact. When you stub your little toe. You let, uh, let out a little effing and what do you think he is? He has an effing and jeffing. So the kind of ancient Hebrew version of effing and jeffing. Ooh, oh, I'm yeah. worried about this. I'm worried about this. This is naughty. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Just, oh, I'm worried when about did you start swearing? I, I started swearing at school. Right. I hope you haven't offended any Christians. Right, there's a lad at, at my school, right, who, uh, I got caught swearing. I mean, I got caught and I got- When I got you say get caught, well, how, how were you, what was it, you were at, like, riding right, right, right the bike shed <laughs> having a swear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, have you got an EMF? <laughs> yeah. No, I've only got one C left, it's my dad's. <laughs> oh, come on, let's have a go on it. Let's have, let's say unt. Yeah. Let me say the unt. No. Get the older kids to buy you some swearing. No, no, just, just smoke it down to the car. <laughs> yeah. So right. you're out there, you're behind the bike shed having a swear. Yeah. And a uh, teacher hears, hears him say, like, the S word. The S word. The S word. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the way, the way, the way this teacher dealt with it, he, uh, he said, right, it's not a clever word to use, and he tried to make him get sick of using it <laughs> by, he had to write an essay using that word 300 times, right? Yeah. So, I would have loved that. But that's just practice that. for a kid. But that is like that is like the the, the father catching the kid with a cigar and making him making smoke. It smoke. It yeah, yeah. Doesn't work with heroin <laughs> if you've got a young teenager <laughs> who's jacked up for the first time. Yeah, it can be dangerous. The funny thing is, though, right? His mum found his textbook. <laughs> of course. <laughs> thought he was depressed and wanted to take him counselling because <laughs> everything was s. He was writing down this is. And did and it work? Is. Did he? Did he? Did it wean him? Ah, did he? Yeah. The teacher, I mean, he, he disappeared, he, he got kicked out for, um, hitting a kid on the head with a bit of wood. So... It wasn't you, was it? That was <laughs> not. Carl Pilgrim in the chair now, the, um, oh, the talked about, the acclaimed, educating Ricky. Right, well, just in case anyone's new, doesn't mm. normally listen, yeah. um, basically, I'm educating Ricky. Yeah. Uh, do a bit of research in a week, find stuff, news, history, Anything that's interesting. Um, three stories, I give them a nice little headline. You take your pick. Yeah. Between now and three, you're gonna learn three things. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the headlines are, um, I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> <laughs> give us that again. I'll be no buying one of them. Nice, okay. Yeah. Uh, Cream. we've also got, uh, Hippopotter News. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 
And, uh, chicken, you believe it. <laughs> chicken, you believe it. <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna go with Harry Potter news. Harry Potter news? Harry Potter news. Right, well, this one, it's, uh, uh, I'm not gonna take the credit here. I heard Christian talking about this on Breakfast, right, because it's a good, good, uh, good story that happened. Um, basically, I don't know if I told you about it last week when we were having our spaghetti, but, um, no, I think you did. Right, I know what it is. I know what this is. Okay, I've not heard this. <laughs> right, there's a little midget. Right, there's a circus. I'm loving it already. Circus going on somewhere. I think it was in America. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> is that present day or old times? I'm talking like in the last three weeks. Okay. Right. Uh, little midget. Um, uh, circus, really <laughs> packed out show, people are loving it. Um... <laughs> Steve, you will ask the same question I did, I know. <laughs> so, um, so there's a little, little midget jumping up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> That's not a circus, it's a circus! Right. <laughs> I take good money to see it. So, everyone, everyone's clapping and he's getting carried away. Um... <laughs> Because he can't believe he's like, he can't believe they're loving it. I didn't know they'd like a little person on a trampoline, but they love me. But you know what it's like when, uh, if there's a crowd of people sort of encouraging you to sort of go higher and stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew he was, it was getting out of hand. <laughs> but he was jumping and he was coming down the road going, hi, yeah, and he's going really high in the air, right? So he's, he's doing this, crowd are clapping. There's a hippo, right? Just sat next to the trampoline getting ready to come on and do his act. Oh, right. I thought he was in the audience. That's it, though. Getting ready to do his act, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the, he's a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's sitting by the trampoline waiting to do his act? Because he's Why does he sit in the dressing room and they go, five minutes, <laughs> Mr. Muss? Five minutes, Mr. Muss. So, anyway, <laughs> right? So the hippo's there. Uh, <laughs> he's getting annoyed, is he? Because this, because the midget's he's going to his toe. I'm gonna follow well, this. I'm yeah. gonna, this is thinking, really annoying. Yeah. They're gonna be, yeah. oh, yeah. no. So, <laughs> he's <laughs> He's already done the trampoline, my pogo stick act is never gonna work. <laughs> yeah, go on, so there's a hippo waiting. Uh, this, this, see, it's a great story and I just know he embellishes it or it gets slightly wrong. Go on. So, so there's a midget jumping up and down, the hippo's yeah. getting annoyed. He the, wants crowd the crowd are going mad, crowd the midget's going mad. loving it, can't believe his luck. Although we think, you think, he probably knows he's dicing with danger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, next thing you know, they're all saying hi, hi, hi. He gives it one big, like, heavy sort of landing on the trampoline, goes really high, but goes off at a funny angle. Oh. Hypotenuse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and sort of flies out- <laughs> Hypotenuse! Hypotenuse! <laughs> <laughs> sure. Flies off at a funny angle, Ooh, hippos there, swallows him whole. <laughs> Crowd are clapping, thinking that's why the hippo was waiting there. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> it's not rubbish though. I but mean, no, maybe the, uh, there was an accident in a uh, a circus with a midget and a hippo. Eh? But at no point was this hippo waiting to go on, going, "Come on!" The midget flew off at hypotenuse and landed in the hippo's mouth and was swallowed whole. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is this is what you embellish it. That is great. And what is I that? have to say though, Rick, when I heard midget trampoline hippopotamus, I was thinking actually the way it happened. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. maybe. I mean, it is it that 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 you should never put those three together. <laughs> never. It's it's a recipe for disaster. It's Everyone textbook. knows that midget trampoline hippopotamus. <laughs> Are you mental? You're asking well, for trouble. Well, you, you know when he told me it. He said, and the midget. He didn't. He didn't mention the hippopotamus. <laughs> and he said the midget went on like, and soon he fell off. And the hippo at him. <laughs> and I said, sorry, what was the hippo doing there? He went, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a circus having a hippo. No, what do hippos do? What can they do? You can't train them, can you? <laughs> what do you, what do you, aren't they like very deadly? They're yeah. huge, aren't you they? You can't have a hippo in a circus. Are you sure? You're not thinking of Zippo. <laughs> He's neither claimed. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 no, 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 and it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't some sort of, where Zippo was eating a midget and it's, it's some sort of horrible sexual act. No, it was definitely, I heard it on breakfast, right? Um, oh, okay, sorry. No, it's definitely fact. Yeah, okay, it's definitely right, truth. okay, good. Uh, well, let's play a record then. So, um, uh, I'd like to play a, a classic Springsteen, we're all fans of Springsteen there. This might be his debut album, I'm not sure, Greetings from Ashbury Park. I think it is, yeah. Um, New Joysy. Um, and this is Growing Up, it's great, it's classic. Right. Mm. Educating Ricky, part two. Right, what's the what's the clues right, left? Well, we've uh, we've we've got left uh, the headlines. I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> yeah, and we've also got uh, chicken. You believe it? Chicken. You believe it? <laughs> so, they're the two that are left. Which one's right. you for? 
Chicken, you believe it, is not that picture, is it? In that, that we saw. Which picture? The bloke with the. No, 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 no. Right, no, no. okay. God, um, that was bad. Right, okay. Um, um, so. I just better explain we that. We can't really discuss this on air, can we? Well, we can. Um, uh, Steve brought in Carl, the best book ever, which is what is it? Uh, I found it when I was moving house. It's an FHM publication, and it's kind of like lots of grotesque pictures and stories, and like the book of the. Uh, a book of freaks and weirdos and. And grotesque. Carl opened it, and the first one was like. At the back. Can I start at the back. Well, you couldn't believe your luck, could you? What was it? What was, what was number 50? A bloke with two heads. And he said, what's number one? <laughs> yeah. And then number six, there's a bloke who's a squid or something. Uh, octopus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's loving it. At number one, he said, well, it's just a fella under a rock. And I went, oh no, read on, I think I know about this. And it's the fella that was found, w he caused a landslide while having sex with a chicken. And they pulled him <laughs> off and there he is, the chicken owner. Right, so Carl so could not believe his luck. So it's not that. Chicken, you believe it? I love that one. You're going for that one? Yeah. Right, well, we've talked a lot on the show about, um. We've talked a lot on the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, about <coughs> animals without heads. Right? <laughs> we haven't! Uh, <laughs> we haven't! We mean, no, we talked about cockroaches could live without a head for well, seven days. Yeah, we talked about that. And then, of course, there was the, um. <laughs> The well-known one about the uh, the fellow who had his head cut off, and he he, he blinked. And he said to his head. mate, "Count how many times I blink when my head comes off." Yeah, we as you, when when you told it to me, you said his head came off, and he said, as he said, <laughs> the basket, quick count how many times I blink." <laughs> and it was Nick Frost. I had to go, "No, Carl, no, he he said it before." I went, and that uh, that was that was lovely. So uh, yeah, we've talked quite a lot about things heads coming off. Yeah. Go on then. Well, this one, yeah. Right? Um, mm -hmm. back in 1945. Oh. You looked it up the date. He's got a specific date, uh, wow. Mate Jonathan sent this one, you know him as well, lad at the BBC, right? He emailed this one in. Mm. So thanks for that. Um, chicken. It's called Mike. This, There's a chicken uh, called- sorry, I, I missed a bit there. There's yeah, a chicken, chicken called a Mike. A chicken called Mike. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, what happened was, it was living on a farm, mm -hmm. right? Loads of chickens knocking about. <laughs> and, uh, the owner of the farm is like, you know, getting ready for tea and his wife says, uh, Go out and get a fresh chicken because mm. me uh, my mum's coming round. Mm. So he thinks, well, <laughs> I, I, I want to get a good one in because uh, I want to impress her. Cause yeah. Back then, even then, they wanted to impress the mother-in-law on that. Uh -huh. So they said, all right, I'll just nip out and get one. So he sees uh, he sees Mike, chicken running around. Is this during the war or after the war? 1945. I'd, I'd say that was after. No, it ended. Well, it know. ended in 1945. Yeah, okay. September. Go on. Yeah. So, um, chicken's mm. running about. He thinks that one, lo uh, you know, that looks all right. Yeah. I love that one. Mike. So he picks it up. Um, and he cuts his head off. Oh. Puts it on the block, cuts his head off. Runs about a bit, like they do. Um, he thinks it'll stop in a minute. Keeps running about. Hmm. And what's going on here? Right? He's, tra he's, he's now like chasing the chicken without an head. Yeah. He's saying he should die in a minute. Anyway, doesn't die. Chicken's walking around with no head. Um, lives for 18 months. Yeah. Chicken with no head. Yeah. What do you now, think of that? Well, I'll tell you, I've heard this story before, Rick, and, uh, my, the explanation as I understand it was that, um, certain vital cords, spinal cords, weren't severed when the head came off. So yeah. that was why it continued to, to yeah. live. Yep. I don't know if that sounds plausible. It's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, how did it take on, uh, protein and energy? The fella who yeah. owned it, he said, well, hang on a minute, he said, I could, I could kill it now. But I've got a wonder chicken here. But he's thinking, it must really want to live. Sure. Right. <laughs> if it survives that, they sort of got something here. Yeah. So we, uh, what he does, he gets a little, um, eye droplet thing that he used to use on it. Obviously not, not anymore. Right. And he filled it with grain and water and it had a big hole in its neck where its head used to be. And he, uh. <laughs> Incredibly. And he dropped. You know what? There's, there's. I mean, that that is possible then. If it, you know, without I without infection, without, without, without without infection, if he's taken on things, it is it is possible, right? Why? <laughs> Why what? Why did he do? It? How cruel is that? I mean, that was not cruel because the chicken obviously, you know. He said he said if he thought it was a bit fed up, he would have killed it. He said, but right. he was running around quite happy. Well, it wasn't <laughs> fed up at all because it had no brain. <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you mean, well? I'm just saying what- It what was nothing. It was just- it was just sinew and nerves and electrical impulses breaking down energies, right? That's all it was. It, it didn't have a brain. So it was- but I- I'm worried about the psychology of keeping a pet without a head. <laughs> I'm worried more about what the farmer was thinking than the I chicken. I tell you this, what I'm- uh, the question I'm asking is, was the mother-in-law impressed? <laughs> 
I mean, that's oh, why it's out. That's why it's out of the shop. This, is, this is lovely, but it's just the head where you don't kill a chicken like that all at once. <laughs> I thought we were having chicken for dinner. Come and look at this. <laughs> running around the yard. <laughs> yeah! Oh, dear. So, there you go. You've learned something there. Yeah, I have learned something. Yeah? Yeah. So. The, one more. That farmer, I have learnt that farmer was very strange indeed. <laughs> yeah. there you go. I have to say, to be fair to Carl, I have a feeling like when I read it, the reason he kept it alive was as a novelty. He sold, he, you know, he, he got charged people to come and see the incredible headless chicken right. called Mike. Right. So, <laughs> there we are. There That's great. Oh, yeah. I need some learning. I need some knowledge, Carl. Right. Educate me. I might be able to help you. Go uh, on. Uh, we've got three things, as always. I give them a little uh, mm. head into tease you uh, yeah. as to which one you want to learn first. Yeah. Uh, first one is, uh, is the tip included? Is the tip included? I like it. Um, second one, I want to come here in hindsight. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have come here in hindsight? Yeah. Okay. And the third one, am I going to have to thump you? Am I going to have to thump you? Mm. Okay, oh and you've trawled, what, to... the internet? So, I, 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 so, I, so if I can get into the mindset of this plan, uh, is the tip included? Well, obviously, that's probably not gonna be about a waiter. It's gonna be like, is that, if that's someone losing the end of his knob, I assume. Um, arm I gonna have to thump ya? That's a man who lost his arm in a fight but then picked it up with the other arm and smacked <laughs> him with it. Um, what was the middle one? I want to come here in hindsight. Hindsight. Hind. Heinz sight? Uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah, it's someone was blinded by baked beans. Sure. So what are you going for then? Uh, I think I'd better go for, um, armor oh, gonna have to thump you. Alright, well this isn't- I've been struggling again, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, searching iron low for stuff and- and some of these I had to leave till this morning. To right, because there's just not morning. enough knowledge out in the world, is not there, that you don't on. know about? I found out about something in the week about a guy who, um, I uh, was playing tug of war. This is bonus material, <laughs> he was isn't it? Playing tug of oh, war. Oh, his arm came off. His, only his arm came off. Yeah, he got caught up in the rope. Yeah. No, no, no. He didn't. He didn't get caught up in the rope. He just was trying that hard and didn't want to lose. He kept holding. He allowed it. his arm to be pulled off. He really wanted to win. And well, the other no. team, the the other team pulled it and his arm came off. No. Well, I don't know who to believe. Well, uh, think about it. If he's gripping. Yeah. As soon as there's tension, like the, the the arm coming out of the socket, the hand might release. I think his arm got caught up in the rope, and so it was involuntary, as opposed to him going, "Well, my arm's coming off, but I'm not going to lose this." <laughs> you might be anyway, right. That's the, that's the fact. That's a bonus. That's a bonus fact. Yeah, well, that's, that's educated uh, me. Well, a man lost his arm. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Go uh, on. Um, arm, I'm gonna have to thump you. Yeah. Do you know the saying, uh, "Shut your face." <laughs> 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 yeah, so? I've heard the well-known Shakespeare, innit? Yeah. Do, you know, do you know how it came about? Uh, no, Joe Dolce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, go on. It's, uh, ages ago. Oh, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> like, uh, knights who wore armour. Okay. That's, uh, armour going after something, yeah, that's how it came about. Okay, armour. Um, right. they, they wore all the stuff and they had the helmet and say if they, they're guarding something at night. Mm. Stood outside a castle or something. Yeah. And there's probably gonna be two of them. Mm. Right. So they stood there talking and that. <laughs> and, uh, talking about stuff. And. The future. Sort of, yeah. Medieval what, stuff. One yeah. of them, one of them's like, oh, I wish you'd shut up. You know, I've been stood here for hours and he's going on and you on. Get, yeah, sure. So he'd say, shut your face. Meaning, shut the guard down on your helmet. The visor. Okay, and I can't hear you then. Uh huh. So shut, shut your face. Shut your face. And that's, okay. how, that's how it came about. Well, I suppose that's, it would be interesting if I could just rely on it. As I'm a, not sure it's true. Yeah. I know. I just never know. I can. It needs to be cooperated. It's just like I don't know where he got it from, but anything via Carl mm. is precarious. Yeah, though. I mean, I feel like maybe you should give us your sources next time. You know, tell us. Where I you know, got I'll tell you. From. Got it off the internet. Yeah, but where on the internet? I can't remember where that one was. I mean, I, I always go through like the news pages and stuff, and I. I, I this news should be updated because <laughs> they've only reached the 17th century, <laughs> which is last week with people eating um, tomatoes no, off no, lead but plates. Then I look at news and there was stuff about a woman who was in a shop and she, um, I don't know, some they had some workmen in, workmen in doing the shop up, and they had some wood glue left out and she asked for some pear juice and then the guy went and thought the glue in the thing was the pear juice and she went and drank that. But that's not really news. No. So I thought, well, we're it's not, not really having anything. that. I wish you hadn't told us. 
There was one about- So there's some poor woman now whose ties are- tiles are falling off because she tried to put them up with pear juice. Yeah. See, that's the- that's the danger of mixing up pear juice with toxic glue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your wallpaper and your tiles and everything just <laughs> yeah. fall down. Um, there was, there was also- Be careful, everyone. Be please. careful. There was something about, uh, kids having hamburgers, it makes them fat. Hamburgers- uh, yeah, Hold on. What? you having food with high fat yeah. content can make you put on weight? Yeah. Don't believe it. You're an idiot. What's so, the next one? Um, no, let's play tune, no, let's play tune. Well, you've we'll still, still got to come, you've still got, I want to come here in hindsight, and you've still got, is a tip included? Carl just, uh, said to me, hey, Art, here's something, you can't hold your breath to death. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried it, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> it's just another little lesson. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's someone here who's in a really low ebb. Yeah, they've been listening yeah, to a show, yeah, they were going to commit suicide. Yeah, they yeah. just started holding their breath and thinking, oh, <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Well, what oh. did you learn in the week, right? I'm always doing all the educating. I asked you, you were talking about watching a program about jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, that'll be interesting. I'll try and find some stuff out, but I couldn't find anything that I didn't already know about them. <laughs> <laughs> it must be difficult for you to find anything you don't already know. So what, what, what did you learn about jellyfish? I, I agreed with you by the end of it that they should be wiped off the face of the earth because they're balls of water in membrane, right, that go around stinging people to death. Uh. Let's lose them, Carl. Let's lose the jellyfish. Yeah? That's, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Cos I, I was stung mm -hmm. by one, did it, you know? Oh, you got stung by one? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah, on holiday yeah. and got stung by one. Yeah. And I, d I don't understand. No, I don't you're understand not. Them, I'm not a fan of them. So yeah. that's, that's that. <laughs> good. So well, that's uh, sorted out the jellyfish conundrum. <laughs> We've solved that particular worry. Right then, yeah. so, uh, take your pick then. I asked him his, what, if he could have any animal the other day. Did I ask him on air as well? Don't know. Off air, he <laughs> said, I've got it down to two. Right, and this was, he said, he said uh, what favourite animal we're looking at, or could I own one? And I went, you could own one. And he went, right, but could I own one, or would I have, would I have trouble? I went, Carl, you've got all the expertise, you can just have it in whatever it needs, and you go down there, he went, right, and I won't regret it and get fed up. I said, no, Carl, just what animal, if you could have any animal, what animal would you love? He went, I've got it down to two. I went, what is it? He said, either the rhino or the hippo. What's your logic? Well, I have. I, I don't know, that that was then. I mean, ask me tomorrow and <laughs> I might have two other different. favourites. Do you know what I mean? When was that? It's a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> when was that? Well, you were there. Yeah, but, uh, you know. What, so what, what are they today? Quickly now. First animal quickly, comes quickly in Quickly now, any animal I want. You could have any animal in the world. Right. From party, one that's maybe extinct, anything you want. Right, I might have, um, I might, just for today. Just for today. I might have a scorpion in a, in a little box. A little scorpion in a box. No. What's your What's your thinking? It's the chimp every time. It's Just the chimpanzee or the gorilla. No, but have I told you that program about the scorpion? How they all help each other out. Right. Have Scorpions all help each other out. No, no, no. This is brilliant. Right. Somewhere in the desert. Okay. Um. There's these <laughs> in little. In the desert. It's like these little monkeys that are underground or something. <laughs> and there's there's holes. Is this beneath the planet of the apes? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth in the series, Are I they think, talking apes? Oh, forget it, actually. No, and you've got it wrong anyway, they're not monkeys. There's little monkeys under the goose. <laughs> <laughs> what are monkeys. they doing down there? They're Pointing lizards. into underground mines? They're lizards, if you remember, and the lizard goes to sleep, and the bloke comes along, you've told this, and, he, and the oh, done it, all right. <laughs> monkey from monkey, right. lizard. Oh, that's what monkey. happens in his mind! From lizard to monkey! <laughs> oh, evolution would have been so much easier if Carl was around. Oh. Right. Uh, turn it into a monkey, I'm fed up with a lizard. Just so promise me once again, Carl, I've asked you before, promise me you'll never have children. <laughs> <laughs> go on, right, okay. Right, what are you having? Well, is, what's, what are they again? Is the tip included? Yeah, go on, that one. Right, in Turkey. Nice. Um, <laughs> it's not, actually. Mm -hmm. oh. That's where I went, and there was then little fellas after Suzanne in the kitchen. What? <laughs> what do you mean? We stayed in a. We went to Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> you went and, to Turkey, um, and there yeah. were some little fellas. Well, they had quite a few sort of midgets working in the kitchen. Why? Um, is, it, is it a theme? No, was it a theme just, holiday? Just, I don't know. Might get them cheaper or something. Was it a week? So, they, they <laughs> you were get working- them cheaper? They were working in the kitchen and one of them fancied Suzanne and mm. kept sort of eyeing her up. Mm -hmm. And she was winding me up saying, oh- Not eyeing up and down, just eyeing her up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, so what anyway. was she doing in the kitchen? No, it's like a pick, pick what you want to eat type buffy, but you have people clearing the tables and that ready for you to come along. Are they low tables? And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, he was just keeping an eye on her. Well, what did he say though? Was he? What was he? Was he? It was, it was, it was, it was Turkish. So I don't know what he was saying. 
But he was a, was it? Was, it was little um, fella, yeah. Did he? Talk what do you to mean, him? a little fella? What do you mean, little fella? Sort of dwarf like. <laughs> what do you mean dwarf like? He had magic powers, or he was four foot. No, what do you mean, Carl? A little bloke, just a, 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 like a normal bloke, but small. If you stood him in the desert, you wouldn't know. <laughs> But he'd be hot and festive. Right, Carl. You should no, watch no. out for the monkeys. <laughs> yeah, underground. There's underground what, monkeys. Look, look, you can't just say there was a little midget fella who was eyeing up my girlfriend and then leave it. What do you mean? Do, what What was happening? This is a story to us. This is much more interesting to us than and she was deaf, right? And she hit her head. That's much more. I don't understand how this ma how it manifested itself. Did he come over and say something? No. Do you know? You know when it's like girls know, don't they? When when some someone fancies them. What do you mean there was lots of them as well? Do then? they? That's worth knowing. Anything? <laughs> 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 right. Come on. Right. So you went into this. You went to this holiday, yeah. Yeah. And like you went it. into the, the what the dining room or something. Yeah. yeah downstairs. And you looked. Room. You thought this is all. There's no one serving. <laughs> yeah. And they go. Wait oh, a minute. Hold on. You looked down and there was a little waiter. There was loads of them running around busy. <laughs> Why was, uh, though? Why? Because it's summer. What do you mean? Because it was in summer. They had more of they, them they come out in summer. They come out in summer. What do you mean they had more? What, what do you because mean? Because it's busy, isn't it? Well, no, they they, in the why winter. were they all midgets? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't heat stunt your growth or something. No. Uh, well, they just happened to. Maybe it was a thing that they did for tourists or something. I don't know. I just got on with my meal. It was a holiday. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> God. Is, right, so, 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 some midget serving. I'm not going to ask any questions. Right. Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're all little fellas running around, and <laughs> this one always was like, you know, oh, do you do you want a new serve yet? You know what I mean? Going out of his way oh, to sort of turning oh, on the yeah, charm. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh. he was going out of his way. The others weren't. Right. Um, I think what was happening is he'd been working with Santa all the winter. <laughs> yeah. Or this is sort of little summer break. This this one he was your waiter, and so he was being polite to you. Maybe. 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 But what did Suzanne say then? When well, she was what, using it to wind me up. What was she saying always? Oh, just like, you know, look. look he I've may be small, but he's well, built like a- Yeah, he's all man. So- Were you jealous of a midget then? You were jealous of it him? It is a bit annoying, isn't it? Why? Uh, it wouldn't bother me as much now, cos I've been with her for ages. Right. But at the time, that might have been one of our first holidays and it's like, you, you don't know, want what, what's going on? I've paid for this holiday. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, you get off with a midget? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So anyway. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because you got chatted up by a bearded lady. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell yeah, you what, yeah. I'll tell you what. No, that's got nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? What were you going to say? Well, 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 I was, was, was going to say the hotel was half bored and maybe. Oh, right. Yeah. I thought you were going to say it's just one of her <laughs> shortcomings. So listen, right? Play, play around. No, but it's like the other day when, when they came in. I always like to test them. Do you know what I mean? When I had some work <laughs> done on the last flat that was in, right? That was renting. The builders were in the, sorting the shower out and that. They woke me up about half past seven. Yeah. Right? Were you in the shower? No, no, I, Good I, thing I, about I, cleaning the shower, there's never any hair down the plug hole. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, I, I left early to come out of work, right? Sure. Um, and I <laughs> thought, I wonder what they're doing. I wonder if they have started. So I walked back to go back in. They'd left the flat and they were outside having a Starbucks. <laughs> and it just annoys me that they couldn't do that first. Do you know what I mean? Have your breakfast first, then come and wake me up. But don't wake me up to then get me out of the flat and then say, right, let's go and have breakfast. Well, they've probably got to get in, haven't they? Didn't what they? for? What for? They can put all the tools in the in the little lobby bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It just winds me up. Sure. Now the thing is, the guy today who's doing the tiling, well, that's narrowed it down a bit more. <laughs> right? <laughs> when I knew he was in there, I went out for a bit, had a cup of tea and a bacon butty, yeah. right, at a cafe. And I went back and I, kept, I was really quiet, put my key in the door and opened it really quick to see what he'd be doing. And he had actually started you, work, so fair play to him. What if he'd just been exfoliating himself naked on the kitchen floor? Yeah. I'd say, right, caught you. <laughs> Don't just, use my exfoliate, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, go people, people, instantly, if you're listening, go through the wardrobes upstairs. Go through the wardrobes, get stuff some stuff, yeah. They won't get anything. I've, I've put everything in places where they wouldn't think of looking. For jewellery and stuff. So you're thinking that Wait, where have you put the jewellery? Where have you put the jewellery? I'm not saying. Go on. So no, you're no, thinking no. that they're gonna thieve from you as well? Okay, so if you're listening, yeah, um, route, don't, no. don't think about the obvious places when you're looking for the jewellery. No. But I, I do things, like, I would do things like, you know, uh, just pop a little bit of urine. Um, maybe in the salt cellar or something. Yeah. Just do some. I'd say what I do is I take the take the toothbrushes in the bathroom, just pop them in the toilet, flush yeah. it, and then yeah. take them back again. Just pop them back in there. Leave them nothing. Le leave them out. When they were coming last week, I brought the biscuits to work. <laughs> and Suzanne was like, "No, you didn't really. got no mates. You no, brought I your biscuits, I brought the biscuits. To work. No, 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 you weren't a tin. It was just a a packet of good quality cookies. <laughs> good quality.
Holly cookies. Oh. Yeah, you put all me down with the round Oh, there. God. But oh. That's what Susan always says, don't know, you know, why, why you like this, cos, yeah. you know, it's not as if you've been, sort of, harmed as a kid or anything. Mm. But I like the fact that you just once said to us that you don't need friends. You don't like friends cos they're a bit of a pain. Cos they call you up and they wanna be with you. Yeah, but, but mates are a hassle. I woke up today, right, <laughs> and uh, I think it was on, might have been on Five Live or something this morning in the bedroom, right? And uh, they were talking about how oh, it's Nelson Mandela's birthday. Yeah. Eighty odd. Eighty-five. Twenty thousand people turning up at his party. I thought, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in. <laughs> I couldn't be dealing with that. <laughs> Twenty thousand people. Think of the carpet afterwards. I mean, a good percentage of them will put in out fag butts on his carpet. Yeah, after definitely. Tommy Walsh and, and Charlie Dimmer, what's her name? Did lovely, lovely patio and a water feature. It's gonna, he's gonna come back and he's gonna go. Oh, it's ruined. And what's he doing for his birthday? Karaoke? <laughs> <laughs> Chinese meal, bit <bit> karaoke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder what Nelson Mandela's birthday party is like. Big cake. The, an enormous cake. Yeah. Some f the Spice Girls it? jumping out. Yeah, the Spice Girls, isn't it? Well, yeah. everyone. I don't know. Yeah. We, we are the only three people that hasn't met him. Yeah. I thought, I thought everyone's file would have been in the cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just in case, you never know. And, uh, <laughs> if Winnie calls, I'm not here. <laughs> have you not invited her? No, of course I've- No, definitely not. Poor Nelson. Happy birthday. How old no. is he? 85. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> no, God bless him. God bless him. Oh. 85 today. Oh. Right, bit of, uh, Songs of Phrase next, then, yeah? Do you reckon? Oh, well, really? What's that one? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. right. Silence is Easy by Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. Sorry, it just suddenly struck me something, I don't know if I mentioned it before, you mentioned, um, that you, you tried to catch your, uh, your guy out when you came back once, you, you opened yeah. the door really quickly yeah. to see what he was up to. Did yeah. I ever tell you when I was at university, now I'm very tall and I've got enormous feet. Size 14. 14. Size 14 shoes. And when I was at university, uh, everyone, it seemed to me, was wearing Dr. Martens. It was like, you, you had to wear a pair of Dr. Martens. It was kind of the rule. Dr. Martens was too big for you. Yeah, so that's a big pair of Dr. Martens. That's like, that's where the myth of the old woman who lived in a shoe, I think, I came know. From people with my size shoes. Anyway, I, um, I just literally kind of moved to university. I'd been there for like literally a couple of months. And obviously in that first period, you're quite keen to kind of, you know, reinvent yourself, be, you know, strike yourself, you know, try and give an impression of perhaps being quite sophisticated, worldly, cool, all those things that, you know, you've, you've left behind all your childhood friends, so you're trying to, you know, develop something. But you didn't bother, you didn't... What, sorry? You didn't bother? No, 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 I was working hard on it, and I was kind of, you know, I was doing yeah. alright, you know, and I, I had my tie-dye shirt, and was, <laughs> you know, I was looking good, and, um, so I was trying, you know, working hard to try and seem kind of cool and, uh, not freakish, <laughs> and, um, I came back from, uh, from studies once, and I came in, and there's a little old cleaning lady that kind of would always come in every day and clean up our halls of residence. And I came back, and my, uh, door of my, my room was open, and there was like a little huddle of people just peering in, right? And I went, well, I thought, this is odd, you know, that, that my door's open and there's, and I'm not in there, and there's people staring in the door. And I looked in, and the little cleaning lady had my Dr. Martens on and was clomping around. Making them all laugh. Doing, making them all laugh, doing an impression of me. That's amazing. Imagine and that's, that. And Imagine that's the, the first... psychological scars that that has. I know that the she's more popular than you. Yeah, and exactly. They go, and they go, come on, Maud, let's go to the JCR. <laughs> exactly. Wee, and they carry her down. They go, drink, drink, <laughs> drink, <laughs> drink, drink. And, you, and she goes to, Steve, you better have that spotless by the time I come back. <laughs> you go, all right, I will. All right. But what I like is the fact that I'm sure that that's, part, that's not part of the cleaner's code. The cleaner's code is you don't <laughs> have <laughs> the keys to everyone's room so you can go through their belongings and, and play practical jokes. I mean, surely uh, it's a kind of... I mean, that's a trust. And she must have looked like a wall bracket. With her, <laughs> with her, I went bowling with him once the first time, and he, and we went bowling at this place. Where was it? I mean, Finsbury Park. Mm. And, uh, I'd never been before. And he's got to wear special shoes. I went, alright. He went, um, uh, so and so and so. Go, he goes, have you got size 14? And she went, yeah, I've got one pair. And she put them on the table, and they looked like crusty. <laughs> honestly, they're, they're, honestly, it looked like. That it was. I just started laughing because they look. They're so long and thin anyway, and they're multicolored, aren't they? They're two colors, and it looked like Krusty's, it's Krusty the Clown's mm. feet. And then the, and this dude just went, "All right, all right, <laughs> fourteen. That is big, isn't it? It is a huge size shoe. You're right. Yeah. And it was just the one cleaner in them. <laughs> just the one. Sadly. She did have loads of kids eventually and brought them up in yeah. there. <laughs> in there. Well, yeah. we got songs of phrase. Right, songs of phrase then. Um, okay, let's uh, just have a look at the prizes. Let's just remind us again what exactly Songs of Phrase is, because I know a lot of people put it out of their mind week by week. It's a phrase that's, you know, been said on the show a few times, that <laughs> night. Oh, um, but you remember classics, like, uh, 
What was, what was, what was- We had hairy Chinese kids. Yeah, there's, there's this hairy Chinese kid. Stop squeezing me, Ed. Stop squeezing uh, me. Carl, you're an idiot. Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, you know, some cl cl classic phrases. Some classic phrases. And so you use various old time songs and you put them all together and that spells out the phrase. Uh, before we, uh, we, we play that, let me tell you now, you can win. Look forward to this. What's this? The new album from the Star Spangles. That's called Bazooka. Is that out? Is that never heard? Of. When's, it, when's Bazooka? Out, is <laughs> never heard. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> uh, the best summer holiday album in the world ever. You've got th the treats on there include the fast food rockers and oh. uh, Laz Ketchup. Yeah, I'm um, waiting for their second single because I, I don't know what that's going to be about. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, is it going to be a bit more fast food? Maybe like Pret a Manger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Uh, this is very good. Yeah, two discs set. The best of David Bowie. Um, in Spiral Carpets, the best of them. Still don't know how they spin that over over three seasons. <laughs> no idea. Um, <laughs> Bowie's is one. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, we mentioned it last week. The American Song Poem Anthology. That's kind of a kooky collection of uh, of songs. And uh, we've also got a couple of DVDs here. Stephen King's Rose Red. I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to video. <laughs> yeah. Made for television. Yeah, yeah. And we'll never be seen at the cinema. And I know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of nerdlingers listening, so they will be loving Richard Dean Anderson in Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Uh, free inside, there's a collector's card, plus you can win some exclusive memorabilia. Brilliant. So I think a pair of, uh, there Right, are all you've got to do is listen to these, like, thirteen songs, <laughs> probably, to write a well-known stupid <laughs> phrase. It's only seven, seven different songs, right? Well, just get the most you can, just get be rough, artist or song, it'd do, it'd do right? And the and phrase is, um, about me dad nicking from, uh, telephone boxes. Right. You've got to give them a clue, because they've got to get, they've got to know what they're listening for. It's, it's hard enough when you know. Daddy's never gonna stop robbing from telephone box. Is that it? Yeah. Right. So what are these, what are these songs then? Uh, go uh, on in. It doesn't matter that some people don't know what that's about, do they? Doesn't matter. No, they're not, they're not, well, the, well, the reference Well, your father's are, a thief. <laughs> 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 yeah. Email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Let's hear it. Alright. From right. Also not um, grammatically correct. <laughs> no. but, so it's Daddy, Daddy never gonna stop robbing from telephone box. <laughs> Rubbish. Unbelievable. Play again. We, I think we just need the song. That's all we're after. Yeah, yeah. just the songs. Right. Daddy never gonna stop robbing from. Just again? Well, this is a desperate feature, it? Isn't really it really is awful. <laughs> from See, Rick, if we took more of an interest in this show, we'd have come in, listened to that, we and said, no not way. We'd have said, no way. I don't care how long you spent on it. We've got a reputation. Yeah. We've won awards. We've won major awards. We're not putting that tat out. But, yeah, no. You know, we, that's what. That's what but happens. we're just giving the listener what they're used to. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I think more full them for listening. Ricky.gervaisxfm.co.uk. <clears throat> Seven songs in there. Right. Read them out. Go on. What are they? It was, uh. Oh, have you ever got it written down? No, I can remember them. Daddy Cool. Right. Bony M. Bony M. Yeah. Uh, never gonna give you from up. Rick, Rick Ashley. Ashley. Yeah. Um, write them down! Stop, Sam Brown. Right. Uh, Robin was, uh, Miss Robinson by Sam and Garfunkel. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. Uh, that's not Robin. Oh. From, From Russia We Love, Matt Monroe. Right. Telephone. Telephone hanging on the telephone, Blondie. Right. And then Box. Living in a box. I should start by just saying, Carl, that the natural world is so diverse that we don't even know how many species there are. With plants and animals, there could be up to 10 million species. Um, there are 37,000 different species of spider alone. What do you think of that? Uh, it's a lot. It is, isn't it? A lot. But if, if, if there's loads of stuff out there that we don't know about, and we don't know what it's doing, is it that important? Is it worth finding them now? Well, yeah. Why? Well, it may give us the key to unlock other mysteries. A spider won't. Well, it might do. A spider won't be unlocking well, any that, mysteries. Well, that's, that's what, what I mean is, the police know about the gangsters, but right. they go, right, we're aware of them, right. Right, and get on with it. We'll keep our eye on them. And it's the same in the jungle. These spiders, the deadly ones you're aware of, the ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them, don't even give them a name. 
They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet that lurking in the undergrowth? I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised. I'd be surprised if there was something. It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're know, discovering new not. species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now because we have to. We live no, in a world don't. now. We do. We know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or. Well, no. Well, no. Look at AIDS. Well, when I was a kid, I'd no one never heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or. What do you mean it's like not a natural neighbor. thing? It's not. A, it's not a natural thing. It's not something that's AIDS hasn't been like living under the soil for millions of years. But I wait till the nineteen eighties and I come out and kill a load of people. <laughs> no, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. It, yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in. Not. I mean, it, uh, evolutionary terms. There's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just like almost like bacteria sat under the soil. It'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> <You're talking> but, <laughs> but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to... I don't think she can. Just to, even to us understanding the, the complexities of the universe, of because the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to, to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think it's someone in the 1900s. We uh, said everything that's going to be invented has been invented. And, and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. The frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, it's all, <laughs> it's all, not... it's all stuff that, right. that you kind of go, it's all right, it's a good idea, but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like, look at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who but... said he's up there with <laughs> Einstein? In, one, PR of, people in one of those programs where they did like great inventions of our time, it was easy early on. You go Einstein, you know, Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson, <laughs> and, that's, and they, they started to run out because it is harder to come up with something new now. Because everything that's needed, remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, "What can I make?" Oh, I need a toaster. They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill, and they've gone, "I need some sort of device here." Well, somebody, yeah, 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 yeah. And what can they do? Oh, Necessity like that, is the mother of invention. Yeah. However, there are uh, uh, people who sit around going, Where, "Where's a you know a loophole in the market? Where's a little?" Where's well, a niche? here's something. About what? a year ago, I came up with a see-through toaster, so that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. Right. So I've just been beaten to the post. <laughs> <laughs> I met a bloke on a conference once who sent a drawing to Blue Peter. It was their designer car of the future, and he sent them a drawing that was a car, and the only innovation was that you can have a shit while driving. <laughs> and then it, he put, he put, shit goes down pipe, which becomes fuel. They must have looked at that and gone, what a mania. I think that's a brilliant... I mean, I've driven a long way. I drove to Cornwall recently, and I would have loved. But I think he did it when he was about nine, seat. and he must have thought, "Oh, I'm being driven to school. Oh, I need the toilet. Wouldn't it be good?" But if why hasn't why hasn't that been done? What? Well, like Steve says, I've been in the same situation when you're driving and you go, "Oh, where's the service station?" You see a sign saying 36 miles. So what would you say? So you suggest pull your trousers down and shit down in the seat. That's a toilet. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you got your nan in your back. She's got one as well. So you are going to Cornwall all shitting? <laughs> well, not all the time, but it's, it's, it's more useful to me than a lighter. So also, what, at Where what do you point wash do you wa wa wash your hands or yeah. wipe your arse? At what point does that occur? Well, at the end a... of the journey. <laughs> oh, God! So, you get in, you have a shit at Deptford, and you wipe your arse at uh, Polpero. Yeah, but like I've said to you, this isn't like just people going, oh, I think I'll have one. You need one? Not really, but it's something to do, isn't it? I'm sick of playing I Spy, I'm having a shit. You have it when you really need one. When you have to pull off a motorway, it's a lot of messing about. It's probably going to be a queue at the toilet. No more queues at toilets. Ten minutes, Rick, that takes, doesn't it? Ten know, minutes yeah. to pull Ten minutes. off, have a quick shit. Driving along, just, it's just going on. It's just going on, don't even know about it. Radio's on, everyone's happy. Doesn't matter. I don't know, I mean, we all do it as well, that's the thing. Anything else you'd uh, come up with? There's so many things, chocolate fountain, anything like that. I just go, what are these? Who's invented these? Who's okayed this idea? And yet I can't have a shit on the motorway. <laughs>
think of computers. Yeah, c computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think a, a computer chip is just made out of sand, now for someone to come up with that, you go, this, there must have been some sort of alien involved here. What do you mean? Why do you <laughs> think that? So I love it. So the frisbee, rubbish. Anything too clever? Well, it wasn't an invention. It was an alien. <laughs> So there's nothing between frisbee and computer chip. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip. Where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding, yeah. So with, you with, think it was an alien? Because, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's great. Because That's... I, I can't believe that someone would go, right, I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do- I don't know, let's use some sand, we've got loads of that. You, you'd go, what, you, you don't... Well, that's what genius is, though, but isn't Carl, it? There's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been... Yeah. Uh, a, a spaceship, uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And there's all them rumours, isn't there, in that anger? They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, they go, yeah, wheels, we've got them. Yeah, 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 steering wheel. Yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? And they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find Carl, these sand. But the fact that sand makes computer chips is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is how the human being discovered that. Uh, what am I talking about? Sand <laughs> makes computer chips. <laughs> that silicon can have information uh, 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 put on it. But we're made out of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And hydrogen. It, that, yeah, but that's nature. You see, yeah. nature is amazing. You can't beat nature. Right? No. He comes up with some amazing things. Yeah, but man is nature. Don't forget that we are- we're an animal. We're a brilliant ape. We're actually 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, Carl. Think of that. We only differ on 1.4% of well, that, our genetic that, that, makeup. That must be the arse. <laughs> Because that's a lot different. <laughs> Animal rights is, uh, is a hot topic. It's a big issue. What rights should they have? We test drugs on animals, and uh, we're basically saying, if they die, they die. We'll learn something from them. People do make distinctions between animals' rights. They, they know that it's probably more acceptable to kill an ant uh, than... Uh, Punch a cow. Yeah, exactly. I told you, didn't I, about me, my dad's mate who had a, who had a monkey and he had to thump it. What? <laughs> what, why, well, there's two things there. One, why did he have a monkey? Two, what sort of discipline is thumping a monkey? What was the monkey doing? He kept, he was annoying his wife a lot and sort of, you know, pinching her ass and stuff like that. Right, no, right. that's Wait, not we, true. We've it's never heard true. this before. How have we had all these years no, of sure monkeys and we've never heard this before? Ago. Your dad had a mate who had a monkey? Yeah, I'm sure I told you. That, well, why did he have a monkey? Just for a laugh? Well, it was back in the day when you, people did. They all had, like, <laughs> odd, in, sort of pets now, didn't they? In, like... About 68. Oh, in 1968, when, oh, when everyone had a monkey. We had to thump it. Now, the weird thing is... Now, that's weird enough. Is this the... This is all the story? This is the entire story? No. You've got all the information you've got is he had a monkey and he had to thump it? Yeah, my dad told me about it. When he found out that I, I was into monkeys, he said, oh, Benny thumped one. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Benny Thumbtrunk! Oh, my son's into natural history, particularly, uh, Simeon Fry. Um, I've got an interesting fact for you, Carl. Sit down. What is it, Peter? Um, Benny thumped one. But, Brilliant. But, but what was uh, interesting is the way that people are thumping other people all the time. No one bats an eyelid. Thump a monkey. People go, you thumped a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes, they do! They do yeah. go, you thumped a monkey. So that's what's weird, isn't it? But this chim doesn't want to be caged and kept in a fucking council house in Manchester. No, he was, was quite happy. And if it he wants to live happy. like a human, I mean, in the 70s, you know, there were all, all the teabag adverts and all that, and they were loving that. No, they and weren't people loving interfere, it. people people go, oh, that's unfair. Now they, they're in, like, a cage in a zoo. You know, they, it was better when I was pushing a piano up a stairs. They weren't really, they weren't really... They weren't what, actual delivery, man. They weren't really sitting down and having a cup of tea. Well, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> uh, uh, a week in the life of the monkey delivery, oh, man. I love that. Chimps in a zoo now going, OK, now, we, at, least we were, at least we were free. Remember when we used to drive a van? And, we were, and we we're on 58 quid a week. Yeah. They're not meant to be kept in a house in Manchester. Cruel to keep a person in a house in Manchester, so it's fucking cruel to keep a monkey. <laughs> Educating Ricky, right, number three. Final one. You've had uh, hippopotamus. You different. had you had chicken. You believe it? <laughs> and the <laughs> the last one is um, I'll be no buying one of them. I love that one. All right.
um, interesting one, this. I, this, I mean, I've spent probably three days looking for this stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> and another one that I came across, right, and, um, I was gonna use, I was a What a like, great life you've got! I was just, you know, going on the internet and that, and I also, look in magazines, found a story <laughs> about a bloke <laughs> who, um, I don't know, he was messing about with a chainsaw and he's- he <laughs> 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 oh. I don't know, he was messing about with a chainsaw. Um, he was juggling a midget and, uh, while well, I was taking uh, his alligator for a walk and, um, go on. And his arm, uh, come off, right? Come off? What do you mean his arm come off? The chainsaw took it off. Oh, yeah, so okay. Like, oh. Again, anyway, he's going, oh no. Oh. So, uh, there's a picture of him on a exercise bike, sort of just with a, a little stump sort of balancing, but he's getting on with his life, he's happy and everything, everything's fine, he's not complaining, it's his own fault, he's got no one to blame, right? So anyway, he goes to the doctors and the doctor said, I can do something there. So he goes, well, it's alright, you know, I'm, I'm getting by alright, don't worry about it. And he goes, no, no, we've got an arm in, right? We can, um, we can attach that a real arm from someone who's, I think they'd passed away or lost an arm or something and uh, <laughs> They lost an arm and didn't want it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben, I'll have it. Are you using that? <laughs> yeah. No, because I know someone. Because <laughs> I know a bloke actually. Yeah. Well, can't you just put this one back on? <laughs> wow, well, it's first come, first serve, really. I was just, I, listen, I was just building a bionic man. <laughs> We've replaced one arm with a robot's arm, so we've got a spare one. So, <laughs> the doctor's going, let, let me put it on, he's like, well, oh, all right then. <laughs> so, so I'm do, grateful, bastard. So he does the operation. Right? <laughs> Everything's fine. He's loving it. He's, he's happy again because he said he can brush his teeth. Right. Okay. If this is if this is going to be <laughs> he's loving like, it again because now he can brush his teeth. Right. If this is going to be, and it was a leg, or no, no, no. it was a chimp's arm, <laughs> or, or it was the arm it of was, a killer. It was yeah. It was two left arms. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to s kill you. Oh, let's let's leave it then. <laughs> what is it? So, What's the answer? No, it's not that. I'm just what missing. is okay. Right, right. So, um, so he says, uh, go on and do it. So he, he he sews it on, and uh, like I said, he's happy. He's brushing his teeth. He can have a pint in the pub. He's lifting a pint with it. All his mates are happy for him. Uh, it goes on for about two years. Everything's fine. Then it all starts going flaky. Oh, I knew it would. Right. Was it made of chocolate? <laughs> all right. So it all goes all like gammy, and then for some the reason, the arm going gammy. It goes gammy, and it gets longer. <laughs> <laughs> of course it does. So there's a picture of him, right, stood in the magazine. <laughs> He's stood there with his arms by his side. Um, one arm's normal, the other one is like past his knees. <laughs> it's he can pull his socks up without bending over. So it's is really this gonna be they gave him, they gave him the arm of an eight year old child who would have been the tallest man in the world? No, he just said, oh, what am I gonna do? And the doctor said, oh, there's not much we can do. And left it. <laughs> What so, what, what, <laughs> wait a minute, you can't leave it there. That's not a story. So, Carl, that's what, not you've a got story. to tell us the explanation. What, what, Was what? it an incredible plastic arm? An incredible expanding arm? Did he fight crime later? No. I, well, that's the end of the story. You've got no yeah, scientific explanation as to why- That's why I didn't pick it. But you just told it to us anyway! Yeah, but I'm just saying the sort of knowledge I come over when I'm looking for the good knowledge. <laughs> yeah? So <laughs> why did this arm grow? Noise? Why did this arm grow? He must have had an adult arm. They couldn't have given him an arm. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just why I'm. <laughs> it's rubbish again, it's isn't not, it? Well, 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 I don't. It's an interesting story, but you should have. It's not. It is rubbish. But you it didn't read happen. To the end. There was photos. There's photos. <laughs> Proof. Yeah. But you should have read to the end of the article, Carl. No, I did. And he said, that, you know, he's not happy and he wishes he, he wouldn't have had it done and all that and, you know. Are you sure this wasn't entirely unexpected? No, seriously, he was saying, you know, his teeth are nice and clean again because he could brush them and that, <laughs> but his arm's getting in the way. <laughs> Ru <laughs> ruining his shirts and everything. <laughs> So I'll leave that. Let's play, let's play a tune oh. this come back with the next one, because I love the fact that that- This is like Ronnie Corbett telling one of his jokes, <laughs> that's ironic. <laughs> that wasn't even the story. He was gonna tell- well, Carl, that's that's about it, and uh, we got sidetracked on the last Educating Ricky. You telling me about a man whose arm grew. Well, something, well, something went wrong. I'm not saying it's, it grew, just saying- <laughs> What, 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 what? The rest went, of him shrunk? It went long. <laughs> it went long. <laughs> what, is that growing now? What do you mean it went long? Uh, did it grow, or what, did it come loose? That's, that's what I was thinking. Oh, so it was hanging by a thread that's made it look long? Yeah. It was in the skin? It's like how you can stretch a pair of tights if something is too heavy or- Arms are very much like tights. They so, are very much so like tights. So the one, tights. the one that we didn't get round to on Educating yeah. Ricky was, uh, I'll be no buying one of them. Go on. Um, 
Are you familiar no, <laughs> <laughs> with okay. the with the same white elephant? Something is a white elephant. Yeah. No, I don't oh, think so. Hold on. You phoned me last night and said, what does white elephant mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I told you. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I know where it came from, but I just was wondering what it was about. So how, in what way is educating Ricky, you <laughs> calling me up and asking me something? <laughs> well, do, do you know how it came about? You've given away some of the secrets of the show there, it would appear. I didn't realise he was phoning you for information. Well, he just asked me what, what the term white elephant meant in sort of like colloquial. <laughs> did, he sa did he say, why, why, why are you interested, Carl? No reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, go on. Well, what it is, ages ago when- So what do we understand white elephant to mean? It's well, some of the juice list that's like a bit of a, you know, a, 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 a you know, something that you wouldn't want around that's just, that's just stood there doing nothing. No. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Carl. So, uh, <laughs> so years ago when, <laughs> when people used to use elephants Years more, ago, go on. More, <laughs> when people used to use elephants? Yeah, more, more than they do now. Right. Um. <laughs> do now! This doesn't involve a midget, does it? No, no, no. <laughs> so, um, so you know, they'd use them in the workplace and stuff to sure, sort of- Yeah, as factories. Sort of, yeah. yeah, yeah. To move stuff Tea around and that. <laughs> yeah, it's a security guard. <laughs> yeah. Can't trust them with the buns, though. <laughs> 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 That's why they stopped using them. Oh right. god, go on. So there was loads of y loads of elephants knocking about, about and the thing is, right, you couldn't if, move from. If you have a lot of something, uh -huh. you also have a lot of demic ones, don't you? you a lot, lot of what? Of, you know, sort of demicky ones, ones that aren't right, really. Demicky. Demicky. Well, you know, like it, they weren't, they weren't properly. They weren't. They weren't properly. <laughs> they weren't Sorry, what, Carl? Properly. What are you what, doing? Right, I'm getting to the story. So what I'm telling they you were, is, they were a bit demicky, so they weren't properly. Have you started making words up? Right. Yeah, again, you Stanley Unwin, <laughs> Listen, reincarnated. What, demicky? What, oh, yeah. What, there was a lot of albino elephants knocking about. Okay. Where? Where is this? Um, Olden Africa. Times. Africa. <laughs> Uh, should we say Africa? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If an answer's got a question mark at the end, I'm not well, sure it's It's either Africa or India, but I'll give you a clue. Were these elephants, do they have big ears or little ears? Um, I didn't sort of notice the size of the elephants. I noticed, what I noticed is they were white because they were albino elephants. Okay. Right? So, <laughs> that's why they're heading albino buying one of them. Okay. Albino buying one of them. So, <laughs> what would happen is people who didn't know what they were doing, like, you know how you get people making a mistake buying cars that are full of problems and that, back yeah. then when people were buying elephants, they'd go up to someone, say, I'm after an elephant, and the fellow would say, yeah, I've got one here for you, sure. this is a nice one. Mm -hmm. And it was all white and stuff, and it had, like, blue eyes. You should never trust a used elephant salesman. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this elephant that's white with blue eyes. Right, so, This is um, great. So, yeah. uh, so a uh, fellow who didn't know what he was doing would buy the elephant and he'd get it back and it'd be all sort of lazy and stuff oh, and we'd we'll be doing the stuff. Yeah. Mm. And he'd say, what's, what's up with this? And his mate, who's a bit of an expert with elephants, and go, oh, where have you bought that from? And he'd say, oh, I got it off that fella, and he goes, oh. All this said, embellishing <laughs> nonsense he does with the story. You shouldn't have bought that. So he goes, why? And he says, it's only albino, isn't it? And he's like, what does that mean? And he said, oh, it's, it gets tired. Yeah. Um, it's not that good at doing work and that. You shouldn't it have bought it. It steals from you. But elephants back then were like a god. You know what I mean? Right. You couldn't, you couldn't say, oh, I'm sick of this and I'm gonna abandon it or anything okay. because ele elephants were seen as like pretty high up on the chain of things. So <laughs> they'd end up being stuck with an elephant, that's an albino, Yeah. couldn't do much, gets tired, basically gets in the way, so they said, that's where they're saying like, you know, but a bit of a white elephant there. <laughs> <laughs> what so, do you reckon, Rick? <laughs> I, I feel, I don't, I feel like I, I haven't been educated. I feel like I've lost something. <laughs> so at that time in my life, I could never get back. I feel like I've sort of been soiled and I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm angry. Sure, yeah, I can see that. And all that rubbish around, look at his little face. Well, what was that, all that <laughs> shit about a second-hand elephant salesman and his mate knew about elephants? <laughs> what is it, what are the, they had blue eyes. What are you? Well, <laughs> albinos have red eyes for a start. Yeah. Oh, that's it. We've run out of time. Oh, again. what? What? The, I mean, Sorry. what are you going to do about this next week? Are you going to actually do some w educating next week? And what about rockbusters? Are you going to make the clues proper cryptic clues? Well, that's the teaser, isn't it? That's what we'll leave them with. <laughs> um, you went off to Hastings. 
with your uh, girlfriend, stroke carer, <laughs> Suzanne. Um, now, what does she? Because whenever we meet Suzanne, we bumped into Suzanne recently at the BBC. Ricky and I. She's always very nice to us, very polite. We have a nice little chat. But I'm always wondering, what is it that she thinks of us, really? You know, because I'm assuming you immediately go home and whinge. No, but they tortured me. You saw they tortured me on air. Now, what does she? What does she make of us? Did uh, she listen to the show last week? Yeah, she did. Yeah, she knew. She knew I was annoyed. She, right. So. She sort of gave me a look like, you yeah. know what I mean, like that, when I, because we went to Hastings. That wasn't because so. you had like Marmite or something over your face. No, no, it was just like, oh. so yeah. we didn't talk for a bit, I just was like, you know, getting over it, sure. thinking I'm sick of this, Yeah. right? Uh, you know, is the, is the new kitchen really worth it and all that? <laughs> I phoned him up and left a message after the show, I said, you seemed a bit quiet when you left, I just want to make sure it wasn't anything I said. <laughs> 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 oh. Well, no, no one, no You're still one... doing your, uh, your Samaritans? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, did it, did it ring or did you just l ignore it and let it go to the answer machine? I think I turned it off. <laughs> I left it off, didn't I? Yeah. I just left it off all day and But that. what does she make of us? Does she genuinely think, does she not really like us? I think it's weird because there's no one who, uh, who she doesn't really like, which annoys me because she says to me, well, she says to me, I'm, I'm the opposite, do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, everybody annoys you. Yeah. And it's like, well, but that's that's my choice, right? Sure. And that's why I don't bother getting mates and that. Sure. It's just hassle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But the problem is sometimes me being like that affects stuff that she wants to do. So you know, if a mate like see her family and friends. Well, yeah. let, let's not say her family or friends, but say if one of her mates had a baby. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, you know, naming no names. No. So this happened. Well, I've just got a. You've got Watch what I'm reason. doing, aren't I now? Because of old the builder who knows you're slagging him off so, and saying so he like, stuff. Yeah. So you know she's got a few mates who have had kids recently. Right. Yeah. right. So oh, so one of them had a kid. Yeah. Go on. Right. And uh, she wanted to go and see it. Right. And she said you can come with us. And I was like, oh, you know, you know what I feel about babies. Sure. You've seen one. You've seen them all. Yeah. So, they all uh, look like Mouse Smith. Why do I need to see another one? Yeah. Right. And she's like, yeah, but come and see it. You know, you get on with them. Mm. Come see him, and I was like, it's, mm, it's a long way away. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. probably narrowed it down again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and and that that annoys her because I, I can't be bothered. Do you know what, what did you say? Did you say, oh, no, I'm not coming to see him. I don't don't I'm like not him. Not going all the way to uh, to Swindon. What did she? What did she? What did she? <laughs> <laughs> did the yeah uh, yeah or Birmingham or uh, or Cornwall? Yeah, 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 well, 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 you you know who you are. If you had a baby. Yeah, sort but, of in the last story, and Carl didn't show up. And Suzanne said, what did, what Suzanne, what, what excuse did she say? You were working or busy or? No, well, to be fair, I was no. working, right? And yeah. they are nice people and stuff. Oh, now you're backtracking, cause no, now, saying, do they yeah. listen? Yeah, do, they, the, do they listen to the show? They might, they might do. So you know they listen to the show, so once again, you've got an anecdote where the people who you've admitted to not liking to see their baby no, or care about no, no, them no, no, are no. listening to the show. No. Maybe you say, I don't know, maybe the builder's listening they're once nice, again. nice people, I like them. Just, 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 like, their just, just sneeze in the chilli pot. When the kid's older, I'll go and see them. Sure. Yeah. Just, do you know what I mean? When it's got its own little character. As a baby, it could be any baby. <laughs> It's got nothing yeah. to offer me. I know what you mean, I know what you mean. It could be a toy baby. But you know what I mean? It could be a bag of sugar. No, I know what, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. When it can start talking and, you know. <laughs> and lend you money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got, got good toys and stuff. It's well worth yeah. going, but at the yeah. moment. Yeah, nothing. I see, I see it when it's fast. He goes, oh, you about, yeah, brilliant, put it to bed, let's have a game of Scrabble. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, that's, you know, that's what we're talking about on, that, on our way to Hastings last week. For me, you know, that's where I went to chill after the. Course, and that's where you decided yeah. you couldn't give 100% to the public if you weren't having a good day like me and Steve do. Come rain or shine on a tin pot radio station that really doesn't, you know, keep keep me in um, frappuccinos these days. <laughs> um, well, but we'll say, we'll say once again on there, this is official and it's not to put pressure on you, that um, me and Steve are going away for a couple of months on the 16th of August to uh, do the uh, office special and if Carl doesn't come back, nor will we, because I see it as a three-way thing and that's the truth. Rick, you've said that a couple of times now, as though you're expecting a flood of emails and calls. Nothing. No, I'm just trying to get in pressure There's because been nothing. Cause I know for a fact that they obviously they want us to, to come back, and yeah. I know. I think maybe <laughs> not the listeners though. No, the listeners don't care. They don't care. Give it, they don't yeah. care. Who stands in? Do you know what I mean? Instantly, what frequency is magic? It's uh, one o five point four. Worth checking out because I yeah. have a great heart is one o six point two. I think oh, uh, virgins. No, virgins uh, one o five point. Uh, Bloody good station. What is that? One hundred five point eight. Yeah. 
which is well, which is good. Well, check press for details, but uh, yeah. we'll watch some cable TV, there's some good stuff on. Yeah, Kiss is 100, that's easy to remember. <laughs> um, there's a new Ride album out, gentlemen, I think you're probably quite excited. It's, um, London's Heart 1, I 6.2. Um, it's released on the 4th of August and it's all the BBC <laughs> sessions, all the stuff that Ride did, um, over the years for- Virgin. 105.8 for BBC and um this is one of them it's called time over time i think it was from the album going blank again it's very good play it car <laughs> play that for Pippa, who requested some Ride. That's from a new compilation called Waves, uh, and it's the uh, BBC recordings that uh, Ride made during the 90s, and I think that was originally recorded for uh, BBC Radio 1. That's a good station. A Radio bloody 1. good station. That's a good station if they're interested. Radio 1. So one of the I think they pay quite well as well. Well, I enjoyed working for them. I know we used to work for them for a period of time. Until we? we got fired yeah. for slagging off. Simon Mayo. I think it was Simon Mayo. Yeah. Do you remember that? I can't quite remember it. Well, we used to do this thing, uh, Mary and Hobbs at night, and, um, uh, we st we were, we were getting a bit busy, and so we were constantly handing in shoddier and shoddier work. Right, we used to hand it like that and hand it to them. A theme and there. A theme, yeah. I know, yeah. And to the point where they kept going, oh, like every other week they go, we couldn't put it out. Why? Well, because it was the most offensive, or it was inaudible, or it was twaddle, or you didn't record it. You know, yeah. there was things like that. Yeah. There. And then the, the, um, I think the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back was, um, Simon Mayo had just broken the world, Guinness world record for, um, DJing. Uh, and we were going, oh, that's brilliant, yeah, in an air-conditioned studio with loads of scrotes getting cappuccinos for him. That's not work. Our dad used to bin walls, or build walls, you know, that's work, not sitting down. If he wants to break a record for work, and we went off some things like, I, I know, <laughs> <laughs> we were going, we know birds who do leather stuff to, f to feed their smack addiction. Yeah. That's work. Yeah, that's I want to see Mayo on his knees outside McDonald's giving a rent boy a blowjob and all yeah. this sort of stuff. I want to see him hanging up in some kind of leather strap. In a to Amsterdam torture garden with 13 blokes jizzing on him, all with beards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why, why aren't you still there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh dear. happy days. I think happy the producer days. at the time said, um, we can't. I said, why not? He went, I said, we're not saying he did it, we're saying we'd like to see him do it. Yeah. Right? And, uh, she went, oh, he's a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> well, the more reason. <laughs> well, we were talking, um, earlier about, uh, friends, you say you don't like making new friends, do you? You're kind of repulsed by the idea of, of new friends, because it's too much responsibility. They might phone you up, they might ask you for a favour, mm. they might need a shoulder to cry on, you don't want any of that responsibility, mm. any of that concern. But I'll tell you what's worse than, than making, uh, new friends is when old acquaintances come out of the past. Oh, pop I, up. It really unnerves me. I, cause I'm constantly bumping into people who I just don't recognise. I know. And I, I always, I've got this urge to be polite. I can never just go, I don't know who you are. I've always Nor got can to I. pretend. I, 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 I've looked for clues. When mm. they say, you still, uh, I don't know, I go, yeah, so I go, right, and what about so-and-so? I go, so, you know, those two people, and it's like a yeah. saw in my brain going, ah, oh, mu I must know them from so-and-so. Yeah. Well, I went, I, went, I went back to Bristol once, and I remember, um, walking to the bus stop, and seeing someone I recognised from school, and walking all the way to the next bus stop, just so I didn't have to stand there and make conversation, because I, I just know. thought I've got nothing. Where's the conversation? I didn't the know you bit. then. If you're moving, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What can we talk about? We've got nothing in common, except the fact that we went to the same school. I, I was know. on a train station platform fairly recently, and a guy comes in and goes, Oh, Steve, how's it going, mate? And I looked at him, stony face, I had no idea it was. But of course, I, I had to go, Good, mate, good, how are you? How are you? And you know, I, I kind of, I had a newspaper and I kept looking at the newspaper thinking, every time I look at this newspaper, it's a, it's a clue for you to just walk <laughs> oh away. God. But he never took the clue. He never took it, so it was kind of, I'd say, oh, yeah, not bad, not bad. I read uh. the paper and he'd go, oh, where are you living at the moment? So I'd tell him and he'd say, yeah. Yeah. And I'd look at the paper again. Oh, do you still know, um... But, oh. but, but that's the way, when you know they are, it's just as bad, because they, they go, oh, we should have a drink sometime, and you want to go, oh, I'll be honest, look, if I don't want to get in touch with you, I had loads of opportunities. <laughs> exactly. I've had every day, from, yeah. from now, right back to the last 15 yeah. years, I could have made contact. I didn't. Exactly. It's easy. Take that as yeah. a clue. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, yeah. If you are listening <laughs> to this, and you perhaps know me from school, or <laughs> yeah. university, yeah. you're thinking of getting in touch, yeah. do not bother. Ditto! 
Ditto. <laughs> I do not need your friends. You've got enough friends. Better ones. Better friends. <laughs> I've got a number of better <laughs> friends that I prefer. The reason I've not kept in touch is because I don't really like it. You've moved onwards I've and upwards. moved on. I know people now, the likes of which have won major awards on Ricky television. Ricky Gervais, to name but one. He's happy. See, he's sat right here next That's to me That's all now. the friendship a man needs. If you have, if you have won four BAFTAs, yeah. then give me a bell. If yeah. you have not, kindly stay in your little, and underneath <laughs> your particular rock. <laughs> Because we're not interested. We have kept you out of our lives for a reason. I did not accidentally uh, uh, lose your number. Uh, when I promised to send you a letter, it did not. It did not get lost in the post. Nothing gets lost in the post. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Carl, what do you think of that? It's all right. That's all right. I'm I'm honest with them though. I oh. assume. Do you know what I mean? I just say I don't know who you are. Can't remember you. <laughs> not bothered. <laughs> I'm not bothered. You know what I mean? One prediction for the future, Carl, is from uh, an academic study, what, what the world will be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now. And uh, a, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life, you'll just need the egg or sperm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? That, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I well, heard that. So you got you you read a, an academic study, Rick. But yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go ugly. <laughs> different point, though, isn't it? It's that a is a different, different point. point though. Not listening to a word no. Ricky said. But no, it's on. just it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population. He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly. <laughs> ugly. Ugly. Yeah. So that, that just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. Left well, right and well, well, no, well then that, that doesn't sort of. What do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is it's, he, are you so saying? Many... Are you saying because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't. You seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick. I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of. Because at the end of the day, we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now, because it's all based on looks. Sorry, so, I, but what's this got to do with what Ricky said? What's this world like? Describe, you, because describe Ricky's, a typical town or, or country It's exactly, me. right, imagine London, you've still got the gherkin, you've still got the big wheel. That's right. it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're, and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? They're Everyone's just, still, yeah, uh, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine... Like, I, have you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that? Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on. Because it's not no, like because a we strict... have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now... Yeah. ...at a school photo... Yeah. You look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? <laughs> well, you can't tell the difference <laughs> between some all... of the girls and the blokes. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen, <laughs> not yeah, his school no. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. What are you talking about, Carl? We've got better looking now, haven't we? But we will change. Yeah, Probably we'll change not in little things. Years. I mentioned before about uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. It never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that that will go in evolution. <laughs> think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little <laughs> finger. I've, I've been watching my little finger. But again, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not, so not imagine that. To say, not, not French fries. But hang on, though. Well, oh. At what point are we us, then? Yeah, this is okay, good. Go on, go on, go on. No, because if I, if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge, yeah. and the stuff them them kids on that now. I just think, where have they stored that? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But you're getting it's forgotten again, about. Yeah. Basically, mm. you're you, you've got about the same hardware. I haven't. As those honest people. to God, I haven't. 
I know I haven't. So, what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yep. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> I'm never going to use my head! Well, I'm not, but because what do you what's think the your point? Head is, though? Because well, I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. It's like saying... No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, all right, Carl, how are you? And um, you're not there. You're asleep and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find that they're going, no, no, only do you want to see naked ladies? <laughs> no, only for questions, though, that I don't know. But what I'm saying is, because I don't know a lot of the answers, mm. I'll just say forget it, leave it connected to Google. <laughs> so, no, no. so then I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Mm. Right. That can access the internet. Yeah. Right. Mm. So what, why bother using But you're the still knowledge? the go-between. You're, you, Carl, are the go-between between the internet and whatever your but mouth says. you can't says. beat the internet. Yes, you but you're the He knows everything. No, where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone on one of them bright people on a University human, Challenge a human just put being. it on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm going to get lazier. I don't watch University Challenge and go, I want to be like them, I'm going to start reading books. I've accepted I I'm never going to be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is, is, is uh, I say to Suzanne, right, so every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer. And I'm hoping that one day... <laughs> what an amazing game! What an amazing because, intellectual oh pursuit God, that is! What a lucky lady. <laughs> what, a Suzanne, what a Suzanne said to that! Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along, and then I'm saying, "Oh, it might be this one, or whatever." I remember. The... I love that because I remember once it was about um, five years ago. Uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different pile of games um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals, and you have to go. Uh, First one is A, then B. So you say aardvark. Next one goes beaver. Next one goes cat. It came to Carl. He panicked and he went egg. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on egg. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's you know well-known jeweler of Fabergé is well known for his jewel encrusted war <laughs> egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you keep saying the same thing, eventually it's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl puts his right, head looks like hey. <laughs> yeah. I've just got more chance of getting it right. Sure. But um, also, he told me uh, when he plays University Challenge, um, uh, he says he's given up ever trying to get an answer. So now he tries to guess who's going to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Another great game. <laughs> Suzanne's wrote it on. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> how would you do with that? That's not. I'm normally all right on that. <laughs> I'm normally all right. On that. There's got to be something else. Well, there's there's <laughs> another. Watch. There's Why another. There's it? another evolution thing though. When you watch brainy people on that, are wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're wearing well, the eyes out. Mm, and that you, you can't argue with that, because the evidence well, is there. Can. Okay, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain. Mm isn't part of filling your head with stuff the journey of filling it with that stuff <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean whereas if i just if i'm say if you had a baby the baby pops out it cries a bit you go right we've got what do you want your baby to be interested in and you say i, I want it to be uh, a plumber you go right <laughs> when it's two we're going to stick a plumber chip in its head right yeah it's not right is it no. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. <laughs> well, we still need plumbing, Yeah, I know we do, but... The, it's uh, odd that they would have chosen plumber. They've got such... <laughs> no, yeah. Such kind of small it's what, it's, it's what ambitions his, for their It's what babies. his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yeah. a plumbing business. <laughs> they, want, they want the baby to carry on the business of the plumbing. They, they want the baby to be able to plumb. Well, what about this chip in the head? But you've made this but up. you've made the scenario <laughs> up. They're not putting chips in babies' heads. I thought you said they were. 
No, what, no, what did I say that? No, no, no. I said that. I, I think Steve's right, and I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and an and interface between the human and uh, a research tool or fun. You know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be, oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget your laptop. It's it's in there, it's an interface. I know, it makes us lazy. Carl, it's not a question of, it's not that, it's not that good Google is now Carl. It kind of looks like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. He's not the man I'm added. Right, look at it oh, like this. Jesus, look, I see it all the time now. Go on. You go. Ooh. Where are you going to someone? And they go, I'm going to uh, Dorset. Hi. Oh, hi. What road are you taking? Don't know. Just pop on the sat nav. Now, hmm. that's a start, isn't it? Okay. Let's act that out with me, okay? Um, I'm going away for the weekend, Carl. Are you? Yeah. Where are you going? Dorset. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you getting there? Uh, car. All oh, right. Yeah, well, which, uh, which way are you going? Um, don't know. Why, why do you want to know? Well, just, just making a, just making a friendly chat. Just, you know, I'm, I'm interested in geography. Which way are you going? Well, I don't know, really. I've got a sat-nav in my car, and Ooh. I'm getting there, and... What do you mean? What, what, what? Are you seeing it? Well, I don't... I'm not a, I'm not a pigeon. I don't... Well, you got an A to Z. Well, well yeah, but it's... Yeah, it's a, on a computer with the A to Z. What's the difference between looking at an A to Z and... It's a bit lazy, 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 don't Not it? really, no. No. Why? Why is it any different that I've got it computer eyes so I can go along? A to Z is a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit... Don't go to A to Z when you're driving along. <laughs> Clive, who are you talking to? Because we need to hit the road, we need to get going. What is this, uh, uh, this fucking idiot who wants to know what road I'm sorry. taking, which is a fucking boring thing who? to ask anyway. Sorry, who is this twat? Because Fuck we really got to get going. He's a fucking dickhead. Who, 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 I think he's an A to Z salesman by the door. I mean, we're, we're, just, just, we're just telling him we're using the sound now, because it's the quickest, most, most efficient way of doing it. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. No, okay. but, but look, look but what's happened. Who the fuck are you? Would Columbus found America if he had had a sat nav? Yes! No, he wouldn't. He'd have put in America and he would have taken it to America. He wouldn't. He only found it because he got lost. Now, if everybody just hold goes... Hold on, hold on. How would he, an undiscovered country, be on a sat-nav? <laughs> no. Go on. But I, I just What's mean... What's the difference between the sat-nav and the map in that regard? Because I've found some lovely little cafes on roads I've never been on. <laughs> and I've instantly out. gone from finding oh. a continent to a little cafe. I love that! I love that! A little greasy I am, I am off to discover the unknown world. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know yet, it's the unknown world. <laughs> What are you taking? Just a uh, boat that all lazy swim, you can. <laughs> I love the fact that he's so Luddite now, he's annoyed at the sat-nav. I mean, you'd have probably given Columbus a hard time. Oh, got a compass. Don't you know where North is, you twat? <laughs> James Addiction, Just Because, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We're all here, then. Oi, oi. About five, five past one. Yeah. Got two hours to go. I imagine you've got all kinds of treats lined up. Really well, there's lots of things on the show. Great music. You know, Nirvana, Radiohead, The Darkness, to name but three. Can I play you something from Led Zeppelin later? Yeah, please do. And maybe some Neil Young. Oh. Um, now, coming up also on the show, we're continuing a thing we start. We've only got four weeks to go before maybe we either give it all together or go away for a couple of months. Is it four months. weeks or three weeks now? Is it three weeks? Oh, sure. I don't know. I think it's the 16th of August, isn't it? It'll end soon enough. <laughs> well, it might be, that, it'd be a shame to end it forever, but it's all up to Carl. So, uh, again, he's in a grumpy mood. We've tried to try and up his attitude and it's, it's them, it's the listener that counts, Carl, not us. We may be feeling bad, but you, the listener, count. You come first, yeah? <laughs> okay, up, 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 yeah? Big. Big em up. Big up, London. Big up, you, the listener. Carl, leave yourself at home for a little while, yeah? Um, we're gonna continue that thing we started last week. We are doing the list of the most hated people in Britain. It's not us, it's the listener. So, we're, um, keep coming, uh, yeah. with those suggestions. Of people you just, uh, obviously, uh, you don't hate them. We don't want a list of mass murderers, dictators, and politicians. You can't have them, but, uh... Ooh, with uh, mass murderers and politicians, what's the difference? Oh, good, good point. Oh, good point. Uh, satire. Satire, yeah. <laughs> no, but that, that's, we're, we're doing some jokes like that as well, aren't we? <laughs> satire like that. We're trying to get onto Radio 4. Trying to get on there, yeah. And, uh... If there's any kind of amusing show that perhaps takes a sideways look at the week's news and yeah. the new, new uh, if there are any Radio 4 producers who are, you know, been knocking around for about 12 years with the same old hacks and they're desperately trying to get on telly, they yeah. want to give us a call. We're not interested. No. No. We've got bigger fish to fry. 
yeah. Um, but yeah, so for people that you hate, um, minor celebrities, people yeah. on TV, pop stars you don't like, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. And we're I'll tell you what, then we do like the Channel 4 do, then we give you the sort of list of the top ten at the end, and you can vote within that top ten. I'll tell you the ones out could in front wire, of- Sorry, could we wire up some kind of premium rate phone line so that we make a fortune We from can't it? afford it, but yeah. if when you email in, if you could also maybe- um, send us a lottery ticket, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, we make something out of this. The ones in the lead, and I'll never do in no particular order, but these are the ones way out in front at the moment, is Chris Moyles, Robbie Williams, Chris Tarrant, Davina McCall. Interesting. I'm sort of surprised at, but yeah. I know that's probably just I over think she's just been on TV too much lately. Yeah, yeah that t-shirt annoys me, Big Mother. Sure. That, that annoys me. Um, we don't care. We don't care whether you're pregnant or not. <laughs> Loads of people <laughs> have children. Yeah. I don't care. Get on with it. Um, and, uh, Dominic Mohan. So, uh, there's the, there, I mean, but, Think of your own. There's a lot of people just coming up behind there, though. Graham Norton. He's yeah. just approaching Norton. from behind. No, <laughs> 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 oh, that's the sort of stuff. It's sort of like we've done satire, we've done we've innuendo. Done smart. I mean, he's, he's the king of the uh, <laughs> double anyone... entendre. Well, he's the king of the single entendre, but we can double it up if you want. <laughs> if anyone. 104.9. This is the sort of things we're available. Go on. If any I'm the loving this. This is going to be good. I'm loving what's coming next. What? If any of the producers of Carry On London are listening <laughs> and they need some new talent to write some smutty innuendo, I think we're going Man. Yeah. Um, anyway, Carl, you better press the knob, right, <laughs> to start the record. Spunk. <laughs> Smiley. Ricky, I know you're a uh, Neil Young fan. Love him. You probably won't have this album. It has basically not been available for years. It's never been available on CD before. It was part of this kind of trilogy of albums he did that were very depressing, and uh, they've just been re-released. This is absolute dynamite. It's uh, on the beach. On the beach, yeah. And that's the opening track, Walk On, Neil Young. Brilliant. Yeah, on XFM 104.9, that's the sort of stuff. You've had satire, you've had a little bit of politics, you've had, uh, we said, we said Spunk, which is a bit naughty, isn't it? Which <laughs> exactly. is a bit cutting Still edge. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And you've had Neil Young and Jane's Addiction, so. I can't think probably of quite anything else. I'd rather. Down work. with the kids and everything, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, pretty hip, pretty weird. Yeah, so we're, Oh, do you know what else? Oh. I wish Tony Blair would just stop. Oh. Doing what? Uh, yeah. Doing stuff wrong. Good, that's good. Who else is there to have a go at? Um, oh, Peter Mandelson or someone? No, <laughs> no, no. He's good, isn't he? Because he's he? he's good because he's gay, isn't he? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he is. If he's not, then I'm sorry. But if he is, then well done. Brilliant. Good to uh, all gay people. Good. Yeah. Um, any underprivileged people? You're all brilliant. But people who are overprivileged, all. Oh. Do you know what I like? Go on. Foreigners. Dear. All the mad shit they get up to. Oh, what is you it see on the news. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that interesting, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> it's a, I'm watching. Yeah. I'm going. What are you doing? Yeah, that what are you doing that, boy? It's, it's weird, all, isn't it? It's killing and that. Yeah. So if you're listening and you're watching radio, and good form, stuff, and good stuff, and yeah, well, yeah, Euro Disney, that's good. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's the sort of satire and the way we can yeah. kind of tear apart popular culture and just get yeah. to the very nub bit. Um, but, uh, can I just leave with this? My, do you know my favourite country? Africa. <laughs> it is brilliant. Not it's strictly a country, huge. but it's huge. all the countries. Except the bad ones. Remember the bad ones? All the evil ones. Play yeah. record. Oh. Anyone at Radio 4 is listening. Yeah, we would like to get on some <laughs> kind of satire show, please. Long view and further on XFM 104.9. Richard Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Trinity. Yeah, going well at the moment. Not bad, not bad. You were just talking about, um, foreigns. Love them. And I'll tell you something, I've been meaning to ask you this for a while, because I know you're a very well-informed man. You yeah, political educated. and sort of liberal and that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does Chinese work? Well, the language. I can't figure it out. No one knows. I can't figure it no out. No one knows. It's like, it's not like any other language. No, it's not. It's, it's not. You know. Either spoken or written down. Well, it's not written down, it's, it's... Well, when it's written down, it basically looks like kind of little children's drawings of those little paper houses that Chinese people live in. Well, that's <laughs> what it, it, loads, it is. It's, it's, it's and it's loads of them. It's hundreds of them, from what I can make. But I mean, out. even French have a go. It's not uh, even the French um, like right words, but they've got some they of the make, right letters, letters like and they're going, "Oh, hello, how are you?" And it's exactly. sort of they're trying to do the words, but there's just something wrong. I think this this is like a speech impediment. I think. Exactly. Yeah. Germans um, are similar. Yeah, Germans are going. Ah, how are you? And they're trying to do the they're words. Trying they're trying to speak English, but it's just Chinese. No it. effort. <laughs> it's just, for want of a better word, it's it sounds when I listen to Chinese, it sounds like gobbledygook. That is a dialect. I yeah, I that's one of that's the, I think that's the main dialect. That Mandarin and orangutan. <laughs> but I mean, I uh, uh, that I can't. But seriously, I mean, I can't. Figure it out. I just, I, there's, no, I've got no grasp of how, because it doesn't seem to relate to anything. Wait, I've there's ever not heard. real words because there are sentences. Like you know, we have a word. If we said, um, uh, a gentleman sits by the stream of 
fish. I've said it often. Yeah. We use all the different words to each one of those words, so we've got a word for each of them. Yeah, yeah. They haven't, they've just got, I think it's like a triangle with a line through it. Right. So, right, which right, can right. get confusing, cos, you yeah. know. Yeah, so the quick brain fox jumps over the lazy dog. That's just, that's what, I think that's like a, I think that's like a little paper house with a feather on top. <laughs> right, right, um, right. But if we, if we got- Personally, this is what I'd love to do, I, I wanna use the fact that we're on the radio to answer these questions possibly. Yeah, to, to tell me about other cultures. I would love to speak to a Chinese person. Yeah. A Chinaman. Well, or a Chinaman woman. A Chinaman woman, I thought yeah. it's fine. But I'd just like to speak to someone, ideally perhaps, you know, a professor of Chinese. Or someone who uh, works in a chip shop, but someone <laughs> who was actually born in Chinaland. <laughs> someone born in Chinaland. Someone born in Chinaland, a Chinaman or a Chinaman woman, just to talk us through exactly what that was go they're going on about. Exactly. <laughs> and it's not, it's just because I'm very ill-informed. I've only really seen, um, Chinese people in kung fu movies, you know. So Chinatown. Chinatown, walking through Chinatown. Hmm. As we've said before. Not really a town. Not really a town. More of a novelty street. More of a novelty street. A slippery yeah. novelty street. Exactly, yeah. So, uh... Because I remember watching Kung Fu a lot. They always used to speak, they always, they always speak very slowly, don't they? They do. They're very kind of mysterious. Yeah. Inscrutable. They, ne they never really set. They are. They are unscrutable. <laughs> you cannot screw. You Chinaman. cannot screw a Chinaman or a Chinaman. They are unscrutable. They are yeah. non-scrutable. Yeah. If yeah. I was to go out in the street now and try and scrut a Chinaman, <laughs> you'd have no chance. <laughs> not because they you are could not, You could not screw a Chinaman for love and the money. <laughs> they are anti-scrutable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I could possibly scrut a Chinese woman. <laughs> well, I don't think you. I don't think you'd have any luck. You've had no. But luck. anyway, if you are a Chinaman or a Chinaman woman who can just tell us basically how it works. How would you teach us the basics of Chinese if you, if we were going to go to China and we wanted to interact? Where would we start? What would be the first words we would say? How would we say them? How would we write them? Please help. <laughs> this is going to run and run. <laughs> What's the number, Carl? 08700 800 1233. See, proper normal, normal talking there. Yeah. From Carl Pilkington. John Boy, uh, born again. Right, just get this educating Ricky out of the way. So, Turkey, yeah. So what is this again? Th this is educating Ricky as a tip included. Right. Apparently a fellow was on holiday in Turkey. Um, he's just having a normal holiday. Weather's good, you know, he's having a good time. And Waiters are all normal height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's having his meal. He hears a load of screaming going on in the kitchen. Mm, hold on. Has his girlfriend wandered in there? <laughs> um, they do, um... With a step ladder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the circumcised people in the kitchen, and apparently- What are you talking about? <laughs> whoa, 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 slow down, slow down, we were Sorry. sorry there for a what are you we're talking about? Well, I'm just excited about two things at once here. One, they circumcised people in the kitchen. <laughs> two, I guessed it was someone losing the end of their knob. <laughs> he did, yeah. I started thinking like Carl Pilkington. Extraordinary. That is amazing. Apparently it was, it was going on, it wasn't just a one-off either. Well, when I say a one-off, <laughs> I mean, they did it more than once, yes. right? Um, and there was, um, he was there for a week, and apparently the first night it was quiet, and then the rest of the week, every day, it'd be like having his, having his breakfast, or even his lunch, or even his tea. Yeah. Right? He'd be doing it all day. Oh. You'd be hearing Lunch screams. and breakfast, fair enough for it. Yeah, so it. at tea time. It don't do that. Um, and apparently it's a tradition over there. You can't even make a complaint about it. It's like, well, you should have, you know, should have found out before you, you come over See, here. See, I can't believe this is Sorry, true. Sorry, I'm a little I bit lost. The, the, he true. was in a restaurant, uh, uh, in a hotel, and there were people having circumcisions in uh, the, in the kitchen. Yeah. In the, is that right? I, 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 I'm even worried that we're bordering on the racist here, suggesting that that is tradition, that Turkish people cut the end of their cocks off in the kitchen. Yeah. At meal times. Mm. I think you're wrong, Carl. This just sounds ludicrous, Carl. No, I don't think it happens everywhere. Right. I think this- Just in this, oh, this, this, in this hotel. Certain, certain places. <laughs> certain hotels. Certain hotels. What, is it like two star? Yeah. No, I, 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 that, Why did he go to the foreskin inn? <laughs> <laughs> it was his own fault, wasn't it? <laughs> so, that, that's- Sorry, that, that's it, is it? Have they closed- so, so, no, wait, 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 that's the story. You, you educated me, right? <laughs> Once a fella saw some <laughs> Turkish people cutting the tip of their- No, I'm off in the kitchen. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks very much, Carl. Got any more? Well, there's things you can learn from it. Either don't go to Turkey. No! <laughs> uh, don't have calamari when you're over there. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Okay, Carl. One more. Can't we just- Don't get the ump, just because so far you've come up with nothing. What's the la last one? Give us the teaser clue again. It was, um, I want to come here in hindsight. I wouldn't have come here in Ironside. Yeah. 
Right, well, give me some education. This will be the thing that teaches me something. I can feel it in my bones. Come on. Uh, there's a kid in Kenya. Uh, -huh. uh he was messing about with some beans. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Mentor. We guessed that as well. You did, yeah. Um. He's fed up because we've guessed his puns, I think. He put one of them in his ear. Yeah. Um. <laughs> The mum or the dad said, uh, oh, what have you done that for, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'll have to take you to the doctors now. So they took the kid to the doctors, and the doctor said, oh, he said, I can get that out, I can sort that out for you. So, um, he took it out, and the doctor said, right, that's, uh, that's three pound fifty. <laughs> and the dad said, I've only got two seventy on me. And the doctor said, right, well, and put, he put the bean back in his, his kid's ear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, a couple of questions from me, very quickly. Are you sure that those were definitely the sums involved, were they? <laughs> well, the equivalent of whatever, right. whatever the deal with in, in Kenya. Yeah. It was the equivalent of, well, you know. Oh, so, 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 you, so what currency was it, Carl, that you, you translated into sterling? I don't know. No, it, no, it was saying in in the thing. It said the equi equivalent of three pound fifteen two pound seven. Is that, did yeah. it say that? Yeah. So did it like, say that? Yeah. Did Carl look at me? Look at me. Did it say that? Yeah. It said. It said that's that. That was the. Uh, did it say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. It, it, it definitely said that. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So it's just like I suppose. I don't know. I mean, all these things. The idea is, it's not like a lesson. It's like. I'll tell you this. See what you can get from it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so yeah. you look at what I've told you already. The, the yeah. knights who said shut your face. That's yeah, like that's that's amazing. That explains itself. Yeah. Um, turkey with the circumcisions in a restaurant. Yeah. You know, that that hold me in good stead. Yeah. Go don't on. don't go there. Or whatever. Yeah. This one. Um, if you're in, can you don't put beans in your ears or something? I d <laughs> doctors or carry three pounds fifty or the equivalent I mean, of. I, it's just the idea that the little doctor put it back in his ear. He, yeah, he forced it back in his ear. So is it still there to this day? I mean, is there any update on that stuff? Or did he go back with the 350? I presume he either went and got a, like a second opinion, see if he could get it cheaper. Right. For another doctor. Yeah. Or he said, right, I'll come back next week. Yeah. After I've been paid. Or he saw how the doctor did it and thought, well, I'll have a go at that. Sure. I'll get home. Yeah, for free. But he never said what it, how it ended. No. No. But, I mean, I, I, I apologise for this week, so I mean, I, I, I haven't got that much out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Introduced. Coming up on the show, we've got Educating Ricky. I'm not happy with this. Oh, really? Because the, the last few weeks have been genius. <laughs> what, it's, it, what, it's a drop in quality, is there, of the education of me? <laughs> well, it's, it's just, like I said, I've wasted a lot of time this week searching on the web, right? Um, you waste a lot of time searching on the web because you come up with things that aren't true. Why don't you look in books and verified sort of like journals? The web is the new book though, isn't it? No. The it web is, new is the new book. <laughs> That's the new going on. Yeah. Well, so I've been searching, there's hardly anything. I spoke to you in the week. Um, yeah. about Monday or Tuesday. What did you say? Two there's days. nothing happened this week in the world. There's nothing from... going on. There was a new car wash that you can put dogs in. <laughs> There was a car wash you could put on. That's the only thing that's happened in the world. <laughs> and that and the jellyfish, <laughs> and we've covered that, so. <laughs> yeah. Can you just quickly tell us about the car wash with the dog in it? Well, that, I don't know what's the that story. That didn't make the top I three. Did, I, didn't, I didn't waste that much time on it, to be honest. What did it, it just say? Said, it just said, um, you know, how busy are you? Uh, have you got a dog? Um, <laughs> how about saving some time? There's some car wash out. Um, it's, it's not a car wash, it's dog wash. Um, you take it down there, put your coin in, put your dog in, and it comes out clean. See, there's nothing in is it. This, is this called a bath, isn't it? No, but it's like a machine. Right. There's a machine. But, but we'll look, you know, that's why I didn't pick it. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, come on then. Right. I need some education. I no, need it's Rockbusters. Rock I know, Busters but I need education. I need I some know, education. I know, I know, but we've promised some Rockbusters. Educating Ricky, I will be ditching before Christmas. Why? <sighs> it will be going. Really? Why? Because there's nothing out it's, there. It's just struggling. I was thinking on the way in today, I can either do, um, doing something more with Steve, because we've done, like, the Ricky angle. Either yeah. we can do, uh um, Educating Steve. No, either like a, a bit of a call my bluff type thing, but it's like a con merchant, and I have to like trick you. 
Okay. Car merchant, so I'm the I like car it. And you're the other merchant. And then, mm. oh, I was thinking something that you just do, do some work, and you have a moan for a bit. Okay. And that's a bit, that, that's like a wine merchant that you just like <laughs> whine on about something. <laughs> uh, again, just, I, I, I the pun comes first like, for yeah, you, doesn't it? Yeah. Before it's like that first. Yeah. That's like, uh, okay. I told you I've come up with a couple of sitcoms for me. Go on. One is I've got an imaginary navy called Merchant's Navy. It's yeah. it's, 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 I've got yeah. a navy in it. And the pre premise is I've got a navy. Yeah. And another one is I live in. And that's as far as he's got as well. Yeah, that's all I come up with. If, you, if you've got any ideas there, uh, Carl, yeah. that'd be much appreciated. Mm. Another one is I live in quite a salubrious part of North London, and that's called Merchant of Little Venice. And I live in Little Venice. Uh, I d again, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens, but, uh, mm. any ideas, Carl? <laughs> you know, I've got one when I play an Italian waiter, and it's called Shut Up a Gervais. Yep. That's so, uh, we're, we're, that's the one we're working on now, actually, to follow up with the office. Do you like that? Yeah. 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 It, yeah. We'll do something with that. Yeah. We have still got Educating Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on, uh, on, let's have one, let's have one. No, I'll give, I'll give you the titles. Give me the titles, yeah, go on, yeah. Right, you've got, um, three bits of info that's gone on in the world. Yeah. Or, uh, well, possibly. Sort of, sort of uh, information. Older times? Old Never go further stuff. back in the 17th century, do we? Well, uh, no, let's, 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 let's make it clearer. There's three bits of information <laughs> that people have put on the net. <laughs> yeah. Whether or not they're true. Well, <laughs> yeah. Different issue. And that he still gets it a little bit wrong oh, in translation. Well, yeah. And sort of adds bits to it. <laughs> yeah. Go right, on. So we've got, uh, I love it when he plays out those historical dialogues. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. like the 15th century where he goes, so anyway, a bloke says to himself, <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. <laughs> so the horse isn't happy. Yeah. yeah go on. Right, so the three that you've, uh, you've got a pick from, you've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh. let's get your kit on, we're off down the butchers, yeah? Uh, We've right. got, um, wash up with you. <laughs> <laughs> wash up with wash you. Wash up with you! Ah! Yeah! And, yeah. Uh, the last one, I couldn't really think of a, a good title for, so yeah. it's just, uh, <laughs> Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something? <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl, when was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been round, haven't they, so been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We were just chatting about, um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. Now, I used to love them. Yeah. When I was younger. Yeah. yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got this year? No, just no, recently. years ago. Oh, years like, ago. years ago, when I loved them. I said, I love Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. yeah. He met one of his mates. He didn't nick him from the sweet shop? No, no. No, that's No, he knew did. some yeah. mate who, uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And, uh, he must have got about, he, he must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tacs. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, honestly, mm. we'd about 24 on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard under the, uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. Mm. Now, I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? In how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then, uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you were sick. lovely fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just- What just- this, Sorry, whoa, 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 bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah, about. <laughs> they were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> Yeah. For an hour, uh, talking about the, the I've already tic -tac run out of responses. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no that. Opinion, I mean, right. I was nearly going to say, what would you do with the empty little flicky tic-tac boxes? Yeah. And then I you realise that that's utterly done and boring. Well, I was struggling. I don't know what this hand like is, other than a yeah. bloke. Other than you said your dad, I like tic-tacs, me. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. Yeah. Albert, you got tic-tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bring him out. Put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breast like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the cunting place. Oh, do you want some more? No. Oh, cause me fucking down. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Cause me real for about a fucking hour. No. And then we bring it up in an audio book. But that's, I think that's how we got onto it. Because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load, I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no. No, we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was you just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ. Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? That's it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity, it is the same condensity. Um, same condensity. Yeah, so I got rid of them like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, even <laughs> though I'd got shut of them all, um, you'd be backing up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> it's 
tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. Ding dong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. That sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like Batman or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be back in it. Singing it Sheila's all. getting married. Hannah gets confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. No, it's, it's a the, really the, little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell of That's a incorrect. hell of a time you had with your parents there oh. and the old Tic Tac remnants. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when when I the mum and dad regravelled the drive, <gasps> yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck, suck the drive if you want. <laughs> 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 no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> the tic -tac. What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac let, incident! Let us never speak of the Tic Tac incident. Yeah, I just imagine the clock ticking. There, it's Christmas Day, they're going, T -t 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 what are you smiling at? Oh, I remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about sending this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Carl, I know you like to be kept abreast of all the latest breaking science news. Did you read recently about the blind mice that they have been able to make see again? And, um. Hopefully, they're, they're, whatever they did, which allowed these mice to be able to see again, they're hoping to be able to do with humans in maybe about 10 years' time. Or at least begin tests. Extraordinary, isn't it, to be able to, I mean, to be able to cure blindness would be a it, remarkable it, achievement in science. It is, but it's just that thing how they say they've done it on mice and what have you. Yeah. If I was blind and I went in for the meeting, mm. the doctor, yeah. and they said, do you want yours doing? And then they said, like, mm. I've done it on mice, that wouldn't be good enough for me. I'd say, look, when the blind fella gets in, don't say we've done it on mice, just say we've done this on eyes. <laughs> Because what eyes? You say just a pair of eyes. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you say mouse's eyes, it's like, well, it's, it's not the same. And it no. sort of, it would make me go, I'll leave it. Yeah. And then you, you, you wake up and you can see, but you've got very tiny eyes right in the... Uh, the you've put in mice eyes! <laughs> yeah. I'm scared of cats! It's just eyes. I think I just don't like having my eyes messed with, and even if it was blind, I just, I wouldn't like it. No. Uh... And I think mine are more active than most, my eyes. What do you mean? <laughs> um, well, I went for a what's-her-name, Steve, so you don't know, I, I've, I've had uh, problems with my legs. Oh, no. Christ almighty. He's the same, what are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk like you're a 70 year old Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three Ow. times in one week, he goes, no, his legs Ow. rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. Don't. I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital, and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. He's going, oh, right. Christ oh. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30 odd years, I've been working hard, and I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, like, you're 30, what are you? 30, 33. Right, oh. 33, sorry to start with such a hard question. But <laughs> how have you been working for 30 years? <laughs> Well, I just have. I sort of uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm well, just Well, you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> pitting about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? Uh, I was 15. Right, okay. So you've been working for 15 years then. Okay, good. Yeah, right. but I had my paper round when I was 10, didn't I? And that was, that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that. Getting up at half four. It all adds up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. I kicked me height when I was a kid. <laughs> He always says this, A, like it's a classic story that everyone should know, everyone and also the phrase, kicking my own height. Yeah. No, Explain so. what you mean. Just kick me height when I was when I was Kick your no one understands. You kicked your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I kicked my height. It's not a well-known phrase, you can't just go, I kick me height. So you were, so you were four and a half foot, and you've put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. Right, okay. Oh, yeah. Imagine seeing that in the playground. They go, <laughs> get Carl Pilkington to kick his eye. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. He wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. <laughs> so, why, why did you fall over? They tickets, the neighbours were cracking <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did, did, you, did you hit I yourself just in the I head? I didn't have to kick the eye. 
I mean, my leg got high up, but I was that chuffed that I got that high, I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> Like, what the fuck did that look like? He's got to think it all through. I thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, no, like, no, no. You, you, stay there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ but you almighty. didn't think, well, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I got my leg off. I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> like a Hitler salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back. Yeah. And, uh, and I did some damage, I think. Mm. And it's because Definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like, all like, all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had, like, a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done, because when you get older, I mean, it was a kidney stone thing. Once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think, got to start looking after your body. Do you think body. you could die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for 15 years? <laughs> well, you just... Do you think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well, it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking of <laughs> Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever then, I'm just saying, you yeah. gotta look after yourself. You yeah. know, if there's anyone listening you could out always there who's, who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you I'll what though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, put the leg back down <laughs> immediately after. So anyway, so I went to see this fella, to, uh, like a professional, uh, leg rubber. A uh, professional leg rubber. Yeah. And he's, uh, he, he sort of said, uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of, like, podcasts i said am i in charge of my brain or is my brain in charge of me yeah do you remember what i said that's the most stupid thing you've ever said yeah well well listen to this then so oh. i go and see this leg rubber professional leg rubber yeah right and he is professional yeah right remember so can... leg rubber you haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation He's a leg rubber. So, so this this whatever however profound this is it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing not just leg, does he, he do does left back, and right or back, back rubbing as well he does it all right right, right. so i'm in there rubber. and i didn't mention about how i thought my brain was you know was in charge of me and stuff uh I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, whoa, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well and your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go Yeah, but they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so so he lifted the leg up, and I went right. Was well, this another laundrette? This surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that. On oh, the okay. <laughs> oh, he's got towels. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So um, definitely a laundrette. So so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got uh, towels. Halfway through, through his pants, yeah, bras. Halfway through, he said, "You haven't got twenty p over for the dryer." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I'm lying there and he lifts the leg up yeah. and I'm like, oh, that hurts a lot. Mm. So he said, oh yeah, short nerves. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you, you know, your, your outside of the body is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't <laughs> sound like a doctor. He does not sound like the a doctor. The outside of your body's yeah. longer than the inside. <laughs> so he, he, he had me lying on my front and what have you and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he's going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid, this as well. Mm -hmm. Put me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice, though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I have quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that. I said, oh, you know, that, that's that. He went, oh, shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> he probably said that. He said, that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. And a lot of tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional rubber? He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a doctor. He's definitely a doctor. So anyway, yeah. he said, "Do you relax much?" You, you know, haven't you got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these sheets to come out nice, nice and soft. He said, "Do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something?" He said, "Because you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world." I said, "Tell me about it." So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, "Oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person." He's a who's colourful enough to spend 46 quid for this hokum. He said, you're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them, rather than them being in charge of the so brain. So all you did was you met a person as stupid as you? <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's, he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up, that was the first visit, that's the first, I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But, uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like, 
15, no, he saw it right fucking tackle coming. No, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay. But anyway, don't, the reason... Don't go to him again. The reason, uh, well, I am doing it, I've got locked into it, I've got to go at least another three times Why? and try what to get out of it. I don't know, I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait to... Well, what's the wisdom he's gonna come up with next week? That'd be brilliant. I will kind of... Yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is... Your blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking... You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. John Boy, uh, born again. Right, just get this educating Ricky out of the way. So, turkey, yeah. So what is this again? Th this is educating Ricky as a tip included. Right. Apparently a fellow was on holiday in Turkey. Um, he's just having a normal holiday. Weather's good, you know, he's having a good time. And Waiters are all normal height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's having his meal. He hears a load of screaming going on in the kitchen. Mm, hold on. Has his girlfriend wandered in there? <laughs> and they do, um... With a step ladder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the circumcised people in the kitchen and apparently what are you talking about? <laughs> whoa 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 whoa! Slow down, slow down. We were Sorry. sorry there for a what are you we're talking about? Well, I'm just excited about two things at once here. One, they circumcised people in the kitchen. <laughs> two, I guessed it was someone losing the end of their knob. <laughs> he did. Yeah. I started thinking like Carl Pilkington. Extraordinary. That is amazing. Apparently it was it was going on. It wasn't just a one off either. Well, when I say a one off, <laughs> I mean they did it more than once. Yes. Right. Um, and there was. Um, he was there for a week, and apparently the first night it was quiet, and then the rest of the week, every day, it'd be like having his- having his breakfast, or even his lunch, or even his tea. Yeah. Right? He'd be doing it all day. Oh. You'd be hearing- Lunch screams. and breakfast, fair enough, really. Yeah, but it's it. tea time. And don't do that. Um, and apparently it's a tradition over there. You can't even make a complaint about it. It's like, well, you should've, you know, should've found out before you- you come over See, here. See, I can't believe this is Sorry, true. Sorry, I'm a little I bit can't lost. The, the, he true. was in a restaurant, uh, uh, in a hotel, and there were people having circumcisions in uh, the- in the kitchen. Yeah. In the- is that right? I- 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 I'm even worried that we're bordering on the racist here, suggesting that that is tradition, that Turkish people cut the end of their cocks off in the kitchen. Yeah. At meal times. Mm. I think you're wrong, Carl. This just sounds ludicrous, Carl. No, I don't think it happens everywhere. Right. I think this- Just in this, oh, this, this, in this hotel. Certain- certain places. <laughs> certain hotels? Certain hotels. What, is it like two star? Yeah. No, I, 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 that, that, Why did he go to the Foreskin Inn? <laughs> <laughs> it was his own fault, wasn't it? <laughs> so, that- that's- Sorry, that- that's it, is it? Have they clued- so, so, no, wait, 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 that's the story! Y you educated me, right? <laughs> Once a fella saw some <laughs> Turkish people cutting the tip of their- No, I'm off in the kitchen. <sighs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks very much, Carl. Got any more? <laughs> Well, there's things you can learn from it. Either don't go to Turkey. No! <laughs> uh, don't have calamari when you're over there. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Okay, Carl. One more. Can we just- Don't get the ump, just because so far you've come up with nothing. What's the l last one? Give us the teaser clue again. It was, um, I want to come here in hindsight. I wouldn't have come here in hindsight. Yeah. Right, give me some doing? education. This will be the thing that teaches me something. I can feel it in my bones. Come on. Uh, there's a kid in Kenya. Uh, -huh. uh he was messing about with some beans. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. We talk. guessed that as well. You did, yeah. Um. He's fed up because we've guessed his puns, I think. He put one of them in his ear. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the mum or the dad said, uh, oh, what have you done that for or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'll have to take you to the doctors now. So they took the kid to the doctors, and the doctor said, oh, he said, I can get that out, I can sort that out for you. So, um, he took it out, and the doctor said, right, that's, uh, that's £3.50. <laughs> <laughs> and the dad said, I've only got two seventy on me. And the doctor said, right, well, and put, he put the bean back in his, his kid's ear. <laughs> 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 I- I don't know what to say, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, a couple of questions from me, very quickly. Are you sure that those were definitely the sums involved, were they? <laughs> well, the equivalent of whatever- right. whatever the deal with in- in Kenya. Yeah. It was the equivalent of, of you know- Oh, so, so- 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 so you- so what currency was it, Carl, that you- you translated into sterling? I don't know. No, it, no, it was saying in- in the thing, it said the equi equivalent of- Three pound fifteen, two pound ten. Is that- did yeah. it say that? Yeah. So it's Did it like, say that? Yeah. Did- Carl, look at me. Look at me. Did it say that? Yeah, it said- it said that's- that- that was the, uh... Did it say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> it, it- it definitely said that. Definitely. Yeah. So, it's just like, I suppose... I don't know, I mean all these things 
the idea is it's not like a lesson, it's like, I'll tell you this, see what you can get from it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so yeah. you look at what I've told you already, the, the yeah. knights who said shut your face, that's yeah, like- that's, that's amazing. That explains itself. Yeah. Um, turkey with the circumcisions in a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, no. that'll hold me in good stead, yeah, go Don't, on. don't go there or whatever. Yeah. This one, um, if you're in Kenya, you don't put beans in your ears or something. I d a <laughs> doctors Or carry three pounds fifty or the equivalent I mean, of. I, it's just the idea that the doctor put it back in his ear. He, yeah, he forced it back in his ear, so is it still there to this day? I mean, is there any update on that stuff? Or did he go back with the three fifty? I presume he either went and got, a, like, a second opinion, see if he could get it cheaper. Right. Or another doctor. Yeah. Or, he said, right, I'll come back next week. Yeah. After I've been paid. Or, he saw how the doctor did it and thought, well, I'll have a go at that. Sure. I'll get home. Yeah. For free. But he never said what it- how it ended. No. No. But, I mean, yeah. I- I, I apologise for this week, so I mean, I- I haven't got that much out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Introduced. Coming up on the show, we've got Educating Ricky. I'm not happy with this. Oh, really? Because the, the last few weeks have been genius. <laughs> what, it's, it, what, it's a drop in quality, is there, of the education of me? <laughs> well, it's, it's just, like I said, I've wasted a lot of time this week searching on the web, right? Um, you wasted a lot of time searching on the web because you come up with things that aren't true. Why aren't you looking books and verified sort of like journals? The web is the new book though, isn't it? No. The it web is, new is the new book. <laughs> That's <laughs> the new going on. Yeah. Well, so I've been searching, there's hardly anything. I spoke to you in the week. Um, yeah. About Monday or Tuesday. What did you say? Two there's days. nothing happened this week in the world. There's nothing from... going on. There was a new car wash that you can put dogs in. <laughs> There was a car wash you could put said that's the only thing that's happened in the world. <laughs> and that and the jellyfish, <laughs> and we've covered that, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you just quickly tell us about the car wash with the dog in it? Well, that, I don't know what's the That story. didn't make the top I three. I didn't, I didn't waste that much time on it, to be honest. What did it, it just say? Said, it just said, um, you know, how busy are you? Uh, have you got a dog? Um, <coughs> how about saving some time? There's some car wash out. Um, it's, it's not car wash, it's dog wash. Um, you take it down there, put your coin in, put your dog in, and it comes out clean. See, there's nothing in is it. Is this- is this called a bath, isn't it? No, but it's like a machine. Right. There's a machine. But- but we'll look, you know, that's why I didn't pick it. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, come on then. Right. I need some education. I no, need it's Rockbusters. I know, rock but I need education, I need I some know, education. I know, I know you're yeah. but we've promised some Rockbusters. Educating Ricky, I will be ditching before Christmas. Why? <sighs> it will be going. Really? Why? Because there's nothing out it's, there. It's just struggling. I was thinking on the way in today, I can either do, um, doing something more with Steve, because we've done, like, the Ricky angle. Either yeah. we can do, um, Educating Steve? No, either like a, a bit of a call my bluff type thing, but it's like a con merchant and I have to like trick you. Okay. Right, con so merchant, I'm the I like con it. and you're the merchant. And okay. then, oh, I was thinking something that you just do, do some work and you have a moan for a bit. Okay. And that's a bit that, that's like a wine merchant that you just like <laughs> whine on about something. <laughs> Again, just, I, I, I the pun comes first like, with yeah, you, doesn't it? Yeah. You've worked like that first. Yeah. That's like uh, okay. I told you I've come up with a couple of sitcoms for me. Go on. One is I've got an imaginary navy called Merchant's Navy. Sit yeah. just, I've got yeah. a navy in it. And the premise is I've got a navy. Yeah. And another one is I live in And that's as far as he's got as well. Yeah, that's just, all I come up with. If, you, if you've got any ideas there, uh, Carl, yeah. then that'd be much appreciated. Mm. Another one is I live in quite a salubrious part of North London, and that's called Merchant of Little Venice. And I live in Little Venice. Uh, I d again, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens, but, uh, mm. any ideas, Carl? <laughs> you know, I've got one when I play an Italian waiter, and it's called Shut Up a Gervais. Yep. That's so, uh, we're, we're, that's the one we're working on there, actually, to follow up with the office. Do you like that? Yeah. 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 Is it, yeah. We'll do something with that. Yeah. We have still got Educating Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to uh, that. Go on, let's we'll have one, let's have one. No, I'll give, I'll give you the titles. Give me the titles, yeah, go on, yeah. Right, you've got, um, three bits of info that's gone on in the world. Yeah. Or, uh, well, possibly. Sort of, sort of uh, information. Older times. Old Never go further stuff. back in the 17th century, do we? Well, uh, no, let's, 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 let's make it clearer. There's three bits of information <laughs> that people have put on the net. <laughs> whether or not they're true. Well, <laughs> yeah. Definition. And that he still gets it a little bit wrong oh, in translation. Always, yeah. And sort of adds bits to it. <laughs> yeah. Go right, on. So we've got, uh, okay. I love it when he plays out those historical dialogues. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. like the 15th century where he goes, so anyway, a bloke says to himself, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll do. <laughs> so the horse isn't happy. Yeah. yeah go on. Right, so the three that you've, uh, you've got a pick from, you've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, oh. let's get your kit on, we're off down the butchers, yeah? Uh, We've got, um, wash up with you. <laughs> Wash up with Wash you. Wash up with you! Ah! Yeah! And, yeah. Uh, the last one I couldn't really think of a, a good title for, so yeah. it's just, uh, <laughs> why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something? <laughs> <laughs> James Addiction, Just Because, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We're all here then. Oi, oi. About far, five past one. Yeah. Got two hours to go. I imagine you've got all kinds of treats lined up, really. Well, there's on. lots of things on the show. Great music. You know, Nirvana, Radiohead, The Darkness, to name but three. Can I play you something from Led Zeppelin, later? Yeah, please do. And maybe some Neil Young. Oh. Um, now, coming up also on the show, we're continuing a thing we start. We've only got four weeks to go before maybe we either give it all together or go away for a couple of months. Is it four months. weeks or three weeks now? Is it three weeks? Oh, sure. I don't know. I think it's the 16th of August, isn't it? It'll end soon enough. <laughs> well, might be, that, be a shame to end it forever, but it's all up to Carl. So again, he's in a grumpy mood. We've tried to try and up his attitude and it's, it's them. It's the listener that counts, Carl, not us. We may be feeling bad, but you, the listener, count. You come first, yeah? <laughs> okay, up, 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 yeah? Big. Big em up. Big up London. Big up you, the listener. Carl, leave yourself at home for a little while. Yeah? Um, we're gonna continue that thing we started last week. We were doing the list of the most hated people in Britain. It's not us, it's the listener. So, we're, um, keep coming, yeah. uh, with those suggestions of people you just, uh, obviously, uh, you don't hate them. We don't want a list of mass murderers, dictators, and politicians. You can't have them, but, uh, Ooh, with- uh, mass murderers and politicians, what's the difference? Oh, good, good point. Oh, good point. Uh, satire. Satire, yeah. <laughs> no, but that, that's, we're, we're doing some jokes like that as well, aren't we? <laughs> satire like that. We're trying to get onto Radio 4. Trying to get on there, yeah. And, uh, there's any kind of amusing show that perhaps takes a sideways look at the week's news and yeah. new, new uh, Are there any Radio 4 producers who, uh, you know, have been knocking around for about 12 years with the same old hacks and they're desperately trying to get on Tally, yeah. they want to give us a call. We're not interested. No. No. We've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so if people that you hate, um, minor celebrities, people yeah. on TV, pop stars you don't like, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. And we're I'll tell you what, then we'll do like the Channel 4 do, then we'll give you the sort of list of the top ten at the end, and you can vote within that top ten. I'll tell you the ones out could in we front wire, of- Sorry, could we wire up some kind of premium rate phone line so that we make a fortune? We can't it? afford it, but yeah. if when you email in, if you could also maybe, um, send us a lottery ticket, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, we make something like this. The ones in the lead, I'll no, do in no particular order, but these are the ones way out in front at the moment, is Chris Moyles, Robbie Williams, Chris Tarrant, Davina McCall. Interesting. I'm sort of surprised at, but yeah. I know that it's probably just I over from she's just been on TV too much lately. Yeah, yeah that t-shirt annoys me, big mother. Sure. That, that annoys me. Um, we don't care. We don't care whether you're pregnant or not. <laughs> Loads of people yeah. have children. Yeah. I don't care. Get on with it. Um, and, uh, Dominic Mohan. So, uh, there's the, there, I mean, but, Think of your own. There's a lot of people just coming up behind there, though. Graham Norton. He's yeah. just approaching Norton. from behind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that's the sort of stuff! It's sort of like we've done satire, we've done we've done smart. I mean, he's, he's the king of the, uh, <laughs> double anyone... entendre. Well, he's the king of the single entendre, but we can double it up if you want. <laughs> if anyone- 104.9, <laughs> this is the sort of things we're made with. Go on. If any I'm loving pro... this. This is gonna be good. I'm loving what's coming next. What? If any of the producers of Carry On London are listening <laughs> and they need some new talent to write some smutty innuendo, I think we're your man. Yeah. Um, anyway. Carl, you better press the knob, right, <laughs> to start the record. Spunk. <laughs> Spunk. Ricky, I know you're a uh, Neil Young fan. Love him. You probably won't have this album. It has basically not been available for years. It's never been available on CD before. It was part of this kind of trilogy of albums he did that were very depressing, and uh, they've just been re-released. This is absolute dynamite. It's uh, On the Beach. On the Beach? Yeah. And that's the opening track, Walk On, Neil Young. Brilliant. On XFM 104.9, that's the sort of stuff. You've had satire, you've had a little bit of politics. You've had, uh, we said, we said Spunk, which is a bit naughty, isn't it? Which <laughs> exactly. is a bit cutting edge. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you've had Neil Young and Jane's Addiction, so. I can't think probably of quite anything else. I'd rather. Down work. with the kids and everything, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, pretty hip, pretty weird. Yeah, so we're, Oh, do you know what else? Oh. I wish Tony Blair would just stop. Oh. Doing what? Uh, yeah. Doing stuff wrong. Good, that's good. Who else is there to have a go at? Um, oh, Peter Mandelson or someone? <laughs> no. No? No, he's good, isn't he? Cause is he? He's, he's good because he's gay, isn't he? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he is. If he's not, then I'm sorry, but if he is, then well done. Brilliant. Good to, uh, all gay people good. Yeah. Um, any underprivileged people, you're all brilliant. But people who are overprivileged, oh. Do you know what I like? Go on. Foreigners. 
Do you? All the mad shit they get up to. Oh, what is you it see it? on the news. It's yeah. just that interesting, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> it's a, I'm watching yeah. it, I'm going, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing that, boy? It's, it's weird, all isn't it? Killing and that. Yeah. So if you're listening and you're watching and the radio good stuff. And good stuff and Yeah, well, yeah. Euro Disney, that's good. <laughs> so So anyway, that's the sort of satire and the way we can yeah. kind of tear apart popular culture and just get yeah. to the very nub bit. Um well, can I just leave with this? My do you know my favourite country? Africa. <laughs> it is brilliant. Not it's strictly a country, huge. but it is huge. all the countries. Except the bad ones. Remember the bad ones? All the evil ones. Play yeah. record. Oh. Anyone at Radio 4 is listening. Yeah, we would like to get on some <laughs> kind of satire show, please. <laughs> Long view and further on XFM 104.9. Richard Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Trinity. Yeah, going well at the moment. Not bad, not bad. You were just talking about, um, foreigns. Love them. And I'll tell you something, I've been meaning to ask you this for a while, because I know you're a very well-informed man. You yeah, really political engaged. and sort of liberal and that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does Chinese work? Well, the language. I can't figure it out. No one knows. <laughs> I can't figure it no out. No one knows. It's like, it's not like any other language. No, it's not. It's, it's not. You know. Either spoken or written down. Well, I it's not written down, it's, it's... Well, when it's written down, it basically looks like kind of little children's drawings of those little paper houses that Chinese people live in. Well, that's <laughs> what it is. Loads of, it is, it's, it's, it's and it's little. loads of them, it's hundreds of them from what I can make But I mean, out. even French have a go. It's not, uh, even the French um, like right words, but they've got some they of the right letters. The and they're going, oh, hello, how are you? And it's sort of, they're trying to do the words, but there's just something wrong. I think this, this, this is like a speech impediment, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Germans um, are similar. Yeah, Germans are like going, ah, how are you? And they're trying to do the words. They're trying they're to speak just, English, but it's just Chinese. Kind of no like, effort. <laughs> it's just, for want of a better word, it's, it sounds, when I listen to Chinese, it sounds like gobbledygook. That is a dialect. I yeah, I that's can't. One of that's, I think that's the main dialect. That, Mandarin, and orangutan. <laughs> I but I mean, I uh, uh, that. I can't, but seriously, I mean, I can't. Figure it out. I just, I, there's, n I've got no grasp of how, because it doesn't seem to relate to anything. I've Wait, there's heard. not real words because there are sentences. Like you know, we have a word. If we said, um, uh, a gentleman sits by the stream of fish. I've said it often. Yeah, we use all the different words to each one of those words, and so we've got a word for each of them. Yeah, yeah. They haven't. They've just got. I think it's like a triangle with a line through it. Right. So, right, which right, can right. get confusing because you yeah. know. Yeah. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That's just. That's what, I think that's like a, I think that's like a little paper house with a feather on top. <laughs> right, right, um, right. But if we, if we got- Personally, this is what I would love to do. I, I want to use the fact that we're on the radio to answer these questions possibly. Yeah, to tell, tell me about other cultures. I would love to speak to a Chinese person. Yeah. A Chinaman. Well, or a Chinaman woman. A Chinaman woman, I thought it's yeah. fine. But I'd just like to speak to someone, ideally perhaps, you know, a professor of Chinese. Or someone who uh, works in a chip shop, but someone <laughs> who was actually born in Chinaland. <laughs> someone born in Chinaland. Someone born in Chinaland, a Chinaman or a Chinaman woman, just to talk us through exactly what that was go they're going on about. Exactly. <laughs> and it's not, it's just because I'm very ill-informed. I've only really seen, um, Chinese people in kung fu movies, <laughs> you know. So Chinatown. Chinatown, walking through Chinatown. Hmm. As we've said before. Not really a town. Not really a town. More of a novelty street. More of a novelty street. A slippery yeah. novelty street. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh. Because I remember watching Kung Fu a lot. They always used to speak. They always, they always speak very slowly, don't they? They do. They're very kind of mysterious. Yeah. Inscrutable. And they, ne they never really set. They are. They are unscrutable. <laughs> you cannot screw a You Chinaman. cannot screw a Chinaman or a Chinaman. They are unscrutable. They are non scrutable. Yeah. If yeah. I was to go out in the street now and try and scrutate a Chinaman, you'd have no chance. <laughs> I would not because they you are could not, You could not screw a Chinaman for love and the money. <laughs> they are anti scrutable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I could possibly scrutate a Chinese woman. <laughs> well, I don't think you I don't think you'd have any luck. You've had no. But luck. anyway, if you are a Chinaman or a Chinaman woman who can just tell us basically how it works. How would you teach us the basics of Chinese if you, if we were going to go to China and we wanted to interact? Where would we start? What would be the first words we would say? How would we say them? How would we write them? Please help. <laughs> this is going to run and run. <laughs> What's the number, Carl? Oh, eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. See, proper normal, normal talking there. Yeah. From Carl Pilkington. When I was about 13, 14, I once tried to improve the animal kingdom by making the hardest animal ever, the most perfect animal. Now, just to clarify, you didn't, in sort of Frankenstein style, no. try and bolt various bits of animals together. It, it was a drawing that I sent to Blue Peter. There was no competition going on. You just thought they would be appreciated. I thought they'd, they'd look at that and they'd go, well, this is, he's a genius. Yeah. This is like Da Vinci. Sure. Um, and this is the animal. This is what I thought, the perfect animal. I mean, when I say perfect, I meant the hardest animal. This right. animal, it could take anything. 
It was just the strongest, hardest, fastest, right? Yeah. So, I started with a head of a lion. Of course, that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it looks good. Right, bite you, right? Yeah. Okay. I popped that on the body of a rhinoceros. Okay, so it's got the toughness, oh, the yeah. armour, if you like. Oh, it's full strength. Head of a lion. Think of that. So you've got this picture. Head of a lion, body of a rhino. Perfect. Okay? Hold on, though. Pop some arms on it. The front arms were the arms of a gorilla. The arms of a gorilla. So it okay. could punch, grip, it could make stuff. The lion, I mean, that's where the lion falls down, because it can't make stuff. Sure. It can't climb, you know. So, okay then, wait a minute. You think that's got enough weaponry? Sounds like it. No. Pop on the tail of a giant scorpion. <laughs> a giant scorpion? Yeah. Yeah. So, so a scorpion that's, that's the size of a rhinoceros. Exactly. So the tail was as long as that right. So now yeah. this is a scary animal. Yeah. And this is where the animal fell down. Uh, I thought, right, legs. Well, the fastest animal is the cheetah. The cheetah. Popped on four cheetah legs. Four cheetah legs. It would have collapsed. Under it the would have collapsed the immediately. <clears throat> so, uh... Yeah. Yeah. And you, you drew this, did you? Drew it, yeah. Did you show it to anyone else? Yeah, my mates went, that's brilliant. Right. They said, that's brilliant. <laughs> And uh, then just sent straight to Blue Peter. Yeah. Any reply? No reply at all. Really? No reply Surprise. at all. What do you think of that, Carl? If you wanted to make the ultimate fighting animal, what would you come up with? If you had the power, like that fella in Arabian Nights, size of a chimpanzee, you could change into anything, but you could change into, you know, like that. I don't think I'd go for strength and that. I'd go for survival. What would you do? Uh. Cockroach. No, I'd have a. Uh... I'd have like a, uh, an armadillo's body. Right. Okay. I'd have a uh, head of an owl. Right. The head of an owl. Yeah. Why? 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 Come I mean, Why? What does that bring to the table? The head's there to sort of make it look friendly to, to the human race. So okay. because if you look half decent to the human race, they'll mm. they'll look after you. Right. That's the way it works. Yeah. Right? Okay. With the cat and the dog and all that. Mm. Right. So the owl makes it look nice. Right. I'd have. Uh, I wouldn't have legs, I'd go for like the slug juice. <laughs> what do you mean? So now you're a really slow moving legless armadillo with a head of an owl. Slithering along. Yeah. How is that gonna be friendly? They'll be they'll see the beautiful face, but then they'll be terrified by the slug. No, because the head's that nice that they'll they'll forgo the uh the sludge. But hold on though. But wait a minute. So this got it's got this thing that's stuck, right, going at 0 0.1 miles an hour, with a going hoo, right. You come over, you kick the head off. How is this? No, because the head can go into the thing like a tortoise. Can it? Yeah, of course it can. Into so, the armadillo body. Well, no, an armadillo doesn't do that. It just curls up into no, no, a ball. This isn't an armadillo, is it? So it's. Oh, Why has it got the slug? Why because is that so attractive? what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is an armadillo. They're good when they're on their feet. Flip them, they get stuck. Like a tortoise. Right. Slug stuff keeps it down. So if anything attacks it, it's like a limpet or one of them things that can Why well, have a limpet stuff. then? But 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 it no. can't get any how it can barely move. It can just hardly go and, get just anywhere. Just go and kick it. What just, do you mean just can't get well, anywhere. How can it escape from danger? It's gonna move it's very slowly. No, what, it'll that's lock, the worst it'll lock animal. Itself in, it'll lock itself in. Yeah, and then I'll just scoop it up on the you sand. You can't scoop it up. It locks itself in if it's in danger. I'd give it peacock feathers. <laughs> Why has it got peacock heard. feathers? Again, this, it's just it's, it's just the uh, worst animal you I've ever heard. Why is it got peacock feathers? Threatening. It looks more threatening. It that's what, that's the least is. threatening thing, peacock feathers. It's like Danny LaRue coming at you. There's yeah. nothing remotely scary about peacock feathers. Yeah, to humans. Yeah. But the humans won't be arming it because they like the owl head. People will like to have these things in the garden. Mm. Uh, they eat lettuce. They eat lettuce! They eat lettuce! Why has it got a beak? They eat lettuce, he's telling them what he's gonna eat now, the owl's going, fuck that, I want a mouse. I love the fact that he's based what it eats on the fact that how it moves a bit like a slug. Yes. Let it eat lettuce. Yeah. It moves that and let it eat lettuce. Like I said, it's not that weird if that if that existed. If that was normal, like when you went out to empty your bin, he was one of them sliding up the wall. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't even double take, you'd just be like, Oh, there's the uh the owl head peacock feathered thing. I don't know why he's climbing walls in an effort to find lettuce. Yeah, why is it climbing up that wall? Because that's the only way it can see properly. Because its head's coming out like that. So even though you've designed this animal, now it's you're even <laughs> expanding it's, its limitations. Problems. Well, it's, 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 it's mainly made as uh, to be on walls. Because <laughs> <laughs> what else is living on walls? <laughs> oh God! Oh fucking hell! 
What a useless animal that is! Carl, I mean. Well, nature chucks up odd things, doesn't it? Don't. Why are we starting on this again? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that is nature. Fuck now and again, you you'll get, you'll get stuff that. Oh, was he looking at you? Yeah. Was he really? <laughs> Look at his fucking head. Look at his stupid round fucking orangey head and. Oh. Why, why aren't you a freak? You've got a little bald head. We're not meant to be bald. Well, I, I was. I think that's the thing. That's what nature's done. You see, I didn't do anything with my hair when I had hair. I didn't style it, I didn't do anything with it, and it probably thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas people who love their hair, and they comb it and have different styles and look after it, they have hair for ages. Nonsense. No, nonsense, nonsense. absolute well, nonsense. What are you saying? Absolute it? nonsense. Well, it's a little bit weird then, isn't it? And that's what happens with old people, once they lose their, you know, will to live, once they lose the job, they get old. What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And it's like nature goes, you're not needed, and they die. Maybe that's what happened with the dodo, what's it doing? Can't fly, its wings are useless. Eat it, tastes horrible, kill it. <laughs> no, they did Nature. eat it. I think they did eat yeah, it. Yeah, but it wasn't very nice, was it? I, th I think they over farmed it. I think that's why it was extinct, because they did eat it. No, but they did eat it, but they didn't like it. Everybody, you never you never saw like a fully eaten carcass of a dodo. You're it making this up again. All conjecture. No, but they didn't eat it all. Everybody would probably try it and go, it's not for me, though. <laughs> but you don't know no this. No idea, you don't you're just making this. it up. What's this based on, I've that just... people... And also, why would that kid it out? Because, I'll tell you why. why. Because if it's not nice, people don't go, don't get another one in. And they die out. The reason we've got loads of chickens and loads of cows is because we eat them. If we ate polar bears, we wouldn't be short of them. Because you'd farm it, you'd take more care, but what's a polar bear doing? Sat on a block of ice floating about. <laughs> it's no use to us, is it? It sounds harsh. Once again, no got use. his information from a glacier mint advert. No, but it's no, it's no use <coughs> to us. We know they're there, and it's all very sad when you see them on the news sort of struggling and all that. Yeah. But it's gonna make them stronger. <laughs> I saw this trailer for this documentary that said, uh, the man who's having a baby. Mm. And I turned on, and it's a woman going through a sex change and she's pregnant. That's not a man having a baby. That's a woman having a beard. Having a breakdown. Uh, uh, what, what, why is that, what, that's a con. That is pure sense it's a man having a baby. Look, the world's first, but no, it's a woman. It's a woman. What do you think of that? What would you do if you were a doctor? And I came to you and went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of a rethink of these. Uh, I don't... I, the penis, I hate it. I hate this cock. But what do you mean you hate it? I hate it, I don't want it there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It just sits there resting on these fucking awful testicles that I'm gonna get rid of. I want, I want this thrown away. Yeah, well, it's, you know, they're not a great look. <laughs> I know that, everyone knows that, it's just the way they are. I mean, if we're all being honest, they're an odd design. I don't think anyone likes their own, do they? That's why we cover them, they're not a great thing, are they? <laughs> well, it's not why we cover them, though, is it? It's part of it, I think. I think deep down, I mean, even if, like, I know you, you ate the Adam and Eve thing, but even if back then he was like, good God, cover them up, <laughs> even he had a leaf on. <laughs> no, but listen, <laughs> so... Are you thinking fundamentally then that aesthetically the testicles and the penis isn't as good as it could be? What would you have there instead? Well, it's it's designed that way because that's the way it's got to be designed. It's more about function than uh, yeah, and and that's that's the thing, isn't it? With with modern technology, you, need, you know, the, the thing is the testicles have to be outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature. Yeah, otherwise the satoli cells die, which sort of feed to semen and all that so they, they you know to, to be functioning and sort of like fertile they have to be outside which is annoying because i'd put a little rib cage around them like that i'd, I'd pop a rib cage around those protect them wear a cricket box have that built in so you cannot get a kick in a swift kick in the bollocks no, that makes you feel sick but it'd be better if they could sort of reverse up in a way that <laughs> they, they, they were hidden away right. so yeah. that they were just then you dropped them it's like right we need to cool them down be at it in about half an hour. Yeah. Zzz, drop them down. Yeah, like the gear on a on an aeroplane. Landing gear. Yeah. And uh, landing gear down. And the bollocks and the cooling down. Or you could just like, just pop them in the fridge for ten minutes. It's well, like they the could detach and you could pop them in the fridge. Yeah. Them Can you make me some breasts? Easy. Okay. Of course, you say easy, what are you gonna do? What's your plan? Just, uh 
How do you do that? It's tablets, isn't it? <laughs> no, but... Testerone, isn't it? <laughs> Testerone? <laughs> They're Toblerone. I want to, yeah, I want some Toblerone. Just well, sort of pointy, pointy tits. Mm. Like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you stop, though? Suppose I came to you and said, uh, Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd... I want them... I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles. Yeah? The arse, I don't like it around the back, I can't see what's going on. Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my ass where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easier to move the head. You know? <laughs> It's, my, it's mine and Steve's favourite bit of the whole show. This is what we do this show for now. Educating Ricky. Yeah. Go for it, Carl. You said that learning can't be fun. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, I'll go for the one... What's the one about the butcher going down the butcher shop? You've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. Yeah. You going for that one? Yeah. Well, do you know the saying, oh, um... <laughs> don't let the cat out of the bag? Yeah. Do you know... Do you know what it means? Yeah, well, don't give away a secret. Right. Well, do you know how it came about? No. Well, uh, ages ago, <laughs> before, like, <laughs> ages course, ago. Before, 17th century? Yeah, before, like... Yeah, yeah, 17's before, good. Yeah. Before, like, you know, proper butchers and jewists and supermarkets and that, you used to get these blokes who, oh, right. who sold meat. Right. Right. Butcher, butchers, they were called then, I think. Yeah, yeah, but the difference was they didn't stay in the same place, they moved about. Right, so they'd turn up on a street corner, right. and he'd have like loads of carrier bags of like carrier uh, bags. <laughs> yeah, with you know with meat in and that, and people would plastic be like, carrier bags. Yeah, uh, with whatever. mobile butcher on them. Yeah, yeah. right. So uh, <laughs> and an email would... address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. People went right. Yeah, I need some meat. Right, so they'd uh, <laughs> they'd go up to this bloke, and uh, say, "What have you got?" And he'd say, "Well, I've got a got a you know you can have a, a bag full of pig, or you can have a uh, whatever a bag full of chicken." Whatever, yeah. and they go, yeah, how much? They go, oh, you know, call it, call it a fiver, whatever. Yeah. And um, they they buy them, and to to make more money, they didn't always fill the bag with what they said was in it. Oh, I, knew, I thought that might be the case. Right. Yeah. So what did they, they used to do? Did they put cats in there? Yeah. But I don't see what what. Okay, so sometimes they would put a cat in the bag they put and a cat pretend in it the was bag. chicken or whatever else. Yeah. So but why was a cat any cheaper than a chicken? Because cats are wandering around the streets, aren't the chickens? Aren't. So they'd, they'd get a chicken, they'd put a chicken on the top so that when they look in it, they'd go, yeah, that's all right. Got a bag full of chicken, they'd get home to make the dinner. Yeah. And they'd be like, what are we having tonight? And they'd go, well, you'll never guess. <laughs> and they'd, they'd have like, you know, well, you can have a chicken leg and, you know. But it wouldn't be, it would be a cat. Yeah. <laughs> they'd have to defrost a pizza. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Did they mind that they were eating cat then, in, the, in those days? He didn't say. He just was saying about the saying, uh, don't let the cat out of the bag. It's like, you know, uh, if they see that, they're gonna go mad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mildly disappointed with this story. It's all right if it's true, but you know, there's something about it, it's just... I wanna know more. He always leaves yeah. you... Is it Carl doesn't quench your thirst for knowledge, he creates more. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, yeah, he's like the pot noodle of information. Yeah, do you know, I, I, he never, I wanna go- I got nourished by it. It's like, if it, for every fact he tells me, there's ten others that yeah. spring up that yeah. I have to get clear. Well, yeah. So it was the people that were doing this, it was the, it was the dodgy butchers that coined this phrase. Were they saying to each other, don't let the cat out of the bag? I, <laughs> what I mean by that, Jack, is don't let them see the cat. Yeah. What yeah. we've stuffed in there. Yeah. Dodgy butcher, that's another phrase, isn't it? <laughs> So that's that's the first one. Uh, is that a euphemism or is it? Yeah, dodgy butcher. as his meat delivered round the back. Sure. So that's that's that one. So let's get your kit on. What does that mean? It's a, a euphemism for uh, homosexuality. Okay. And meat, presumably, in that means different things. It doesn't. It, it's it's a word that is also a male would it, would bird. Would it mean chicken or cat <laughs> necessarily in that context? <laughs> or well, I suppose it could. Yeah. 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 Carl's look, just looks, look at him, it, it, Carl looks at you like a cat. Yeah. Whenever we leave him behind, if we don't talk, like, straight at him and let him see our lips moving, mm. and it's, you know, monosyllabic and very, very sad. Look, he's lost, he's lost in that conversation there, he just drifted off, didn't you, Carl? No, I just was, 
also thinking on animals and that something else I was going to use. Go on. Was um. Is this it... isn't a radio show, is it? I just suddenly caught us. This I is not. This that. is nothing. I told you that before. It's it's been bad today. No, but I mean it's the way that this casual way that it's like we, we almost have no regard for our listener, and I'm not proud of that. I just don't know what to do about it. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know how to do this properly. I I mean, we're just chatting here. I mean, it's only Anderson who's seen through us, and yeah. that surprises me that more people haven't. I mean, what are the figures like? Do people listen to this show? I'll find out for you. You keep saying that, but um, yeah, there's this parrot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> apparently it, was, it lives I mean, in... Rick, it's unique, <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> I mean, when you wake up with Woken tomorrow, you're not even gonna yeah. hear him start a live <laughs> there was this parrot. Go on, there was this parrot, yeah, go on. And it can talk and that. Someone's obviously, t you know, taught it out how to speak and that. And, mm. um, it flew away. Oh. And, and it's living in this church. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, people are at the church doing oh. hymns and that. And then Trouble's brewing. In, be in between <laughs> the hymns. that parrot... We, uh, was owned by an old, uh, miner who used to swear a lot. Yeah. Well, then the vicar is gonna be, is gonna be really annoyed. That vicar, yeah. that vicar's gonna, go on. I just hope he stays quiet <laughs> during the vicar's <laughs> sermons. Yeah, go on. Have you read it? No, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, no, because that's that's what happens, go right? On, in, tell us, Carl. Join, join the hymns. It's sort of effing and jeffing and stuff. Effing really. <laughs> and jeffing. Yeah. And everyone's like going, oh, you know, it's quite funny, really. You know, it doesn't know what it's doing. Everyone's yeah. having a laugh. Yeah. But it's causing a havoc at funerals. <laughs> 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 when did this happen? Uh, uh not, and not years ago. John uh, was a much loved man. He was a wanker. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, so that was another what story. What can you I... say about Uncle John? Bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love, I love the fact that when you look at things, you go, "That's interesting." The parrot that swears at funerals. That would be amazing. And it stays with you. You see, for a simple man, you retain an awful lot of knowledge. It's just all rubbish. All Do you know what I mean? If you just replaced all this rubbish with good stuff, yeah. you'd be an intellectual. Yeah. Really. Because, I mean, your, your retention is fantastic. Yeah. So, so I lose you again there, did I? So Was it the word retention? Right, Carl, come on in, educating Ricky. So, don't let the cat out of the bag, that's where that uh, comes from. Mm -hmm. Comes from a crafty butcher. <laughs> right, go on then. So the next uh, little headline is, uh, wash up with you. Wash up with you, go on. You wanna know about that? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> it's a survey that they did. <laughs> survey that they did this week. They? Yeah, some some university did some survey. Brilliant. Did a world test on yeah. washing up. Yeah. And uh, each country were given 140 pots to clean. Um, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Turkey were the slowest <sighs> at washing up. The Turks. Uh, it's not because the little fellas that work in the kitchens were no, is it? They can't reach. Spain. <laughs> Spain were the cleanest and the, uh, Germans were pretty good as well, so. <laughs> I don't know where to start with this. <laughs> uh, honestly, Steve, I don't know where to start with that. I Look at his face. it was really light, right? We've had the parrot, right? These are the things that I found. Found the parrot, right? I've told you about the dog in the car wash. Right, you didn't tell me about that. You said there's a car wash for a dog. That's all you told me. Yeah, but The parrot, there's... you said there's a parrot, what? It's a problem at funerals. Yeah. That's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. And, Do you understand? And, and uh, I, they used to eat cats. What else have we got? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. Why? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. I'm interested. Why? Um, some, <laughs> tap uh, dancing. I, I, <laughs> Why? So yeah, I didn't write that. He's trying to break it. Roy Castle's record. <laughs> He's still going. Go on, go on. What is it? What is it? Think. It's a uh, elephant, and it was really old. It was about seventy six. Right. And, and it had sore feet. Because it's old and, and they the don't make stairs and the that roads, big, do are, they? roads are bad and that. Yeah, go so on. um they said, What are we gonna do? And the <laughs> town was like, Oh, you know, we're used to seeing it around, it's part of the thing, you know, we don't want it to have sore feet. Yeah. So they got some slippers made for it. <laughs> <laughs> and it had like a picture of the elephant looking happy wearing some slippers. <laughs> I love him! I love Carl, his world! Think of it, where did you see this picture? That was on the internet. <laughs> right. That's a lesson though for any elephants listening. You know, don't wear stilettos to work every day. Because you can do your feet in. So that it's but don't, a, have ele don't elephants have really bad memories? No, they, they have, have really memories. good memories. Oh, do they? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good then. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, just, I, I just thought they'd forget where they put them. I thought there was something about, <laughs> about elephants having bad, 
But our memories are <laughs> not. Like, it, it goes on, where's my slippers? Yeah. I sure I left them by the table. So, so, sorry, there's a, they're left for walking around wearing <laughs> slippers? Yeah, yeah, there was, th that's in, uh, what in India. What kind of slippers? Those sort of old man ones with the sort of chair Well, round design. ones, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big yeah. round ones. There was that going on. And is it happening? Is it happier? I mean, does it feel no, more satisfying? No, it satisfying? locked it. Did it look- <laughs> 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 I'm going to tell- I'm going to please. Uh, uh, what else is there? Uh, hmm. there was a woman who's had a- had a breast in show for 150 grand. Right. Okay. Any okay, more information there? What? Third party fire and theft? I don't know, it just had, it had a picture of her with them, like, you know, out. <laughs> 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 and I just thought, yeah, he should get them covered. Oh. <laughs> he's done another real joke! Brilliant, that's a proper joke. He's done, so. look at his little face, he smiles! I'd like to see you on one of the sort of TV panel games. If they could bring back sort of celebrity squares, it'd yeah. be amazing as the centre square. Oh, that would be Wouldn't incredible. Be or um, on the countdown in Dictionary Corner. Diction- I imagine him in Dictionary well, Corner. Well, I'd come up with cat. Yeah. If that, if that <laughs> yeah. helps at all. Yeah. Mem- Memblant. <laughs> yeah, what does what? that mean, Carl? It just meant anything you wanted to mean. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, the stats are in for the XFM listener hate list. Um, some interesting results. Go on then. Reverse order. Okay, fifth place. In fifth place. Interesting. Davina McCall. Yeah. I think that's just- I think that's- uh, is a reflection of her being on telly all the time and yeah. that, running out of stuff and being a bit over the top and, mm. yeah. Fourth position. Yeah. Christopher Tarrant. Okay, well, that, I mean, that's, yeah, I wouldn't have thought he's the favourite There is a joint of, go on. second place. Go on. Graham Norton. Yeah. He's alongside in second place. Patrick Kilty, which means Chris Moyles is the winner with an overwhelming vote. And I swear to God, I have not done anything to those stats. Yeah. That is exactly as they've come in off well, the email. We do not give our opinions on this. Do that was the XFM that. listeners, but, uh, well done. <laughs> Thumbs up, you all win a prize. We're gonna play you some nice records because of that, aren't we? <laughs> I reckon they sort of prefer some ads. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> either's fine. Yeah. Feeder. Forget about tomorrow. On XFM 104.9. When I was at, um, university, my best mate was a bloke called uh, Wally, and he was doing, um, psychology, and I was doing philosophy, and, um, we both got into this thing, uh, theory called determinism, which is about the, uh, uh state of the mind, and it's a, a materialistic view that, um, everything is part of the causal web, and everything has a, uh, um, a reaction for something that happened before it, and, uh, um, uh, by the way, Carl, do not confuse this with fatalism. <laughs> Determinism is not predictive. It's just that if a brain state happens again, then uh, anyway, the famous Everyone one is uh, yeah. The famous one is um, if you know a butterfly hadn't shaken its wings, Queen Victoria wouldn't have sneezed. Everything's yeah. indiscriminately linked, right? And we're thinking that, right? And we're thinking, what if um, you changed one word in like classic songs or one note in Beethoven Symphony? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It how it just wouldn't work. Well, I've always thought that. Uh, um, Come on, baby, light my fire. Yeah. Not as good. That sounds brilliant. Yeah. Enigmatic, interesting. Not so good. More pedestrian if it was, Come on, baby, light a fire. <laughs> yeah! Just, <laughs> yeah, just one, just one thing wrong. Yeah. That'd be great. Just sitting there. Paul McCartney comes to John and he goes, All right, John, <laughs> written a song. He goes, Well, she was just 17, well, you know what I mean? The way she looked was way beyond compare. I wouldn't dance with another. <laughs> I'll stop you there. That's, go on. I'll stop you there. What's the matter? Something not quite right with that. I love no? the song. It's great. Yeah. Just once more. Please. Well, listen, don't be too harsh. I mean, because we write our own songs. No, sure, 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 we can sure, still yeah. put both our John, names to it. I think you're a great talent. I think you're a great well, talent. Well, I'm listen, just saying. listen, listen, you hippie. Right? <laughs> well, um, not yet. Well, not yet, but sure. I mean, there's a Japanese bird outside looking don't in. Don't fancy, I'm not interested. No, no, well, listen, well. And I'll never right? change my view. <laughs> right now, listen, right? I wouldn't dance with another. Is that bit? Is it that bit you don't like? Is it the. I just, just like that. Is there a different well, okay. pitch you could go? I wouldn't dance with another. Say it again. You don't it like the. Is I'm it the just noise? I'm not sure the girls are going to go crazy no. for it when we do that. Just, think, just, just think of. Just is there anything else you've got? I <laughs> love the idea of just changing one <laughs> yeah, yeah. lyric. <laughs> Radiohead. Well, that was their classic song. Really? Creep. You can't really change that, can you? Burke. What if yeah. they call it <laughs> yeah, Creep? Yeah. I'm a Burke. <laughs> I'm a twat. I'm a not. But don't worry about determinism, um, Carl. Just Please. Cause, just because it says we don't have a, a free will as such, you know, it's more an illusion. It's not the, whether, we, whether we choose our choices, whether we can choose, you know, uh, to choose our he choices. He knows all this. But don't, but don't, as I say, do not confuse it with fatalism. It is non-predictive. 
and does not change anything. I mean, the moral upshots are frightening because if we have no free will, then are we culpable for our actions? But again, it changes something because you've got to take people out of society that are harm. Carl's you know. often said that. You all right, Carl? Am I still the president? <laughs> Yeah, go on! <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm just- just asking, I'm not- Yeah, what would you do? What would you do about determinism? Change it. I'd have a day off. <laughs> if you were president of America, would you ban guns? It's in the constitution, everyone's allowed to have them. Mm. I don't no. know, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> I just love that! Imagine all your- your different aides and the Secretary of State and generals coming to you and, uh, they come out and they go, what did he say? He goes, he said he's gonna think about it. Again, did he say that again, did he? Yeah. What was he doing? He was on Alan Over looking at monkey news. <laughs> Apparently, uh, a chimp stole a car and drove to France. Ah, uh, no, monkey news. You're talking. Mo I'll tell you what, should we have a great song, then monkey news? It'll be an absolute treat. What about a little me? bit of David Bowie, Sorrow? Uh. Yeah. Didn't write this one, but I mean, he sings it bloody well. <laughs> David Bowie, Sorrow, on XFM 104.9. Nearly there, but you know, we're working our way up to the grand finale. The bit where Carl spouts absolute nonsense from a dodgy source on the internet about a monkey who did something impossible. Let's cue up the jingle. Hang on. Alright. Perfect. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, let's have a look. This one's from, uh, <sighs> from some woman, right? Yeah. And she's, um, she was taking part in the London to Brighton bike ride, right? Mm. Lovely day, weather's good and everything. What year? She's, uh, just a couple, a couple of months ago. Um, she's done all the training, right? Done all the training and stuff. Mm. Uh, got a brand new bike for it, got a little puncher outfit and stuff, all set for the day, right? It's a nice day, she sets off, they all start pedalling and that on the way to Brighton, yeah. right? So she's, she knows the route and that, got a little headphones on, cycling along. Uh, suddenly... Right, okay, I'm stopping now. Um, if, uh, a cyclist overtakes her, <laughs> and it's going really fast and it's sort of hunched over, but it's got like, lots of cycling gear on and a helmet and goggles and they can't tell what it is, but they just know it's a, like a, uh, little hairy, um, fella, um, who hasn't bothered shaving his legs, which is weird, isn't it? Because cyclists usually shave their legs, and this bloke had really hairy legs. But, um, and it won, they gave it the medal, it won three years running, they gave it the key to the city, uh, it had its own game show, and then well, someone said, hold on though, this fella's all hunched over and he's only three foot five and his arms are longer than his body, uh, it's a chip! Chimp! If it goes anywhere near that, we're never doing it again. More monkey news next week. <laughs> <laughs> she's cycling so along. So anyway, she's cycling along, right? And uh this tricycle <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't predict that. <laughs> There's oh. always one element you can never anticipate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got a kiddie's tricycle with a little kid on it, little hairy kid with a helmet. Okay, just go on then. Well, the tricycle comes whizzing, whizzing past. Whizzing past yeah, thing. strong legs in there, chimps. So she's thinking that, but didn't get a chance to see. the Oh thing. yeah, couldn't quite see the cyclist. <laughs> you, oh god, you bald mank git. Go what? on. Yeah, research scientist Carl Pilkington. So, so anyway, she gets to the end line, right? Yeah. And um, they got talking. That's it. Was a nice day, nice race, and all that. <laughs> so, did you see uh, a little little thing on a tricycle? Thing? Well, no, no, what, well, a person? Surely, just a human. Did you see that? No. Did you see that bloke on the tricycle? So anyway, oh, turns tricycle. out. Tricycle. Yeah. But what did you say? Thing? Well, no, was, well, was no, no suspicious. I mean, what did you say? Did you see that fellow on a tricycle? <laughs> anyway, so it turns out. Go on. It was a chimp. You're joking! <laughs> right? Well, Christ almighty, there you go. <laughs> Unbelievable, and it was a chimp all along. So anyway, right, so the woman's like, um... <sighs> We're never doing this again. Checking out the news, right? There's n there's nothing on it, she checks out XFM Monkey News. Right, okay, I'll I stop you there again. It. Right? If it turns out, she doesn't the news, right, and the circus goes, we're looking for our <laughs> chimp, it used to ride this tricycle, and it escaped with police chasing <laughs> no, no, it. No, no, no. So she listened to XFM, see if I picked up on the story. Yeah, sure. She didn't- I didn't have it and stuff. Um, so she got in touch with the organisers of the London to Brighton bike ride, said, look, saw a little airy fella. Why did she care? Because she wanted to know, she thought it was a bit odd. Well, Turned out it was a chimp, they weren't happy about it. Of course not. Because now the owner of the chimp wants to enter it into the Tour de France. <laughs> Oh god! Um, 
in, uh, in 2005. <laughs> now, a couple of questions. I, I trust you'll be able to answer these. Um, <laughs> oh, God! How, Steve, help me out. How did it get hold of the tricycle? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no, that's fine. That's, that's, that's not an important know. point. Look, that's important. How What's it with you, Steve? He doesn't know that. How did it know <laughs> to... Uh, well, firstly, how did it know which way to cycle, but more importantly, how did it know there was a major bike ride? On following, just following the crowd, no, Steve. No, What's the matter with you? The owner of it had trained it and so far. I know it hadn't! It had already done the run beforehand, before the big day. No, it hadn't. Um, uh, like I say, it wants to do the Tour de France in 2005. No, it doesn't. Um, but there's something about animal rights. If if they don't let it enter, you, they can kick up a bit of a fuss. <laughs> the animal rights is that it's cruel to make a cheap ride a bicycle. Not, Not if that it's to. prejudiced that it go, is it because I is hairy? You idiot! Right. So. Wow, that is the worst. That is the worst <laughs> one yet. Absolute twaddle. Absolute rubbish, Carl. Have you got a tricycle? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> when I was about 13, 14, I once tried to improve the animal kingdom by making the hardest animal ever, the most perfect animal. Now, just to clarify, you didn't, in sort of Frankenstein style, no. try and bolt various bits of animals together. It, it was a drawing that I sent to Blue Peter. There was no competition going on. You just thought they would be appreciated. I thought they'd, they'd look at that and they'd go, well, this is, he's a genius. Yeah. This is like Da Vinci. Sure. Um, and this is the animal. This is what I thought, the perfect animal. I mean, when I say perfect, I meant the hardest animal. This right. animal, it could take anything. It was just the strongest, hardest, fastest, right? Yeah. So, I started with the head of a lion. Of course, that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it looks good. <laughs> right, bite you, right? Yeah. Okay. I popped that on the body of a rhinoceros. Okay, so it's got the toughness, oh, the oh, armour, if you like. Oh, it's full strength. Head of a lion. Think of that. So you've got this picture. Head of a lion, body of a rhino. Perfect. Okay. Hold on, though. Pop some arms on it. The front arms were the arms of a gorilla. The arms of a gorilla. So it okay. could punch, grip, it could make stuff. The lion, I mean, that's where the lion falls down, because it can't make stuff. Sure. It can't climb, you know. So, okay then, wait a minute. You think that's got enough weaponry? Sounds like it. No. Pop on the tail of a giant scorpion. <laughs> a giant scorpion? Yeah. Yeah. So, so a scorpion that's, that's the size so of the Exactly. So the tail was as long as that right. So now right. this is a scary animal. Yeah. And this is where the animal fell down. Uh, I thought, right, legs. Well, the fastest animal is the cheetah. The cheetah. Popped on four cheetah legs. Four cheetah legs. It would have collapsed. Crushed under it would have collapsed immediately. <clears throat> so, uh... Yeah. Yeah. And you, you drew this, did you? I drew it, yeah. Did you show it to anyone else? Yeah, my mates the... went, that's brilliant. Right. They said, that's brilliant. <laughs> And, uh, then just sent straight to Blue Peter. Yeah. Any reply? No reply at all. Really? No reply Surprise. at all. What do you think of that, Carl? If you wanted to make the ultimate fighting animal, what would you come up with? If you had the power, like that fella in Arabian Nights, size of a chimpanzee, you could change into anything, but you could change into, you know, like that. I don't think I'd go for strength and that. I'd go for survival. What would you do? Uh. Cockroach. No, I'd have, uh... I'd have like a uh, an armadillo's body, right? Okay. I'd have a uh, head of an owl, right? The head of an owl. Yeah. Why? 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 Come I mean, Why? What does that bring to the table? The head's there to sort of make it look friendly to, to the human race. So okay. because if you look half decent to the human race, they'll mm. they'll look after you. Right. That's the way it works. Yeah. Right? Okay. With the cat and the dog and all that. Mm. Yeah. So the owl makes it look nice. Right. I'd have. Uh, I wouldn't have legs, I'd go for like the slug juice. <laughs> what do you mean? So now you're a really slow moving legless armadillo with a head of an owl. Slithering along. Yeah. How is that gonna be friendly? They'll be they'll see the beautiful face, but then they'll be terrified by the slug. No, because the head's that nice that they'll they'll forgo the uh the sludge. But hold on though. But wait a minute. So this got it's got this thing that's stuck, right, going at 0 0.1 miles an hour, with a going, Hoo, right, you come over, you kick the head off. How is this No, because the head can go into the thing like a tortoise. Can it? Yeah, of course it can. Into so, the armadillo body. Well, no, an armadillo doesn't do that. It just curls up into no, no, a ball. No, this isn't an armadillo, is it? So it's, oh, Why on, has it got the slug? Why is that so what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is, an armadillo, they're good when they're on their feet. Flip them, they get stuck. 
like a tortoise. Right. Slug stuff keeps it down. So if anything attacks it, it's like a limpet or one of them things that can. Why well, have a limpet stuff. then? But 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 it no. can't get any. How it can barely move. It can just hardly go get just anywhere. Just go and kick it. What just do you mean just. But well, how can it escape from danger? It's going to move very slowly. No, what, it'll that's lock, the it'll worst lock animal. Lock itself in. Lock itself in. Yeah, and then I just scoop it up on the. You sand. can't scoop it up. It locks itself in if it's in danger. I give it peacock feathers. <laughs> Why has he got peacock heard. feathers? Again, this, it's it, just it's, it's just the so worst animal you I've ever heard. Why is it got peacock feathers? Threatening. It looks more threatening. It that's does. What, what, that's the least do. threatening thing. Peacock feathers. It's like Danny Larue coming at you. There's yeah. nothing remotely scary about peacock feathers. Yeah, to humans. Yeah. But the humans won't be harming it because they like the owl head. People will like to have these things in the garden. Mm. Uh, the eat lettuce. They eat lettuce. lettuce. Why has he got a beak? They eat lettuce, he's telling them what he's gonna eat now, the owl's going, fuck that, I want a mouse. I love the fact that he's based what it eats on the fact that how it moves a bit like a slug. Yeah. Let it eat lettuce. Yeah. It moves that and let it eat lettuce. Like I said, it's not that weird if that if that existed. If that was normal, that like when you went out to empty your bin, he was one of them sliding up the wall. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't even double take. You'd just be like, Oh, there's the uh the owl head peacock feathered thing. I don't know why he's climbing walls in an effort to find lettuce. Yeah, why is it climbing up that wall? Because that's the only way it can see properly. Because its head's coming out like that. So even though you've designed this animal, now it's you're even <laughs> extending its, its limitations. Problems. Well, it's, 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 it's mainly problem. made as uh, to be on walls. Because <laughs> <laughs> what else is living on walls? <laughs> oh God! Oh fucking hell! What a useless animal that is. Carl, I mean. But nature chucks up odd things, doesn't it? Don't. Why are we starting on this again? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that is nature. Fuck now and again, you'll get, you'll get stuff that. Oh, was he looking at you? Yeah. Was he really? <laughs> Look at his fucking head. Look at his stupid round fucking orangey head and. Oh. Why, why aren't you a freak? You've got a little bald head. We're not meant to be bald. Well, I, I was. I think that's the thing. That's what nature's done. You see, I didn't do anything with my hair when I had hair. I didn't style it, I didn't do anything with it, and it probably thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas people who love their hair, and they comb it and have different styles and look after it, they have hair for ages. Nonsense. No, nonsense, nonsense. absolute well, nonsense. Well, you're saying Absolute that. nonsense. Well, it's a little bit weird then, isn't it? And that's what happens with old people, once they lose their, you know, will to live, once they lose the job, they get old. What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And it's like nature goes, you're not needed, and they die. Maybe that's what happened with the dodo. What's it doing? Can't fly. Its wings are useless. Eat it. Tastes horrible. Kill it. <laughs> no, they did Nature. eat it. I think they did eat yeah, it. Yeah, but it wasn't very nice, was it? I think I think they over farmed it. I think that's why it was extinct, because they did eat it. No, but they did eat it. But they didn't like it. Everybody, you never, you never saw like a fully eaten carcass of a dodo. You know, it's half again. eaten. All conjecture. No, but they didn't eat it all. Everybody would probably try it and go, "It's not for me." That. <laughs> but you don't know no this. No idea. You don't You're know just making this. it up. What's this based on? That people. And also, why would that kid it out? Because I'll tell you why. why. Because if it's not nice, people don't go. Don't get another one in. And they die out. The reason we've got loads of chickens and loads of cows is because we eat them. If we ate polar bears, we wouldn't be short of them. Because you'd farm it, you'd take more care, but what's a polar bear doing? Sat on a block of ice floating about. <laughs> it's no use to us, is it? It sounds harsh. Once again, no got use. his information from a glacier mint advert. No, but it's no, it's no use <laughs> to us. We know they're there, and it's all very sad when you see them on the news sort of struggling and all that. Yeah. But it's going to make them stronger. <laughs> I saw this trailer. For this documentary that said uh, the man who's having a baby, mm. and I turned on, and it's a woman going through a sex change and she's pregnant. That's not a man having a baby. That's a woman having a beard, having a breakdown. Uh, uh, what? What? Why is that? What? That's a con. That is pure sense. It's a man having a baby. Look, world's first. No, it's a woman. It's a woman. What do you think of that? What would you do for your doctor? And I came to you and went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of a rethink of these. Uh, I don't... I, the penis, I hate it. I hate this cock. But what do you mean you hate it? I hate it. I don't want it there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It just sits there resting on these fucking awful testicles that I'm going to get rid of. I want, I want this thrown away. Yeah, well, it's, you know, they're not a great look. <laughs> 
I know that, everyone knows that. It's just the way they are. I mean, if we're all being honest, they're an odd design. I don't think anyone likes their own, do they? That's why we cover them. They're not a great thing, are they? <laughs> well, this is not why we cover them, though, is it? It's part of it, I think. I think deep down. I mean, even if, like, I know you, you ate the Adam and Eve thing, but even if back then he was like, good God, cover them up. <laughs> even he had a leaf on. <laughs> no, but listen. <laughs> so, are you thinking fundamentally, then, that aesthetically, the testicles and the penis isn't as good as it could be? What would you have there instead? Well, it's, it's designed that way, because that's the way it's got to be designed. It's more about function than... Uh, yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing, isn't it? With, with modern technology... You, need, you know, the, the thing is the testicles have to be outside, because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature. Yeah. Otherwise the Satoli cells die, which sort of feeds the semen and all that. So, they, they, you know, to, to be functioning and sort of like fertile, they have to be outside, which is annoying, because I'd put a little rib cage around them, like that. I'd, I'd pop a rib cage round those, protect them, wear a cricket box, have that built in, so you cannot get a kick in, a swift kick in the bollocks no, that makes you feel sick. But it'd be better if they could sort of reverse up in a way that <laughs> they, they, they were hidden away. Right. Yeah. So that they were just, then you dropped them, it's like, right, we need to cool them down, be at it in about half an hour, yeah. zzz, drop them down. Yeah, like the gear on a on an aeroplane, landing gear. Yeah, and uh, running it on, and the bollocks and the cooling down. Or you could just like just pop them in the fridge for ten minutes. It's well, like they the could detach, and you could pop them in the fridge. You yeah. Them down. Can you make me some breasts? Easy. Okay. Got okay, what you say? Easy. What are you gonna do? What's your plan? Just uh... how do you do that? It's tablets, isn't it? <laughs> no, but testosterone, isn't it? <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> Toblerone. I want. To, yeah, I want some Toblerone. Just well, sort of pointy, pointy tits, mm. like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you stop, though? Suppose I came to you and said, uh, Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd... I want them... I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles. Yeah? The arse, I don't like it around the back, I can't see what's going on. Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my ass where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easier to move the head. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and what I've got, there, there's a dog that's got a cough in <laughs> Singapore because it smokes 20 a day. <laughs> Right, okay, another one. So another no, one. no, 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 it's the last one in it, so yeah. I'll save it. The last one we've got is why I don't Sorry, what was that? Wash up with you, that was it. But they, they put, they, that was that it? That they, what, the <laughs> survey of washing pots <laughs> in hand. I didn't understand, up. you said, who, you said Italy were the cleanest? No, it, Spain. No, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. We were the quickest, but Italy was the, the Spain cleanest. was the cleanest. Turkey were the slowest. Yeah. yeah. Spain were the cleanest. But why weren't we cleaner? Because we were washing up, why were we not paying attention to the- We did it rubbish, we did it quick. We did it quickly, but, but- I don't know what it was being rated on. Who was doing it? Was it Lynette Newman or Ainsley Harry? She's quick. Both of them are quick. Yeah. Well, they've yeah. got like kind of loads of slaves that do it for them. Did we? Did we use? Did we use fairy liquid? Don't know. It didn't. It didn't. Have did all we that. use a whole bunch of boys' games? Didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> just like said. It <laughs> <laughs> just said. Uh, you know that that that. Did we, who had the softest hands? Who had the softest hands? <laughs> So I didn't, it didn't say I didn't. Why is it we don't get notified that this is taking place? I don't know. When I was a kid, no one ever said, you know, we need recruits because we're we're doing a survey on who can wash yeah. up the quickest. Are you disappointed in yourself with that one, Carl? It, it is pretty dull, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> and that is why we've got to bring in either con merchant, okay, or a wine merchant, or, or shut or up with your face. Yeah. <laughs> would you be able to, if I asked you, if I put you on the spot in the next, sort of, after the next record, would you be able to give an example of how Con Merchant would work? I mean, is there something you could do just to sort of s experiment with it? Should we play a record? Should we play a record? <laughs> <laughs> play a record. I can do better than that. Yeah. What? Ads. Go on. We're doing Educating Ricky. Right, final one. Come on, Carl. Right, what was it? <laughs> it was, uh. <laughs> why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write on? Yeah. Yeah. Cause Snappy. I couldn't, well, I couldn't think of a heading for it. It's basically, uh. Go on. People who have tattoos, I've never understood it, right? Um. That they have something put on their arm. Right, well, sorry. Have we started the educate? Is this part of it? Are you educating me? This is something that, I, I, that will be useful in my life that I didn't know about. Yeah. Go on then. No, it's just like they've got, they've got a machine now, <laughs> right. right, that, um, does tattoos. 
Um, you, you, uh, you come up with a design you want and you sort of, it, this machine scans it and, uh, you put your arm in this thing and you press print or whatever and then it, it does the tattoo on your hand or on your What, arm like loads of little needles that follow a pattern? Yeah, the computer, basically, is yeah. Is it a real tattoo? It's a proper It's a proper tattoo. one. The fella said, um... Well, as long as it goes out, it pierces the skin with a, with a... I a, just wondered if it's one of those kind of, you know, those kind of... No, it, it must be lots of, lots of little needles or moving needle that can go Sorry, along. Sorry, how is this cleaned, like, in between each person? Don't know, probably, I don't know. Well, no, it's not, it's only that if it's one needle, it's just the head, isn't it? If it's one needle that moves, right. does it like a like loads of little... Um, what are we gaining from a, a machine doing it? Just because you know they're not gonna sort of mess it up. But hold on, how would you keep your arm still? Because your skin moves slightly. It's, it's a machine it's sort of strapped to your arm. Right, and so the fella, it spreads I mean, so the fella said that the tricky thing was in all this, it was the fact that, um, you know, nobody would let him test it out on anyone else, so he had to do it himself. But did it work? Because the thing is with the tattoo yeah, works, artist, they yeah. can see when your skin's moved and they can see what they've done and they keep wiping it and looking, whereas a machine's just got to trust itself. Yeah. So, I think one needle would- could go wrong. If it was a lot of needles, it just, it just came down, like, you know, a thousand needles that was an imprint. Yeah. But, no, th yeah. obviously I'm asking someone who's- uh, uh, hasn't delved any further than there's a machine that can give you a tattoo. That's all you've got at the moment, isn't it? Well, I'm- yeah, basically. That's what you've got? I mean, that's- that's what I've got because I'm not a fan of tattoos, I don't- But where did you read this again? This was, uh, Internet? This was on the internet, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And I, I just don't understand why people do it. That's- that's what got me attention. Cause me, um- So what have- what have I learned from this? Um, that if you- if you wanted to get one, you know, you can get one done by a machine now. <laughs> you know, people say machines are sort of taking over and that. And- and there's another one. But it's just the fact, I mean, I don't know. I, I so give us the snappy title of this, this education <sighs> why again. Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write it on? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> why I always think when I see people with, with loads of tattoos, like there's that fella who we were talking about the other week in Scotland mm. who, who was covered 99% in tattoos. Yeah. It's just like, what have you done that for? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't get rid of it now. You've, you've, you've done it now. Yeah. Um, my, one of my uncles, right, Tattoo Stan, he, <laughs> he, um, He's just caked in them. Tattoos. Right. <laughs> I don't think he's my proper uncle, but it's just like <laughs> me, me dad's got okay. Tattoos, Stan. No, my dad's that's, got. That's that's a province in Russia, isn't it? My dad's got loads of mates who. When like, you say he's not your proper uncle, I do you know how, like when just someone comes around the school? right, Uncle Stan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And there was like there was um, my dad had loads of mates like that. There was John the Screw. <laughs> <laughs> right. So <laughs> he either works in a prison or he likes to have sex. Cabby. <laughs> Cab driver. Okay. There was Jimmy the Hat. I don't know where he Jimmy did. the Hat. Yeah. Well, and, did uh, he wear a hat? No. No. There was um, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. You sure he wasn't a relative? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fred the Veg used to get us like big bags of potatoes and that. Fred Veg. Okay. And there was there was Tattoo Stan, right. and he was just caked in them. And I used to always look at him thinking, why have you done that? I must have only been like you know. Six I or suppose seven. If, if you're born with a name like. Tattoo Stan. <laughs> exactly. You're destined, Sorry, aren't you? Were really? they like a 1950s gang? I'm worried yeah, about. Like, I'm worried about doing a bank job. What was his name? The Hat. What was his Jimmy, name? Jimmy the Hat. I'm worried about Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Not having a hat. <laughs> I don't understand it. Are you sure he didn't have a hat? Not when I met him. Did he ever wear a hat? <laughs> I didn't see him that much. Do you think it was a joke, like we you know when um, your mates sort of like you know uh, eight foot and huge, you call him? Little Shorty. John or Tiny. Mm. Do you think- Well, the think, fact that he never wore yeah, a hat. Yeah, they went, hold on, I've, I've noticed some hat about Jim. Go on. No hat. And I go, oh, true, let's call him Jim the Hat. <laughs> Jim the Hat, yeah. But me, um, me Uncle Stan, he had like loads of them. He did, did them himself. Oh dear. And it was always <laughs> that thing. <laughs> what was it, what was it things like? It was, he had like the- A cross. The cut here. Cut one, here, on made the, on in Britain. And if you're going to do them yourself, I'd say at least make sure you're, good, you're sort of a good drawer. Yeah. And don't and do it, it in the mirror so it comes out backwards. Well, that- that was the other thing. But, like, I remember he did, um, I mean, names are all right. He had, like, all his kids' names down his arm. <laughs> and, uh, what are they called? Yeah. Oh, God, it's- That's- <laughs> that is Stan Junior. Yeah. And, um- Paul shits the bed. <laughs> um, I'm trying to- <laughs> oh, Wabai Kate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he had, he had <laughs> Frankie never amounts to anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh, go on. So he had like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Johnny, I don't think he's mine. <laughs> So he did uh, all this stuff. Oh, I don't even know why I'm telling you about that. No, 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 I Carl. Hey, so, I just, to be I, honest, I don't know that if I don't know if maybe you just have to picture this. But my picture, <laughs> my sister <laughs> took, had to take a photo once. She was working in like a factory, not to denigrate people who work in factories, but there happened to be a particularly oddball kind of lank-haired weird guy living uh, working in this factory, and he made his own. He did his own tattoos, and she took a photo of it because she was so extraordinary. He'd drawn it himself. Now, bear in mind, it was the kind <laughs> of thing you saw when you were doing art when you were like <laughs> fifteen. <laughs> this was the sort of person who designed their own like rock. Heavy rock album cover. <laughs> yeah, he's that sort of person. So, pr I mean, like, was it, was it a dragon draw? with breasts? You're not far off, Rick. No, you're not far off. I'll tell you what it was. He had this tattooed on his back. It took up his entire back. She took a photo of it for me. He drew it himself, he had it tattooed himself, and it was just too much detail. Too yeah. much detail for a tattoo. It needs to be fairly simple, I think, to make a yeah. tattoo. Mm -hmm. It was- <laughs> it was a, a naked female vampire having a shower. <laughs> why was she having a having shower? Having a shower, that's why she was naked. Yeah. And so she had- she she'd been out, she'd, uh, she was, uh, presumably, uh, she'd been, uh, out, been, been out, a yeah. lot of blood. Yeah, well, she 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 uh, she was naked, so she, you could see her her her, her naked body. Yeah. Uh, she's quite a beautiful vampire, yeah. relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, although the symmetry of her face was somewhat off. Yeah. The only thing I think that gave well, her away had a bad spine was that she had um, she did have some pointed teeth. I right. Mean, I think that was how you knew she was a vampire. Right. Was she looking? But, um, she, was the she fact looking... that she was having a shower was yeah, that very is specific, weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it well, but he sort of drew in. Well, he said to the he said to the eyes, "Listen, I I want a a naked bird, right? But I don't want to be." Gratuitous. And he goes, well, we could put her in the shower, because then they went, pop well, her in the shower. That leaves gives some kind yeah, of justification that's the plot. That's the plot. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's justified <laughs> within the story if exactly. she's in the shower. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that. So, Carl. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, any other nicknames your friends of your family had? What was your nickname, Carl? Just, uh, Pilky. Really. <laughs> Because for a minute <laughs> I thought Carl the Veg would have made a lot of sense. Yeah, Carl the Veg. And what, what? Why has your dad got a little tattoo, dopey twat, on his arm? <laughs> right. yeah. Can I just interrupt you guys, because we've just had an email here, um, I hate to query you, Carl, <laughs> and you're educating Ricky section, because I know you put a lot- don't read this, let me just read it for you. Um, just had an email here from Olivia, and this has also been corroborated by someone else, I, I forget who, who it was. She was just- she just tuned in, and she just heard you explaining the expression, letting the cat out of the bag. Sure. Uh, it's all to do with cats that were put in bags yeah. by- by dodgy butchers, <laughs> possibly the 17th century, we're not too sure. <laughs> um, anyway, she claims- well, uh, let me see, she, she says, uh, she uses both the words twaddle and crap, uh, in relation- in relation to your definition. <laughs> oh. uh, she says, letting the cat out of the bag is an old shipping expression from when sailors used to get flogged for their misdemeanours. The cat the is cat, the cat of and nine tails, of course which uh, it is. is a kind of whip thing that you, they used yeah. to keep hanging in a bag below deck. If yeah. it was discovered that a sailor had done something wrong, the cat would be let out of the bag yeah. and you'd get a whipping. Of course it is. Don't let the cat out of the bag, That's meaning to cover something she, up with a huge She's secret. talking nonsense, right? No, she's not. That's she the is. truth. That's because the, the truth. one I read about that was there's not enough room in here to swing a cat, right? And that was people who worked on a boat. Yeah, well, that's the same way. Well, that's fine. They can have the two expressions one. for the They're same thing. They're not gonna keep going on about people working on a boat to get loads of sailors. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have two phrases about the same thing! Can't they these sailors have got nothing going. to do with their time. Think how many- just coming up yeah. stuff Think like how that. many metaphors have birds in them and, you know, uh, uh, it's ridiculous. Why can't you have- you can have as many sounds as you like about anything, Carl. Yeah, There's well, not a rule. They don't go, we've made one up about yeah. the cat and nine tails. Well, cheers for that, Oliver. Um, <laughs> Olivia. Olivia. Yeah. Don't, don't see your email coming up with the Rockbusters answers, so... <laughs> well, let's, you uh, give us the answers Let's again. give them out. Uh, the first <laughs> one was, um... Whole lot of love from Led Zeppelin Classic. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've not heard much from Carl, though, what, this week. We haven't had, uh, heard much from anyone who can speak Chinese for us, either, so, uh... We're not that one on the head. I don't, think, I don't think we'll be learning Chinese today, Steve. What annoys me is I'm gonna go out into the world still ignorant. I know, yeah. I, I, the only Chinese I learned was, uh, from Benny Hill. <laughs> no, Benny Hill could speak fluent Chinese. Uh, well, I, I, the only ones I know is, um, uh, you silly idiot is Siri area. <laughs> yes. And bloody foreigners is bloody foreigner. Yeah. That's all. I, I mean, that's that's. I, I just it. It'd get, it'd get you by in Peking, but I mean, <laughs> you, you come in, you hit a dialect, and you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> your worms meet. Sure. Um, sure. Carl, yeah, we haven't heard a lot about, about from you. We've, we've been going here. We've done a few features already. We've oh, uh, yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. Um, different parts of the world, different parts of the globe. Uh, Do you speak any languages? Uh, 
No, not really. Well, still struggling with English. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Learn a few words. I mean, literally. So, About yeah. 4,000, I think, now, he's got. I've had a lot of emails, actually, people saying, Kyle, please don't leave, we don't want to see the show ending, blah, 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 blah. And we've had what a couple exactly of calls is... bringing back, um, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Mm -hmm. And do you know what Kyle said? He said, a bloke on the phone, he said, oh, bring back Cheeky Freak of the Week. He went, we can't, I don't know, I don't know, you know. And, uh, he went, oh, go on, he went, well, no, I had a story today. A, a fella born with two dicks, but sure. I can't do it. Now, Kyle, you cannot not do a feature about a fella born with two dicks. Well, we'll look if we need it. I mean, how much more have you got on the Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We've done that. We've now Chinese. We've done it. That's done. That's put to bed. Fella with two dicks, please. No, we, we'll, we might get round to it later. But, like I say, cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> sort of. We've put put that on, on hold at the moment. Sure. Right. right. So, uh, what have we got? What, what, well, what are you what providing then today? Have you got a, a quiz for us? Uh, yeah, we've got, what's her name if you want, we've got, uh... We've got what? Uh, what's her name? Uh... What's her name? No, don't Is that know, a don't, new one? Don't know. <laughs> yeah, what's <laughs> her name? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what girl am I thinking yeah. of? Songs of Phrase. We've Songs of Phrase. We've got that coming up. Oh, right. Uh... Yeah. Monkey yeah. News, I Monkey guess. News is safe, innit? That's it? a Monkey News, that goes mm -hmm. out. I told a bit of Monkey News, I did a photo shoot at the zoo this, um, week, and, uh, one of the people Try in charge... Trying to make yourself look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they told me that they used to have an orangutan, right? But, uh, it escaped, it worked out, it lifted up a drain, got out the drains and got out up into the zoo. It actually did a wow. cold ex type escape, wow. right? And, uh, Carl goes, what happened? I said, well, they, they sort of like, they surrounded it and sort of got it back anyway. That's no good though. I mean, it's not monkey news unless it steals a car and goes to Spain. <laughs> exactly, yeah, or opens a small I mean, that's trip. real, that actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's not real unless it, you know, takes a gun, gets in a mistaken from a president. And, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it runs the country for three years. <laughs> there, was some, there was some more news about London Zoo this week about it. Uh, they're all excited because we've got, a, got an ant eater in there. Right. This week. So. Is that good? Is that exciting? No, I think they've had a, an Akapi born. It's got a long nose. It's like a sort of tapir type thing. It's not interested. Have I said to you before about if, uh, if an animal is named after what it eats, how interesting is it? <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but an anteater is the only one, isn't it? Uh, well, get rid of them. Do you no, know there's, lo there's lots in there. What other ones are there? Well, there's flycatchers. There's there's lots of animals that are named after what they. Eat, What's there? a flycatcher? That's a bird, isn't it? Hmm. Seems ill-informed. I can't um, think of many beyond anteater. You talking about? Because uh, you're talking about zoo though, and I watched. I was watching the news last night, and it had um, a feature about Madame Two Swords. Oh they yeah. were Saying that they they scrapped many of the royal family. Now, I don't in this, but I've never understood the appeal of Madame Tussauds. I just genuinely, with no irony, I cannot see the appeal of sort of having my photo taken next to a waxwork of J-Lo. I know. I, I, I can't compute why that would be fun. I don't know. What is it? Do they move? Because they don't move, do they? No, they just stand there. I know. So genuinely, I mean, it's so crowds of people queuing up and people queuing the, up to the, have their photo taken with the rules. And the, I the queue would put me off immediately. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just down the road, but isn't it? But so you go home to your phone and go, there's me, I, I, there's me with Kylie. Yeah, it's not Kylie, is it? Oh, no, it's just funny. a wax effigy. Oh, I thought you yeah. met her. No, 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 it's just a waxwork. Right. It's not even the real person. It, it, I, if you've been to Madden Two Swords, if you have any understanding of why the appeal there, email oh, and no, tell me. Well, no let's, let's not diss them because they might melt down, um, Ricky Tomlinson one day to do me. <laughs> sure, You yeah. never know, you yeah. know. Uh, or Rick Waller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to put them off. But seriously, I mean, I don't, I'm not being- You know, Roy Kinnear might be in there. What is might... the appeal? Genuinely, what is the appeal? To walk around a number of- Life but that's the same use. as lookalikes. When I see it at the back of the stage and it's got like, um, uh, uh, I don't know, Susan Gooding is Caprice. Yeah. And you want to go, what, what do you do with her? Oh, 500 quid, she comes and stands at your party. Yeah. And people <laughs> go, she looks a bit like Caprice. Yeah, don't go too close. She yeah. does, yeah. It's like Caprice over there. No, but it's... <laughs> it looks a bit like... Yeah. There was one in the back of the stage which was, so-and-so is Jordan. And it was a woman who was a little buxom girl wearing very little. I buxom! Thought, <laughs> <laughs> Are you from the West Country? <laughs> I am. <laughs> but I thought to myself, if you're willing to get your knocks out pretending to be Jordan, <laughs> just get them out and become a patiently model. <laughs> Stop pretending to be Jordan. And call yourself after another Middle Eastern country. Yeah. Don't just, yeah, yeah don't just- very odd. I know. God. Very strange. But you've got a lookalike now, haven't you? Yeah. It's but so it's, odd. But it's a bloke, right, um, <laughs> sort of at his desk, right, 
in the picture. Uh, in the picture, and it's, it's David Brent. Yeah. And it's got Ricky Gervais. Yeah. <laughs> so- I don't remember, it's just an old fat bloke with a beard. Alright, don't have a go. Alright. Play a record, Carl. Radiohead. There. Yeah. And go to sleep on XFM 104.9. Don't go to sleep, we've got some <laughs> more fun and great tunes coming up. <laughs> Alright? Uh, just to let you know that, uh, we've had a few new entrants on the listeners' hate poll. I've noticed Chris Evans is cropping up. Chris Evans has snuck in a couple of times. Um, we've also had Jordan added to the list, along with, uh, Mick Hucknall. I think that's because, Pete, you reminded I people. I know, I know, I mentioned her and- Yeah. Yeah, consequently- Come on, yeah, she's on think. List. Mick Hucknall, and also, this is one I'm, I'm strongly behind, Daniel Beddingfield. If you've yeah, ever but heard I can't him hate him. Oh, if you've heard him interviewed, he's such a knob. Is he? He really is a bit Don't get involved. We see, the good about this is we don't get involved. Yeah, this is true. not- does not reflect- necessarily reflects our opinions. That's, that's there right are right. a people- a couple of people that are cropping up that I'm right behind, but I'm not gonna give that away. So don't- don't give your opinion, Steve, okay. cause then we're- then our hands Do are clean. Do you know who I love? Daniel Ooh. Beddingfield. <laughs> Bloody brilliant. Do you know what I think is a comedy genius? Chris Miles. But let's move on, let's not- <laughs> So anyway, listen, we'll uh, we'll be giving the top ten of you, the listeners, votes, uh, probably about two o'clock, and then from that list we if, can- If we remember. If we remember. If Carl that, doesn't lose the list. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, from that list we'll probably try and drop the top three, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so quiz time. I know everyone's been looking forward to this. Which quiz is well, it Well, we're gonna week? play along because he's done, uh, Songs of Phrase where he, uh, cuts up, um, uh, bits and pieces from, uh, uh, records, you have to guess the title or the artist, and, uh, makes a well-known phrase, i.e. a phrase that we've said a lot, and, uh, the challenge is that me and Steve have got to try and work out what it is as well, before we tell- we will tell you the phrase, but let me just see if I can guess. Play it. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Play the game of swing. <laughs> right, I know what that is. I didn't hear it, can you play it once more right. for me? Right. <laughs> I know what that is. Right, it's why don't they play the game of swing ball? Cause that's what he said when he turned on and saw people in wheelchairs playing tennis. <laughs> and his point was- Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Play the game of swing ball. <laughs> 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 oh dear. That is so naughty. This show's been a bit naughty, I think. I don't know what's happened to us. I think it's, it's like, um, sort of end of term, sort of madness, but yeah. I think we've got to calm down here. We've been a bit naughty there. We've like, we said, you know, bloke with two dicks. We said Chinese people don't talk properly, which is a little bit- Offensive. Yeah. Know what I mean, Carl? Well, they don't, know. Right, okay, let's leave it now. Okay, stop there, Carl. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of XFM or any yeah. other human being. If you think that me and Steve have been offensive, we are strongly behind the guise of irony, satire, and ignorance. Carl only has ignorance yeah. and hate. <laughs> yes. No, 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 but as long as you say something good about someone, you can also say something bad about them. <laughs> How does that work? Go on, and give us an example. Well, Chinese. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Great people, right? Good. That's really, the, that's the, the women, good. women really good looking as, as, as younger people. <laughs> no! What are you older. doing? I'm, ju I'm just saying, as long as you, you know what I mean, there's good and bad and everything. For every well, what are the old negative. ones like? They, they, they don't age well. <laughs> what no, do you mean? <gasps> the fellow in Karate Kick, the teacher, was only about 36. <laughs> we started this! We started this! <laughs> oh. oh. Fact. Uh, so, song <laughs> the phrase, email in, <laughs> ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, right? I mean, I have to say, Carl, it's very tricky this week. You've got some very obscure sounding songs there. Yeah, just all we want is the artists. I think just the song, Carl, mate. I think that's hard. I think that's hard, yeah, the artists. Just the artists, I know. Okay, so these are the prizes this week. Well, let's play it again so they can hear it. Try and work out all the different artists. Yeah, why don't they play the game of swing ball? The game of swing ball. Right. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. <laughs> it is tricky. That is tricky. That is good. But there's some great prizes, um, <laughs> including Carl, I can't help but notice, torn from the current, well I think today's issue of the Daily Mirror. What, he's giving away a it's, giveaway? It's a free CD from the Daily Mirror, which you can buy it, you spend 30p on the mirror, you can get this anyway. <laughs> but it's still in the piece of plastic <laughs> that he came yeah. in, I love it's that. It's ripped. Anyway, there are some other treats. Oh, you well. you'll be loving getting that through the, uh, <laughs> the door. So there's a, uh, the Jingly Jangly Sound of Summer, Good Vibes, a two CD set featuring music from Crowded House, R.E.M., Simon and Garfunkel in the Beacon. Right, it was, uh, well, specials. Play it once more. Alright. 
Right, it was a uh, play the game of love. Uh, I think that was Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders. Right, you uh, think, but you're not sure. Louis Armstrong was the uh, Don't Mean a Thing if it ain't got that swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Queen, Don't Stop Me Now, We're Having a Good Time, and that. We're Having a Ball. We're Having a Ball. Do you know, like, how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, he said, the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus, right? He said, mm. uh, so what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep... You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep, uh... Close your eyes and see... Instead of just leaving like, them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing. Close your eyes. You're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. You're just asleep. So he said, uh, Oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe. Right? <laughs> okay. He said, and just think about oh, nothing else. He, I said, He's a witch! <laughs> didn't he? Did, did he say you didn't put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, focus on the toe and mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you. Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie down, shut it. your eyes, and and sort of look at it, sort of thing. So I was lying there, and it just wasn't working because. Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine. Because I was, you even were, though you were thinking eyes, of a finger. Well, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> he found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next it day someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. <laughs> You were still using oh, your face even though they were shut. What does that mean? I was straining them. <laughs> I had them shut, but I was sort of looking down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down, so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining them and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm gonna die! I am going to die! Why, out of interest though, and this is this will sound naive, why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it, is it, is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we, uh, sort of born? Because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why, why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, developed? I, I, I honestly it's got to be trauma, on it? It's the things, again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh, when were you born? 72. What, you, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Uh um, You can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, no, you... no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Because oh they, 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 they oh. pinpoint they things. All the tic tacs they've ever yeah. eaten. Yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No. Because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> My mum and dad don't even remember so, me then. And, and it's oh. weird. I remember, uh, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, wouldn't no, remember no, that, no, were you? No, 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 you weren't there, there. were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember having well, one know, of I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same just memory. You used to go a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, um, okay, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of, uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> Gangsters, <laughs> where's the fucking tic tacs? No, I we was... lost our truck for you, gang. <laughs> when, I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window, and the window was open, and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in. I was just couldn't open my eyes. But why? Why were they? Why were they glued? Why were they? What do you mean they were glued? But just... why didn't you say, Mum, Dad, I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just <laughs> you get a build up on yeah. the on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all. It... But when they came in, and you could sense them looking. I didn't at know you. they were there. <laughs> I went to what's her name, mm. Harley Street. I went for a, a check up. Mm. And uh, like a medical. Mm. 
posh, you know, Harley Street. It's like yeah. it's the top doctors, isn't it? I've never yeah. been before. Yeah. All posh buildings and that. I uh, went up to the counter. I said, uh, I see the doctor. They said, name, yeah. Right. Give us ten minutes. Go and wait in the waiting room. Dead posh waiting room. Dead fancy. Big leather furniture and that. Yeah. Loads of magazines. I mean, like a, like a news agent. Yeah. In the middle of the room on a table. Loads of them. So I'm looking through and there's the, you know, there's the top quality ones. You're Esquire. You know, GQ. Classy. Yacht Weekly. Uh, all that. Country Life. Uh, boys. Boys? There's one there, yeah. Boys. What's that? Right, lifted up like the one on top of it. And it's like boys with a Z. Two fellas stood there. Looking, uh, sort of Italian looking. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Dungarees on. Uh, no shirt though. No shirt, just dungarees sort of unbuttoned, hanging down a little bit. Sure. So no one else is about. I'm never going to buy a magazine like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna tell us you looked through a you couple of magazines. I had a, I had a little little look just because I thought you know like I say you, it's one you're chance. You're always looking to learn, aren't you? Always looking to learn. <laughs> yeah. Always open. You know there might have been something in there that I go right. I get it now. I understand why why they like doing that or whatever. Yeah. All right. So uh, she said I was gonna you know ten minute wait. I can I can have a quick flick through. Mm. Picked it up. Had a look. Um. Still none the wiser. Why? Well, what did you see when you opened it up? Um, just loads of, uh, I mean, like I've said to you before about, I don't know why they like looking at knobs when they've got one of their own. <laughs> right. There's no right. surprises there, you're not going to go, oh, that's Sure, that's yeah. Nice. yeah. Some had, like, car oil on the face. Uh, knob out. Yeah. There was someone sat on, um, like a, a, one of them square things of hay. Oh, yeah, a sat, uh, Like, sort of sat on it, straddling it. Yeah, uh, that must have been uncomfortable. Again, knob out. Yeah, yeah, just looking, just looking like it's normal. That's crazy. Like no, that. no farmer walks around like that. What was the other one? There was a, uh, you know, motorbike. They always like them. Yeah. No, I'm going through, and and then like the content is all puns. Right. It, it it all everything was to do with knob. Right. That's the only bit they're interested in. <laughs> in the these, male body. Look at look at this bloke driving this huge throbbing thing. The bike's not bad either. Yeah. yeah all that. Yeah. Loads of them. Uh, it was just. Uh, uh, just all, just just cock, just hundred percent. Like let's let's just talk about the knob. That's yeah. a good name for a, a, a guy magazine. Hundred percent cock. Hundred percent cock. Did it not at any moment sort of maybe slightly under you that you might the doctor might come in and see you reading boys? No, because I or wasn't. What about if I walked through? Because I remember once when you were in hospital about to have um, a tube going down your knob and you were sitting in your pants with stockings on and I walked through and you were horrified. So what if I'd have walked in then and went? Yeah, Carl, I would have just said, look at this. Look at this, it's free. And I, and you, and I said, why did you bring that with you? No, I would have just said, look, does it look like I brought it with me? Look yeah, yes, it does, because well, so I would at... never see, you would never see a gay magazine in a doctor's waiting room. So I think you bought that and then and pretended that it was that's, there. That's or... the thing, That's I was amazed by that. Because there was no, like, you know, there was no Mayfair or anything. They just catered for, like, if you wanted a bit of knob action. <laughs> It was really, I mean, really, I could have complained. Sure. So if you're going to have this, where's a bit of the other? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you had a bit of this, where's a bit of the other? I know one of the things that, that they had, and I thought, they're they really struggling with, like, ideas. They had a Sococo. <laughs> As in Sudoku? Yeah. Sococo. So surely, Sococo. surely Sudico is better. No, because it was like Sococo. Yeah, but it's dick as well. Sudico. Yeah. What, and it's, it was still a Sudoku-style puzzle, but yeah, it just had that name? yeah. Yeah, it's just so everything. Not, it was all just Sudoku, but called su Coco. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, that if I if I was gay, do you know like let's you have say, a game of Lubo? <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of Knobopoly. Knoberation. <laughs> Knoberation. <laughs> let's have a game of chess. Cock. <laughs> 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 Let's have a game of fuckaroo. <laughs> well, that works for either sex. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's how we spend okay, our Christmases. Fuckapoo. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>